Just 20 miles north of London, Letchworth is Britain's first garden city. Slap bang in the middle of town is Lanterna. Get that to do it, that's what, get that to do it. It's run by British-born and bred Alexander Scott. Right, hurry up. From an early age, Alex dreamt of being a chef. Squeeze a bit of lemon juice on it and pour a bit of olive oil over it. Then, childhood holidays in Italy turned him into a self-confessed Italian farm. Uh, quindici. Uh, so much so, he's taken to calling himself Alessandro. I think I'm a pretty decent chef. I know it's a lot worse, and, and I do take a lot of pride in what I do. Uh, I'd, I'd like to get to a stage where we've got a really good reputation where people travel from 40, 50 miles, 60 miles to come here for a meal, and we have got a really, really good name. Like Gordon or Jamie or one of these other fellas. Helping him realise his Italian dream is Polish sidekick Aldona Novak. But she's got more attitude than aptitude. Listen to me. Come back for a mixed salad, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. Fungi, tavolo, trolley, yeah? I try to do everything I can to try and build a business up, everything that I can possibly think of, and it's just not worked. Employing friends, an ex-air hostess girlfriend, Emily, has proved to be a dangerous mix of business and pleasure. OK, you're cancelling. I've remortgaged my house again to uh, inject some money into the business uh, and took out another personal loan and sort of beefed up my credit cards, but how long can we last? That's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La Lanterne. With debts of more than £180,000, Alex is on the verge of losing everything mm. he's got. It's quite nice on that side. That's why I'm here, to find out what's gone wrong. Chef? Morning, Chef. Nice How to are you? Me. Very well, thank you. Good. And this is it? It is. And, God, it's, it's small. Pokey. Yeah, very pokey. <laughs> Al Scott, executive chef. I like those. Yeah, so how many's in the team? Uh, in the kitchen? Yeah. Two of us. Two. So that's why the executive. What's with the flags? Italian and English. Italian and English? Yeah. And that's the style of food, is it? It is. Eng uh, Italian. Italian. And you're from um, Italy? England. Oh, England. I just always worked in the Italian kitchen. So I just sort of learned to learn the language, learn right. the style of cooking. So lots of Italian ingredients? Yeah. Where are the courgettes from? Uh, from our butcher from London this morning. But <laughs> <laughs> Courgettes from a butcher? Yes. And then where are the peppers from? Tesco's. Tesco's? They're cheaper. Oh, they're cheaper? So, uh, courgettes of the butcher, peppers from Tesco's, uh, lemons from Sardinia? Cash and carry. So, so far, I've seen fuck all Italian. It's Saturday, the only busy night at Lanterna, and a chance for me to take a close look at Alex's authentic Italian kitchen. So what's that there? That's bechamel cheese for the cannelloni. Packet bechamel sauce? That reminds me of my days as a hotel commie back in the early 80s. A successful Italian kitchen has to understand the secret of great Italian food. Simple, fresh Italian ingredients. Bing. What does uh, Donna do in service? Operate the microwave? In Alex's kitchen, all the vegetables are pre-cooked and blasted in the microwave. Oh, look, they're everywhere, like Christmas tree decorations. Uh, we need to do our sticker on the top shelf. We've got our fairy. <laughs> what turns you on about food? What makes you excited about food? Nothing really. Nothing. Uh? I like Fuck it. Me. <laughs> and what did you do in Poland? Were you working as a chef? I was in a tax office. The tax office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so uh, why cooking? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't actually cook. Great start. A Polish assistant who won't cook, and an English chef who seemingly can't. But the menu promises modern Italian cuisine, and at 30 quid a head, it's got to be good to keep the customers coming back. Nice. If you like matchmakers, maybe have a game of dominoes. The packet Grassini matches the decor, straight out of a 1980s fake Italian trattoria. To see what Alex is made of, I've asked him to serve me up some Italian classics. First up, fresh minestrone soup. This should be a star hit on any Italian menu. Oh, God. Very, very greasy. Yeah. Dirty oil slick around the outside. I'll pass on that one. What is that? Oh, it's parsley on the stalk. Next, salsiccia Lugano. Fresh Italian sausages baked in white wine and served on garlic bread. 
Oh dear. Dear, oh dear. Um, it looks like two poodle's penises doused in parsley. I almost like feel I've gone back to sort of 1982, where every other restaurant in the high street was an Italian ripoff. We're now in the 21st century and they're still serving crap like this. Fucking disgusting. Ugh. Even worse, the amaretto cake is bought in. Um, unfortunately, not quite defrosted, slightly frozen in the centre. Oh dear, dear. This is about as authentic as a fucking Chinese takeaway. Right, mm. Alessandro. You talk passionately about, you know, Italian ingredients, authenticity. I saw nothing Italian and nothing done with care. I'm concerned about where you're going, how long this place has got to last, and unfortunately delivered fuck all. And that was way, way, way below par. Do you think this is funny? No. No? No, because I didn't find it funny. That was upsetting. Because that was fucking dire. Alex may think that I'm his worst nightmare, but this really is my idea of kitchen hell. He's in such meltdown. He's even let the most basic standards of hygiene slip. You'd think he'd have cleaned up. I mean, it's not as if he didn't know I was coming. There's no excuse for filth as bad as this. When was the last time the place was really properly cleaned? It's cleaned every Friday afternoon. Yeah? Bullshit. When was the last time all the fridges were pulled out? Pulled out? Yeah. Um, that was done about two weeks ago. What about all the bread rolls down behind the fridge now? You can see them from here, look. That's how Donna, disgusting. where she throws Al bread Donna. up into the... Uh, uh, Aldona throws bread up into the basket. To dry out. To dry out for breadcrumbs. And she misses, so it all goes down the back of the fridge. Dirty lady. What about this pile of shit here? What about them? With the kitchen in this state, Alex risks food. further damage to Lanterna's already fragile yeah. reputation. Oh, fuck it now. It's never been used. What about these trays here? When were they done last? It could even be closed down. That, if we do that, the, oven, stops, ago? the oven doesn't stop working when we oh, change it. Oh, fuck it now. Are you ever going to tell me the truth? It does. Don't worry about the oven breaking, <laughs> yeah? That's replaceable. Giving a customer fucking food poisoning is not. Yeah? Yeah. Look, look at that in there. That is gross. That is fucking disgusting. Everywhere you turn in this kitchen, there's another surprise. Look. Mussels on the floor. Stuff everywhere. Produce just left going mouldy again. And then there's a pot noodle on there. Who the fuck is eating pot noodles? Oh, almighty. There's 60 customs out there. I am so fucking glad they can't see where their food's coming from, how it's cooked, and what the fuck is going on behind the scenes, because it's a mess, and it's a fucking embarrassment. Fucking disgusting. Oh, my God. That is taking the fucking piss. Fucking hell. It's my second day at Lanterna, where I'm trying to drag it back from the depths of despair. Alex has told me he's tried everything he can to save the business. The new head chef, Alexander, promises exceptional food and an enjoyable evening for every occasion. Lanterna, when only the very best will do. Fuck me. Only the very best will do. The kitchen's a fucking dirty, filthy mess. Exquisite, classic Italian food. God, what a fucking spook. Radio ad? It's going to take a lot more than that to get this place back on track. When was the last time the fridges were done? Last week. That's, what is that? That's finished through from Saturday night, so that's just a special order. Jesus Christ. I'm shocked by the levels of hygiene here. I wouldn't even serve that to a fucking pig, you know that. Alex isn't even following the basic rules. There's got to be mac, no matter what you're doing, from a bacon sandwich to a fucking tortellini or fucking goat cheese. You have to stay immaculate. Oven should be cleaned after every service. The floor should be spotless, and leftover food should be thrown away or stored in clearly labelled containers. More pa oh fucking hell! Whose fingers have been in there? Right. I, I need They're to throw this used. stuff away because I'm nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck shit! With standards this low, Alex's right. authentic Italian kitchen. Look at that in there. Could be closed down. 
Who's that? Hey, Show. Environmental health. Wally. Hey, mate. Environmental health? No. No, damn. Pest control. Pest control. Fuck me, do we need you? Come in. Yeah, he knows what he's got to do. He's just oh. going to check the rat carry on. Another. One saving okay. grace. They've okay. never had rats or mice in this kitchen. Hey, hey, Show. Not right, yeah? But yeah. there is one pest I'd like to control, and that's Alex. He's been scurrying around in his own mess for far too long. Can you see where we are now? Absolutely. You know, um, I've had a very um, embarrassing dinner. I've come back into the kitchen. The place is in a mess. You've taken your eye off the ball. The passion's gone, and we've really got to get this thing back up. Let's get all that clean without any bullshit. Jason, on the... With a clean kitchen, I can focus on the main problem. Alex is cooking. Quite frankly, it's clearly a really fraudulent imitation of 1970s Italian crap. Because when you walk into a kitchen and spot a bottle of lazy lemon, it means lazy bastard, nothing more. For me, I don't know where to fucking start with the food, you know, because I, what I want to do is try and store that kind of freshness and give it a sense of and Italian style, influence. Yeah. But Italian food wasn't built up on fucking frozen food run under water, yeah? Because, quite frankly, all I've seen do so far is reheat things. I know the food's rubbish, but I need to see how he gets it on the plate. I've never seen a chef work at this breakneck speed and yet achieve so little. That little fucker's got all the energy in the world, but it's just channeled in the wrong direction. Because he's actually jumping around doing fuck all. He looks fucking busy, but he's actually cooking shit badly. Fucking porco deal. How's my record? With a diet of five Red Bulls a day, Alex is so wired, he bashes out the food as though his life depends on it. Most of his food comes in frozen or from a packet, and I know why. He's lazy. Instead of getting ready for his customers, he'd rather play golf all day than rock up an hour before service with his best mate, Gavin Swires. There's a woman coming saying she's got a table of seven people, quarter to seven. How many's booked now, Gavin? Um, I'm going to need to double count again. This Gavin is the restaurant manager, the face of Lanterna. Does he know what he's doing out there? <laughs> We'll have a walk up the road, cos we think we may have got the wrong place. But it looks like the dining room is operated with about as much finesse as the kitchen. You say you want to run it as an Italian restaurant, well, maybe 30 years ago. I can understand why this exists, but not now. And quite frankly, it's not. Are you any further, is it? No. Nowhere near it. Not with those, yeah? That. Those, yeah? Well, I was taught to cook by uh, a very well-respected Italian chef. Mm. Well, that's total bullshit, because there was nothing Italian there. Nothing anywhere. Alex tells me this well-respected chef is still in the area. Maybe he can shed some light on the source of Alex's inspiration. Are you Mario? Yes. The famous chef? Sort of. Yeah, you taught Alex everything he knew. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And did you introduce him to bechamel and demi-glace and masala? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was you? Well, <laughs> I'm the responsible one. What? Is something go wrong? Fucking hell, Mary. <laughs> Where do you want me to start? <laughs> huh? It turns out Alex spent his formative years with Italian-born Mario, known locally as Hertfordshire's king of the trattorias. And obviously went very well, because now you're a taxi driver. <laughs> no, it's up in a stage where I was fed up with the kitchen. Really? You know, if it doesn't work out... For Alex, I suppose I can come and bring him to the rank. Yeah. Because his food's fucking rank. Yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> but he's a lousy driver as well. He's a lousy driver as well. Yeah. Fucking hell. I'll let you get back to your rank. Thank you very now, much. They're very really soft, those hands. They're like baby's bottoms. Yeah. Get back in the kitchen. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Ciao, Mario. Morning. It seems the extent of Alex's knowledge of authentic Italian cuisine stretches no further than Luton. Alex needs to bite the bullet and relaunched the restaurant with a fresh identity of his own. But a new image costs money, 
and Alex is at the end of his tether financially. How do you pay yourself? I haven't paid myself a wage for four months. Bloody hell. I mean, is your business really on the line of going bust? Oh, absolutely. It is very much so on the line. Because I'll lose everything. The house, everything. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all tied up in a business, so if it all goes wrong, I'll walk away with absolutely nothing. Alex's past seems full of bad financial decisions. After just two weeks of running Lanterna, success went to his head. And instead of getting his cooker fixed, he spent £46,000 on a new car. With no spare cash, Alex can't afford to turn the business around. Can you fucking slow down a bit, please? I'm feeling sick. Fucking hell. Why on earth did you buy it? Truthfully, uh, I love cars. And what I'm trying to say is, do you think you've got your priorities right? Look down at the number plate. Do you have a small dick that you... No, not to no. it. Uh, you don't need a car for transport to get to work? No. No? You live above the restaurant? Yep. New commitments? Yep. Big responsibility. Absolutely. Fucking big responsibility. Then you go and splash out in a fucking car. Yeah. So we've got to recuperate money back to get yeah. back into the business, to keep the business open. Absolutely. So we've got to sell it. I mean, if you had the choice of keeping the car and closing the business, because that's what's going to happen shortly. Yeah. Use the car, keep the business. At last, he's got his priorities right. And with the car up for sale on the internet, I've got him a good deal on a new cooker. I need to get 38 for it to clear the finance. Shit. Maybe I can ring around and see if we can get rid of that number plate. Please do. Now, let's think of a fucking grade A, class A chef. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. Hi. I need some help, please. Everyone knows I have a lot of respect for TV chef Anthony Royal Thompson. Mm, not really my cup of tea, Gordon. Not your cup of tea. I didn't think it would be, you know that. Mm. And we know you're not in need of a penis extension. Well, quite. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> um, you're not interested. John Chris Novelli. <laughs> I'll give him a call. <laughs> hey, JC, please. Oh, no, I'm trying to sell no, no, it. No, listen, I'm trying to sell it. Listen to me, Gordon. I'm listening to you. I'm, I'm going to kick your fucking ass, Gordon. You're, You're going to kick my ass? <laughs> hey, hold on a minute. I'm only asking. What's wrong with the private plane, then? How am I going to crack on my bicycle with a fucking bullet? <laughs> <laughs> with the car and the number plate up for sale, we can move forward. It's time to get Alex to do something he clearly hasn't done for a very long time. I want him to start cooking. This is a way of taking all your frustration Shush. out, yeah, in your graffiti. Yeah. Alex needs all the help he can get, yeah. and I want to see if any of his Three kitchen staff have hidden talents. I want each of you to make a pizza. Whoever has the best tasting pizza will put it on the menu tonight as a special. I've discovered that Joe, the kitchen porter, has trained as a cook. Uh, explain yours to me. Pepper. Uh huh. Mushroom. Cheese. Nice. Tomato sauce, mushrooms, onion. Good. Cheese. And Chef Alex. Nice. Well, four seasons with artichokes, green peppers, black olives, and parma ham. With a little bit of basil. You flash bastard. Okay, Joe. Here we go. Excuse me. Do you want to come into our restaurant to try some pizza we just made? Thank you. Here we go. Right, Joe. Just explain to the lady what we've done. Have you got two seconds? We've just made these amazing pizzas. Well, this lady's coming to taste them. Would you come in and just taste them with us? You look uh, like a man a little bit undernourished. Bring on the pizza, Alexandra. And I bet you're a vegetarian. I am. Oh, there you go. Right, we have a vegetarian Sorry. pizza. How long have you been vegetarian? Mmm, about eight years. God. Oh, it's been very long. Yeah. What I didn't realise was that Aldona put Parma ham on the base of her mozzarella and tomato pizza. Carla, um, which one did you actually prefer? The last one that I tried. Uh, the last one? I would go for that one. The mozzarella one? Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, that's got lots of mozzarella and tomato, but underneath that <laughs> is parma ham. Oh, no, that was me. No, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the lady who made them. Come forward. Aldona. <laughs> Come here. There you go. See? Well done. You've never made pizza in your life. You converted to vegetarian. Yeah. OK. Would you like some more? No, thank you. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you now. You haven't come out of a big rash. I'll see you, mate. Thanks. You take care. Good luck with the Vegemite. Thank you. 
Fresh food on the menu marks a new start for Lanterna. But it's going to be a huge step for Alex. Goodbye, plastics. Jesus. Look at that in there. People are eating that. It's so strong, this demi It's not going down the sink. No, it's all here. I'm banning all traces of plastic sauces from the premises. Now Alex will have to cook from fresh. In an attempt to slow Alex down in the kitchen, I'm cutting his menu by half. Why have you got three chicken dishes on? Just for variation. Trying to give people more choice. Yeah, well, I've seen all three of them, and I think they're all shit. You know that? Because they're all clogged with the same fucking sauce. Two of them can go. And I'm not doing that or saying that to put you in the shit, but you are in a position to regenerate rejuvenate those customers and put a little bit of freshness and a lot of excitement to your customers, you know that? Yeah. With a limited menu and some new dishes, tonight is Alex's big chance to prove to me that he's capable of cooking from fresh. It's something I'd expect one of my most junior chefs to pull off without a hitch. Hey, check on. One prawn cocktail, two parmigiana, one soup. First table's in. So normally Alex goes like this. Jesus Christ, then everyone gets really dizzy. First time, oh shit. Damn. Oh, damn. Slow down, oh, yeah? yeah? I want to really make sure that you stay nice and calm, yeah? Yeah. Let's show some composure now, yeah? Absolutely. But the kitchen's only half the story. <laughs> For the evening to run smoothly, the dining room's got to be well managed by the maitre d'. Yeah. <laughs> Specials. <laughs> but the maitre d' is Alex's best mate. It's Gavin's first job as a restaurant manager, and I don't think he's got a clue. We have like a couple of portions left. Very nice. I did have that for dinner before I started. Highly recommended. OK. It doesn't help that Gavin's supported front of house by Emily, Alex's girlfriend. The chicken was cold. It was 70 degrees when I probed it. What do you want me to do? Anything? Nothing. It wasn't cold. Her only experience of serving food comes from seven years as an air hostess. That's why I probe everything. You are the maitre d', aren't you? You're running the place. But you've got to get some authority around. You know that. You've got to get some presence. Look at those peripheral rolls over there. That's how big your bollocks should be. That big. Now, find them and fucking use them. Just a drizzle. Enough. Alex, yep. nice and calm. Oh, yeah. I am, actually. Alex isn't doing too badly, but it's not long before Gavin's way out his depth. He should be taking orders now, though. Huh? What is he doing out there? Gavin's managed to get 60 people booked in for tonight. But he's allowed 40 of them to arrive at the same time. I think we're going to be in the shit in 10 minutes' we're time, you know? in a fucking dog shit. Huh? Any manager worth his weight should know he's got to stagger the bookings to keep a steady flow of orders coming into the kitchen. You OK now? Yeah. Yeah, good. You don't look it. Scrape off the little bit and put it in. Yeah, okay. Can you put it up there and call it out? What? Call it out. What is it? Tell me what it is. Too fast, sir. Okay, now, here we go again. Oh, no. Monday returns. Let's do another one. Under pressure, all Alex's bad habits come flooding back. He's all out of fucking order. First time in his entire career he's actually had to cook properly. And it's pretty obvious he can't do it. Oh, no Completely in the shit and lost it big time. Which one next? Nothing together. Because she has king prawns. King prawns. And he's just clammed up and, and I've got a good mind to get that number plate off that fucking car and stick it up his ass sideways. Alex and Gavin are like two little boys playing at running a restaurant. I've never worked like this. I hate saying it, but so close to cowboys. Mm. You know that? Quit now. Yeah. Put the restaurant up for sale. I'm more than halfway through my week at Lanterna, but last night's attempt at putting freshly cooked food on the menu proves a total disaster. Alex has a long way to go if he's going to become a half-decent Italian chef. And his mate Gavin gives an equally pathetic performance. It's just so frustrating when you show them time and time again the perfect opportunity for a great local Italian eatery in the middle of a very wealthy town. And you can make such a great business out of it, but 
I don't know if they've got it. You jumped up, little fucking prick. Who the fuck do you think you are? Because you, as a mate d' are fucking useless. I've done right. it to upset you, um, so you come back to me. I'm going come to have to teach Gabby how to get tough right. if he's turn. going to have any authority. Take a deep breath. Tell me exactly what you think right now. What's going through your head and get it off your chest? With his staff and his customers. Get it out! <laughs> Look, there's no one here for oh, no. fuck's sake. We're in the middle of a field. You've got to have authority, and mm. customers have got to walk in there looking for you. Yeah. And you've got to get a reputation. Yeah, at right. the moment, I just see this sort of little lost boy moping around. And there's things that are going on in that dining room that you should be aware of, yet you're totally clueless. Right. So I'm really nervous that you're not supporting Alex properly. Right. So what I want you to do is start getting angry. Right. Why right. did you send that... Stop! That sounds like a fucking dickhead in a choir. Why? The well, golden rule in any dining room. Crap. You Jump. have to be Give in control of your staff. <laughs> what the fuck do you think you're doing, you fucking idiot? Like that. And not let your staff right, control Jack. you. Why was that food taken? Oh, star, that's not good enough. You sound like a right fucking limp dick. What the fuck are you doing taking the food to table six, not table seven? You fucking idiot. You fucking idiot. Can you not read the order in the kitchen? Excellent. Gavin needs to gain Excellent. the respect of his team so they know who's the boss. Right. Then he can start really running the restaurant with there. a bit of flair. No, you've really found your bollocks. OK. Give it all this time. Okay. What are you doing, you stupid idiot? Where's your fucking brain tonight? Is it up your ass? During last night's service, Alex looked a right mess. One less thing causing to have a wind at me for. See if he notices. <laughs> I think you're a dirty fucker. Show me your fingernails. Ugh, fucking hell. I want you looking immaculate. Okay. Smiling up and just lifting that whole sort of image. So, any chance to give him a quick clean up? Yes, that's yeah? fine. Yeah, yeah, don't go too close in case it bites. <laughs> <laughs> With a fresh, clean Alex, I want a fresh, clean look for the menu. Alex has confessed that he doesn't eat fresh fruit, vegetables, or fish. If we're ever going to make this restaurant work, I've got to get him to develop a better sense of taste for decent food. Get the fucking blindfolds on. I'm putting swordfish on the new menu, and I want Alex to choose the pasta that will be served with it. And you look younger with that gun today, you know that, huh? A lot younger. Right, first one. Quite an interesting one, this one. We're starting with a strong blue cheese. There you go. Open white, thank you. There you go. Nice fine noodles. Gavin. I had a hint of light, like light pesto y type. Light pesto y. That's all. Nut? All nut. Nutty? Mm. I think you're fucking nutty, you know that. This is an intriguing one, the second one. You can actually smell what's on there, you know that? Open wide. Next up, fresh herbs and olive oil. Good. Definitely freshly chopped herbs in there, not uh, Fresh dried. chopped herbs, yeah. that's interesting. Not dried. Also not dried, yeah. That's not bad. Finally, something I found lurking in Alex's larder. OK, this one, so spicy. So, um That was very nice, actually. Yeah? Very tomato, is it? Uh-huh. More saucy than the other two, but still very nice. Out of all three pastas, which one would you serve with a swordfish? I'd say the last one. The last one? Yeah, I'd say the last one. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Alex's taste buds have been sullied by plastic sauces for too long. The last one was a fucking pot noodle. Was it? <laughs> a curry pot noodle. <laughs> pot noodle! I've got to awaken his senses and give him a standard to aim towards. Since I first met him, Alex has blamed everything but himself for his lack of success. Fresh produce. So I'm taking him to a neighbourhood restaurant that sustained a great reputation for 14 years based on simple Italian cooking. Um, this chef's been here since um, the opening. Francesco. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Uh, how are you? Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, Alex has got a, a small, um, how would you call it, modern Italian? Yeah. Uh, plastic Italian restaurant in Letchworth. Yeah. Um, for me, the most important thing is just to look at the size of this kitchen. Yeah. This is smaller than yours. Yeah, you don't need a big kitchen to prepare good food. No, you've got one stove there. One stove. And what's the secret behind Italian cuisine? What is it? Simplicity. Simplicity. Simplicity yeah. is freshness of ingredient. That's all. No pot noodles, no? No. No, no interesting. No, no, no. Right. No, no frozen food either. No frozen food. Mm. So, uh, big left in the oven at the moment. 
Oh, lovely. Piglet, lovely. Very simple rosemary garlic, fennel seeds. Nice. And how are you serving that? Uh, just with roast potatoes. Lovely. Do See? a very light gravy. And do you use any bechamel sauce? No. No. I've been in here five minutes. I am absolutely starving. Thank you. I want Alex to taste the difference between his frozen bought in ravioli and something an Italian kitchen can be proud to serve. I want you to taste this. Yeah. Really nice, fresh flavour pumpkin, unlike ours, which clean. is mm. clean. Clean. Anything stuck to the roof of your mouth? No. No, no stodge. There must have fruit no there. Really nice sage butter. Are you capable of doing something like this? Absolutely. But do you really want to do it? I really want to do it. Am really? I wasting my fucking time? Not at all. Not at all. You will see a big difference. It's been a big wake-up call the last couple of days, and it's going to get me into focus, get the staff into focus, and get things to how they should be, and mm. get things working again. But I'm quite nervous, because I think you'll let it fall through your fingers. It will work. It's not an option. But if it doesn't work, and you don't wake up, what will you do? I will wake up. I, I will stick at it. I, I hope it. you do I it. I will. But I don't think you will. I will. And I'm telling you that in order for you to prove me wrong. Yeah, and I will prove you wrong. And just before we go, I mean, you're a great chef, aren't you? Nice car. Nice car. Um, what about the number plate? Can I sell you the number plate? A1 <laughs> chef. Um, how much is it uh, going for? The car. No, the fucking plate. number plate. 1800. 1800. 1800. So, would you have a private number plate? No. 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 Even though you're an A1 chef? Yeah. You still wouldn't have a plate? No. So what the fuck are you doing with it on your car? <laughs> Alex has had his car and number plate up for sale for the last week, and we're praying for some good news. Reserve oh, got shit. And unfortunately, your item did not sell. Yeah. I was rather hoping we could get rid of it today, you know, and have a conclusive sale. Yeah. It's not the result Alex was hoping for. But with Lanterna in desperate need of a revamp, I want to show him it's possible to change the look of the restaurant without spending lots of money. The interior was designed by Alex's girlfriend, Emily. And then we've got rustic brickwork down the end. But her idea seemed to be based on dodgy hotels she stayed in as a charter fly air hostess. For the price of a couple of tins of paint, we can rid Lanterna of his 1980s trattoria look. Charles, I don't think you should touch him. Right. We'll, we'll go with Emily's. She's well, the... Uh, Whose restaurant is it? Is it yours and Alex? It's Alex's. It's Alex's restaurant. It was Emily's last choice. It was ghastly, so I think she, she should have less of an involvement next time round. You don't trust me because the last colour. Well, it's though. not because I don't trust you. I think it needs to be a substantial improvement. Um, Emily wants pale say. walls. Alex, is your restaurant? I, I, I'd like Get your darker. goonies out and make a decision. <laughs> I'd like to go darker. <laughs> it's Lanterna's first birthday tomorrow night and a perfect opportunity to relaunch the restaurant. Right, just give me two. But in order to make it work, Alex has to be completely committed to his kitchen. It's really exciting making nice homemade soups. Yeah. And when you think of Italian restaurants, you always think of stuff being homemade. I'm replacing the disgusting minestrone soup with a rich Tuscan bean soup instead. Uh, have a good look at the menu? Yep. Yeah, I'll done read the menu. I've slimmed down the menu from a three-page epic to a simple handful of classic Italian dishes, all freshly cooked by Alex. Now look at the of it. Yeah? What do you think of the prices? And I've cut his prices to give value for money, not a concept Alex has ever been familiar with. And that sets you up with 15 to 20 portions of soup at four pound a portion. That's flavor. 80 pound return. That you've got to put 12, 15 minutes love into it. Yeah. It's fuck all. You know that. I want Alex to have every chance of making it a success. Bam. You get rid of. Just see how elegant that is, nice and white. Kevin, what do you reckon? Much better than white. The paper tablecloths cost next to nothing, and the paintings come courtesy of a local art college. Alex, what do you think? It's fucking bollocks, isn't it? It just looks great. Absolutely great. With a fully booked restaurant for the relaunch comes Alex's chance to forge a new reputation. OK, guys, big night. New menu. New. Yeah. Lots of exciting, fresh ingredients. New dining room. So yeah. walk around with a little bit of grace and put a bit of passion into it, yeah, as if you really want it. 
Yeah. This, this is, is Lanterna's is last bite of the cherry. OK, Tuscan bean soup. Very simple. Um, if Alex and his um, troops can remember Chetta. what I've taught Finish them, then of, there's uh, just a chance tonight might be a success. On the top. OK, can we just highlight the bottom of the menu here very, very quickly? Today's celebration, the first anniversary of Lanterna restaurant. From now on, Alexandra Scott will not be using microwaves or synthetic sauces. And I so fucking mean that. You know that? Yeah? yeah? yeah. OK. Ready? Yep. Let's go. Good luck. Just really hope that I don't fuck up and make any mistakes. Just really want to get it right. Just uh, someone called and say, yeah, you did good. We're OK. OK is good. Alex has got all the right ingredients here to make a bloody good business, but can he pull it off? Fuck knows. One order, one sausage, one soup. Main course is one polo, work two swordfish. Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, chef. That's better. Gently, no, 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 just gently, gently, gently. We fill the dining room with some of Lechwell's local dignitaries. But as the guests start piling in... One soup, one... one soup, the cracks in Alex's cooking begin to show. So two sausages, yeah? Oh, yeah? Guys. I've done really good fresh eggs now. You get it from crazy ready, yeah. But then start, start doing the veg, yeah. Start doing the veg, yeah. Come on, fine, Brent, start. Don't know, you always ready with the veg. I've got eight potatoes. Yeah, how long? I don't know how long. Keep it together, yes? Laura, how's everybody out there? Yeah? Yeah. What are they saying about the food? I don't know. I mean, we've been in here now an hour and a half. It's rather slow. We're not a lot of very happy bunnies at the moment, I don't think. An hour and 15 minutes, we've had an olive. <laughs> Can we reorder and have breakfast instead? Bollocks. Fucking shit. Alex seems to be falling at the first hurdle. We need two leaks, three Fuck Alex. Yeah. Talk to Aldo, yeah. yeah, I'm a bit yeah. lost at the moment. I know, I know. I know you lost, but... Well, what, you've just gone really, really, really quiet. You know that? I don't know. What? It's fine, time, so I keep repeating everything. There's only one man who can get us out of this mess and help salvage Lanterna's reputation. Can we, Gavin, please? We'll take Parmesan. Right, Gavin. Hello. Kitchen's in the ship, yeah? That's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's a big night tonight. And the night we should be in the ship. Hello? Yeah, how many linguine have you sold? Uh, not many. I don't no. think many at all. Yeah, we haven't sold one yet. No. Yeah? So, in order to help the kitchen, start pushing the fucking linguine a little bit, yeah? So we can take a bit of weight off Alex's shoulders, yeah? And push the soup as well, stuff that we can really start flying the starters out, please, yeah? OK, sure. Let's go. I want Gavin to show some bottle. If he can motivate his team and start selling the ready-prepared specials, well, that will take the pressure off Alex and get the kitchen back on track. Well done. Let me just tell you, he's he's sold... So, on the squash in here now, he's just sold another four portions. Hey, well done. Alex. Yeah, welcome oh. back. What did we discuss in the field the other day about having what? Profiterole yeah. balls. Coolio. Yeah, profiterole balls. That's exactly that. Have you found them? Yeah. Excellent. Hey, well done. Yeah. Uh, you just made the restaurant. Yeah. Another fifteen quid. By Gavin pushing the specials, it's given Alex some space to calm down, and start cooking like a proper chef. Parmigiana. One blue. Ooh la la. Blue. Uh, Get this one right. Special on a night like tonight, yeah? Yeah. After the last two and a half hours of fucking mayhem, yeah? With the right sort of encouragement, he might just pull it off. Sorry? I bet you ever cook it. No, I don't. Yeah. I bet you fucking do. I'm apologising now because Alex yeah. will overcook the blue steak again. Right. OK? Sorry. That's it. It's hardly dinner at the Cipriani, but it's not bad. No, it's fine. Blue. Bye bye. Yeah. And the customers are liking it too. Nice. Very nice. Good. I never Lovely. thought I'd say it. Look at that swordfish. But thanks to Gavin's newfound confidence, the Letchworth boys okay. have come good. Fish more salt. Rome wasn't built in a day, but at least I've brought Alex kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Timing's a little bit slow, but otherwise very good. Yeah, it's been excellent. Tonight it was something a bit different, something a bit different about it. About it. The sauce, that you know, it was, just, it was excellent. Happy first birthday. Yeah. May your second be even better. Um, Emily, happy with the dining room? Yes. That is a pathetic answer. That means no, I fucking hate it. <laughs> um, I've asked Alex to yeah. make sure that you don't get a paintbrush in your hand again. Yes? <laughs> if it's a roll man. I'll take you down that field again, you know that. <laughs> All right, say it to me once more. 
<laughs> what, the whole lot? The whole fucking lot. <laughs> the whole fucking the lot. The whole fucking lot. Sure? I'm positive in front of your <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> Where's your fucking brain tonight? It's up your fucking ass. Why the fuck did you take table six's order to table seven, you stupid wanker? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I really want them to succeed, but it will take a lot of commitment and hard work to make this place a real success. Sorry. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Chin chin. Cheers. Oh, you smooth bastards. Huh? <laughs>Six weeks later, and I can't wait to see how Hello. things are going at Lanterna. Very well, how are you? Very well, thank you. You well? See, when she screamed, I thought, I what's going on? I thought you last night, seriously. You had a dream about yeah. me last night. I thought you had a neighbour. I killed you. Killed you. Again. You're not wrong there, you know that, yeah. When I first visited, I found Chef Proprietor Alex Scott living in a dream world. I don't know how long. He believed he was a talented Italian chef, but his kitchen was filthy. I wouldn't even serve that to a fucking pig, you know that. The food was dire and overpriced. Fucking disgusting. And to make matters worse, his restaurant manager, Gavin, was a wimp. You, as a maitre d', are fucking useless. No wonder Alex was drowning in debt and about to lose his home and his business. I've never worked like this, you know, so close to cowboys. You know that. After a week of hard slog, Lanterna was reinvented and given the potential to become a great neighbourhood restaurant. Look at that swordfish, beautiful. Now I'm back to see if my time at Lanterna had any lasting effect. Excuse me, you don't walk in, eh? After the way you shouted at me... I'm sorry. I thought at least you'd fucking <laughs> make a bit of presence. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah my, no, louder. Oh, are yeah, you OK? Follow that's crap. Come on, Where the fucker. fuck have you been the last fucking two months? We've been fucking hanging around waiting for you, you lazy fucking bastard. How are you? Not bad, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you well? You. That's <laughs> better. Excellent. Where's Aldona's Christmas tree and vegetables? Don't yeah, do those little anymore. stack. They've all gone now. Do them all to order. Everything's done to order. Thank God those revolting, overcooked vegetables are off the menu. Nice. Overall, the whole staff enthusiasm is lifted. Uh, and you look cleaner. Show me nails. Not bad. Have I you feel, been I feel stuck in the car wash for three weeks. <laughs> huh? I feel re you know refreshed, reinvented. I'm happy about what I'm doing. Yeah. Need cleaner. Cook it gets done. Uh, every morning. I can't believe what I'm seeing. It gets stripped down. Joe Open does. them doors, show me. Surprise me, Alex. Yeah. That's not bad. So what's that in there? That's my um, mix of my almond tart, so it's just... Fuck it's well. me. <laughs> Fuck me. Serious? I'm speechless. Alex is actually yes. cooking. Got my pasta dough in here. Ooh. We have ravioli filled with mushrooms and walnut. Jesus Christ. Fuck it now. Yeah. You all right? <laughs> Yeah? He surprised me. I know he surprised me. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, a little bit sort of surprises. Um, in shock. Thank you. I didn't think you were capable of doing it. The amount of time I'm spending in the kitchen now is, is like, say, about four hours more to what I was doing. And the more work and effort and the more care you put into food, the more it hurts when it goes wrong. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, it's an it interesting relationship. I mean, yeah. it looks like you've now started to sort of really wake up and understand that bond with food. Each, uh -huh. each time I make like, the ravioli, I'm improving every time. Uh, obviously, tasting the food is, is better and uh, using the fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked the talk. Yep. Now I want to eat the fucking food. Okay, good. Yeah? Yep. I hope his extra commitment in the kitchen is reflected in the standard of his food. You can close your eyes and actually count the flavors, the seps, the walnuts, the pasta. Very good. I'm pleased to see he's stuck to a small, very simple Italian menu, and everything's freshly cooked. Mm. This is the kind of food you should be serving. Real, hearty, rustic, wholesome Italian food, rich with tomatoes, nice texture in the meatball, and a perfectly cooked linguine. Lovely. Fuck me. Here's Lex Worth, ready for Alex Scott. Alex has come a long way since his plastic sources just six weeks ago. Last time you were struggling to sort of live, survive, yeah. depending on credit cards? Yeah. In the ship? Yep. Yeah. 
we've we cleared. I mean, Christmas we basically cleared off all our debts, all our business and personal debts. Yeah. Started afresh. Started a new year with a clear bank balance. Uh huh. Uh, paid off all the backdated rent, and you know we're, we're standing on our own two feet now, and we're having a good January compared to everyone else in the area. Even though he's still got the car, Alex has managed to clear twenty thousand pounds worth of debt. It's a bit car in here now, isn't it? <laughs> and can finally afford to pay himself a wage. But there's still one thing standing in the way of Alex's success. And that's Alex. I sincerely hope he doesn't try to run before he can walk. I just want Gordon to come back in a year's time and say, yes, Alex, you are an A1 chef. That's what? Gordon Lino. Vegetables delicious. Unfortunately, just um, battered to fuck veal. I'll pass that on. Please. Between them, they've learned how to crack nice. the egg. Battered to fuck, literally. He was hoping for like, a nice big piece of veal. There's no, there's no texture. But apart from that, very nice. But they haven't yet made the omelette. We've been uh, cooking now for six weeks. Yeah. Because that's all I'm going to say, that you're cooking properly for six weeks. Yeah. And it takes years. You know that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Please don't forget that. Oh, no, it's a big wake-up call going to Riva. Just really sort of uh -huh. work me out to what can be done on yeah. small premises yeah. using fresh ingredients. What you're saying is that you're no longer a fucking cowboy. Absolutely. 100%. So yeah. when you think that things are going perfectly right and you don't really need to improve, think back to the days of powdered yeah. stock. Yeah. But you always learn that, don't you? And put so. the shits up yourself, because yeah. there's going to be no one here in five minutes to do that for you. Yeah. Do it yourself now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your help. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Just one last thing before I go. Hello. Gary? Yeah? Uh, mate's Gordon, how are you? Good. Mate, listen, I need a favour. I'm a little bit in the shit, to be honest. Now, Gary Rose is truly an A1 chef. I can give it to you for £2,998. Hold on a minute. You've got a number plate with. You haven't got the same, have you? I've got 22 GR. 22 GR. There you go. Fucking hell. Give it to me for less and I'll think about it. Okay, okay. Okay, mate. 500 quid. Listen. 500 quid. Uh, I'll go back to him 500 quid and hopefully we sold the fucking thing. Essex. An ancient Saxon county, more recently colonised by Essex girls, boy racers and footballers' wives. And now, a Mexican. Call him Dave. Called Israel. Find out whether he's not here. Five years ago, he brought trendy fusion cuisine to the heart of Chelmsford. He opened D Place Cafe Bar and it seemed that he'd found a winning formula. Great place, great music, great service, great food, the right price. And he worked perfectly. Over the space of two years, Israel built a mini empire of five businesses. But success didn't last long. Three years later, all but the place are gone. Even this place is hanging on by a thread. If I don't do something drastic, then you know this business will go down the pan. Hello. Having invested £150,000 and with a quarter of a million pound loan from a national brewery, Israel and his partner Tara are at their wits' end. So you've had the success there. The place was busy, now it's almost pissed through your hands. Classic example in business, trying to run before you could walk yes. without consolidating. How quiet is it? It's as bad as it's ever been. The restaurant's losing money. The, the, the bar is supporting the restaurant. Our sales have dropped by more than 50% in comparison to two years ago. How desperate are you to get it back? Very, desperate. very desperate. I'm at the crossroads. Do I still give you another go, or do I return the keys to the landlord next month and say, I better go and do something else? We don't look like the kind of guy that will give in easy. No, I don't. Israel is up to his neck in debt and doesn't even have the security of owning the building. If this goes tits up, he and Tara will lose everything. I said to you, ten seconds. In a last-ditch attempt to win back customers, Israel has employed one-time wannabe fighter pilot, now high-flying executive chef Philippe Blaise. Can I have two avocado and shrimp? With 25 years' experience, Monsieur Blaise came hot from the multi-million pound stables of Belgo and Planet Hollywood. I thought, well, why not give a try, you know, to the countryside of England? 
at Planet Hollywood, I had 150 people working for me, you know, so here it's a lot different, you know, I've got uh, two or three chefs, you know, we get some great feedback, but the only problem is that the guests don't come in. <laughs> Even on a dead cert like Valentine's night, out of 84 available seats, only 24 have been booked. But at least that means the missus and I can get a table. Ah, happy Valentine's Day. From the Valentine's special menu, I've ordered a scallop and shrimp cocktail for mains and a tiramisu creme brulee for dessert. Sorry, I decided to bring it myself because I had trouble getting a waiter. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Whew. Microwave rice. Straight away. God. Just a, uh, just a mess, really. I've only got nice scallops. They just need cooking, sort of ten seconds each side. But they're chewy with overcooked dried prawns. What the fucking is there? Dave. Dave. Phil's nemesis and maitre d is 25-year-old Essex boy Dave Bone. I think you need to have quality rather than quantity on a night like tonight. Treat people with the respect they want and the special manner. How does your meal seem? We'll go straight to the creme brulee, I think. Straight away? Didn't you ask the tiramisu? Isn't it a tiramisu creme brulee? Yeah. Sorry, do you work here? Straight to dessert, please. Rubbery overcooked. I'm sorry. I said rubbery and overcooked. And I'm not the only one complaining. I ordered salmon, and um, which sounded lovely, and but it just wasn't quite cooked. At least my pudding should be a safe bet. It's a French classic, so Philip should be able to make it with his eyes closed. And it looks like he has. Creme brulee is liquid. It's a first for me, actually. I've never had a runny creme brulee. I should ask for a straw. It's fucking embarrassing, really. Oh, come on. It's not all right. Excuse me, Dave. No, right. Like, no, listen no, to no. me. I don't want to. I don't want to. OK, then I'm go. I'm the person who looks an idiot. Go. No, no, no. You, you, you don't look an idiot. OK, I do, because I'm the comments. I'm someone. You're a fucking shit. Dave, go back to your restaurant. Anglo-French relations seem to have hit a new low. Yeah, and I'm saying to you, when it's ready, I will ring. Here we are on Valentine's night. All I can hear is the fucking chef shouting in the kitchen. Let's go. We made hard work of nothing. And what I didn't experience was any passion. Well, I did think that uh, the scallop dish was, was actually very, very good. The ones I ate were like rubber. Mm. And I'm really sorry, but I've never known a Frenchman mm. to make such a shit creme brulee in all my life. We've got a lot of work to do. Mm. Fuck me. Awful food, bad service. Cool, fucking hell. Definitely not the place for me. Israel and Tara have sunk everything they own into De Place, and they're hugely indebted to the brewery. The odds are really stacked against them, but I like them, and I also like a challenge. I want you out of the kitchen. Goodbye. You can go to the toilet. Lunchtime in the kitchen is the busiest time of the day, and Philip is back to his normal menu. I'm really hoping it's a damn sight better than last night's crap. Otherwise, we really are in the fucking shit. Cheeseburger, tiny noodles, the tiny noodles coming now. With over 40 dishes to choose from, Philippe's menu is global, both in size and choice. What is that? This is salsa sauce. Holy Everything from all-day English breakfast, hoisin noodles to Mexican platters. This is definitely more confusion than fusion. Some of it's even served in a bread bin. People don't eat out that, surely. Are you taking the piss? Well, we, we give it a bit of a polish. 70% of Philip's food is brought in, ready prepared. And what's happened to that? The Frenchman even gets his baguettes delivered frozen. Fucking hell. And buying in ready-made food is an expensive false economy. What's the most popular dish today? Uh, the hamburgers and the crabs. Are they homemade, though? Yeah, yes, they are. Oh, uh, finally. Thank you very much. Oh, just fucking rang it. Philippe's two sous chefs, Munya and Alsama, are young and inexperienced. 
they clearly know nothing beyond Phil's warped culinary world. And what's that in there? It's flesh and sauce. Uncle? Uncle, Uncle Ben. Ben's. Okay, when do you want to be a head chef? Three years. Fuck me, you better move your ass. All right, where are they all gone now? I've got a table here. Ready? Munya, when do you want to be a head chef? <sighs> well, maybe in about 10 years' time. 10 years' time, yeah. Probably have my own place, I think. That's what I would like. <laughs> they may be hungry for success, but if they think this is cooking, they're in for a surprise. Pretty lumpy, that, isn't it, no? It looks like fucking porridge. The bells. The bells. Can you tell me if this is starter? And this main course, or is it all together? Yeah, please, because I can't guess. You didn't take an Iswas. The one oh, which was here was the Greek now. salad. Lunchtime service should be a quick turnaround, but with all the cock-ups, the customers are lucky to get their food within 45 minutes. And it's not helped by the full-scale war ranging between restaurant manager Dave and Philip. What is it between you and Dave? Because you hate each other, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. And when the food does eventually make it out to the customers, it comes boomeranging back just as fast. What's up? Which one? It's my mistake, obviously. Uh, I should have spotted it before it went out. And it's not just the undercooked fish that slips through Philippe's net. What happened? She just said it was yeah. running inside. Which? What's going on here? The plates are fuller coming back than they are going out. She, he said it's not cooked properly. It's not what? No, it's not cooked properly. It tastes shit. Stodgy and fucking okay. disgusting. How many's cooked there? Burgers can be barbecued, grilled or fried, but the secret to success is to cook them to order. Look how thin they are. We don't cook burgers now. They're not even on order. Uh, we're pre-cooking them either for tonight or even for tomorrow. Because the thing is, it's for like, tomorrow. The thing is, the oven is very, very slow, and we can't put it any higher than that. Have you lost the plot? No. Have you gone a little bit fucking bonjour? No. And so, how are you going to cook that again tomorrow? Uh, it will be reheated in the microwave. Holy mackerel! And the torturous treatment of innocent food doesn't stop there. And you deep fry the bacon now. We do, yeah. Would you cook like this in France? Well, uh, you'd be fucking no. shot in France. Yeah. Hey, they'd hang you upside down from the old tree on by your bollocks, you know that? We're in the shit. Well, if we want to turn the business around, yes, uh, I, uh, I have to agree. We are in the fucking shit. Café Bar de Place is in deep trouble. In the last year, food sales have dropped £7,000 a week, and depressingly since I arrived, I found few positives to build on. It's time for Israel to pull his head out of the sand and smell the coffee. Looking at the situation, I can actually confirm I'm shitting myself. Um, I'm worried about the situation in the kitchen, the idea of cooking. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of that going on in there. No. The standard. It's pretty crap. And um, what I have identified lately is lack of pride. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a huge lack of respect. Too many individuals, like you've got now, will completely fuck the business. But have you because lost respect enough. for your business? No, I lost sense of pride for the business. It starts from the top. You have to stay fucking strong on top of it, because without your determination, we're fucked. And we yeah. need to turn their attitudes yeah. round, get their heads out their assholes, mm. and fucking get this place back on track. The animosity between Dave and Philip is dragging the business down. They're like a whinging old couple. So on day three, it's time to start building bridges okay. with some tried and tested marriage guidance tactics. Hold out your hand. So, whilst you've got that egg in your hand, tell Dave what you really think about him. Well, Dave, you just an arrogant little bastard. Uh, you know, you think you know everything. You're the most beautiful, you're the most perfect guy there is. And uh, that's the bottom line. 
Hand down. I think you're talking out of your arse, aren't you? Because when I do try and talk to you, if I do shout, it's because you argue and don't let me finish. So from now on, stop being a stubborn fucking French bastard because we're not going to work at all and this place is going to go down. There's nothing that I would like more than actually being able to work with the manager of the restaurant. And this whole exercise is not personal. It's about business and doing your fucking jobs. And I just beg you both to continue talking to one another, because that hasn't taken place. Understand each other's jobs. Now shake hands. For the better. Mm. It's not just Phil's relationship with Dave that's worrying me. He seems to have lost any real command of his kitchen. Can I have vegetable noodle? An efficient brigade thrives on constant motivation from their head chef. But Munya and Alsama are left to fester in bottles, sauces, and frozen deep fried food. I don't think we've seen mushroom like that before. Where, where the breaded mushrooms. Breaded mushrooms, yeah. They're picking up one bad habit after another. And Philip doesn't even seem to care. Being in Essex, you know, people tend to like the omelette well cooked. So this is an Essex omelette, not a French omelette? Oh, it's not a French omelette, no. OK. Holy mackerel. Show me. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, oh. that's fucking cooked, huh? It's time to find out what happened to Philippe Blaise, executive chef extraordinaire. I see a man in front of me at 40 years of age, French, that's had bloody good jobs before at an executive fucking level, whether it's Belgo or Planet Hollywood, but I don't see anything that resembles a chef. If you are buying so much food in and it's making you look shit, yeah. why aren't you fighting against that? Chefs fight for reputations and show the hunger to yeah. the customers of making them happy. It's true. Up to a point, Yes. I may have given up because I see that there's Thank no you. hope. But I am still as hungry as I was to actually do and create things. OK, well, I want to help you. And I mm. want to work closely with you to get things back online. Just to install that little bit of fucking pride. normality. Pride. You just said it. Get it back. When a business stops making money, it's tempting to stop investing in it. And it's blatantly obvious that's exactly what Israel's done. The dining room is tatty, and the kitchen is lacking some of the basic essentials. You've got to give this man the tools in order to operate this fucking restaurant properly. I'm, I'm frustrated that we've got a freezer full of crap, and we've got an oven that doesn't work. So we've got to get our priorities right. Your business, you're employed as the head chef, you both have to start speaking the same language. That is absolutely critical. I hope this is the beginning of things to change. And I hope that if Philippe has felt in the past that he's been put under pressure to cut corners, uh, not to cut corners without talking to me. With the lines of communication open and the promise of vital equipment on the horizon, Philippe and I can start thinking about the food. Do you not think the menu is too big? Yes, it is. Maybe, finally, we're starting to get somewhere. To pull in lunchtime diners is out with fusion confusion and in with a snappy menu of tasty fresh food that can be pushed out quick. You see what I'm trying to do? I'm just yeah. trying to lift it. I don't yeah. want to get complicated. These guys aren't in a position to get anything complicated done. That's pretty obvious. Mm. And Phil's come up with a classic French sandwich to get our creative juices flowing. So you're quite passionate about the crop, monsieur? I do like it, yes. When you're so passionate about something as nice and delicious as this, mm -hmm. how can you make that baguette with the chicken and the plastic cheese? I know. This is water for duck's back for you. You're a Frenchman. This surely must be the kind of food you mm. like yeah. cooking. It is. Because I've seen you more relaxed in the last 10 minutes than I have in three days. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice for you to give a little bite to the guys and tell yep. them about it. I Show will. them a little bit of sort of, you know, yep. passion. Oh. At last, some real food, Beautiful. and it smells delicious. Huh? All yep. the way from Dijon. Huh? You're happy with that one, aren't you? 
That's beautiful. We did, we, we did nice. Them. Very nice. Yeah. Alsama, what do you think? Nice. I like it. Mmm. Munya. Baguette. Chicken baguette. Or cop monsieur. I think a cop monsieur is much better because yeah. it looks better, tastes better. We're going to take a picture. Why are we taking a picture, Philip? Oh, that curves up there. It becomes idiot proof. Mm. No matter how easy you think the sandwich is, it's still possible to damage a business on a shit sandwich. In the past year, Philip has already changed the menu four times, to no effect. So it's not surprising that Israel needs a little reassurance that another new menu is the right step. If we agree that we're going to cook it this way, yeah. and it changes in, and cuts corners, that is frustrating. When I talk about reintroducing menus, I'm not talking about fucking food that's over his head. I'm talking about soups, sandwiches, yeah. and straightforward dishes that you can identify that are idiot-proof and fucking delicious. Yeah. That's music to my ears. That's all. That's... But it's not just the food that's been letting the place down. And, and Dave Bone dishes. has been a worry to me ever since I arrived. Yeah, He's talked the like talk, that. but done little to back it up. You have fallen for the um, biggest problem any restaurant manager has with their staff. You become their best mate. Mm. And that's pissed off a few people in here. You can't afford to run this restaurant as your social event. Otherwise, mate, you won't be here for much longer. Turning it into my own show mm -hmm. was probably not the best for business, but the easiest. You're running a fucking smart, cool cafe bar. New start. Stand apart from your staff. It's time for a peace summit between the warring factions. So I've asked Israel to come up with an exercise to promote communication and trust between the kitchen and the front of house teams. You add your onions into it, and you start smashing, yeah? Or They're going to be making guacamole, but there's a twist. Okay. And the teams are... Philip, you're partnered up with David. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh. The person in the back is actually making the guacamole, but you're all going to be putting a blindfold on. So you're going to have to depend on the person in front of you directing you, i.e., we're going to have to depend on the restaurant helping the kitchen. And the kitchen helping the restaurant. Put his blindfold on. <laughs> if yeah, you're good. The, the head, not the neck, Dave. Have you oh, no. really seen you now? Stop okay. Hands behind your back. Yeah. Yeah. Three minutes, starting from now. Very, very soft, Cut one. And if you cut the bowl next to it. They're all slowly, because you're just digging in. Doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. It's only very much. Peach or fruit? No, not peach. A pinch. As in a pinch. Oh, pinch. pinch. Sorry. Halfway there. Eat it, Munya. You're a chef. Point the finger. Stop stop moving. That's me tasting it. Israel, how are we doing? We're done. Can you get another mash? Stop! Holes in front. OK, this one. Oh. Mm. It's quite nice, but nothing's mushed up. So whose fault was that? Munya's. I guess I was, was the one that couldn't see. So. Was it? Was it? Mmm. <laughs> not bad. Nice, but there's no Tabasco in there. Dave and Phillips. Yours were the best. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I think Dave gave you more encouragement there in the last three minutes than he has done in two years. No matter what happens from this day on, you guys have got to get on. Because if the head chef and the general manager get on then everybody else underneath you follows suit. Do you understand the importance of that? Well, well we can start. Totally. To start. Totally agree. Give him a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not Sweet. go that far. <laughs> Here's the bonding. A happy couple. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Philip and Dave. <laughs> go on. Luck, there you go. <laughs> the bonding masters. <laughs> One small step for Philip and Dave, but potentially a huge leap for the business. I am never going to put your finger in my mouth again. <laughs> you put your finger... No, yours! My Did finger you in your... Jesus Christ! <laughs> by day four, Israel's ready to grab his business by the balls. This is his last roll of the dice. And he wants to start with consistently good fresh food from the kitchen. Oh, Philip, with the new potatoes, aren't it? Yes, nicely roasted. They don't taste very nice. It just tastes bitter. 
They haven't gone into the fryer, have no. they? No, no. You sure you haven't put them in the fryer? Yep. Uh, look, mister. Yeah. Let me just have a quick word, very, very important. Yeah. This man is paying your salary. Yeah. His business is about to close. Do you understand how critical the situation is? I do. So pay the man fucking respect and tell the truth. You have deep fried those potatoes. No, these one haven't been deep fried. They are wrinkled, dehydrated, and they have been in the deep fat fryer. That's, that's not dehydrated. Yeah. You're talking to a chef. Yes, and for as long as I've got a hole in my butt, big boy, those fucking potatoes have been in the deep fat fryer. Don't fucking lie. I know what I did. You know the oven's not even hot enough to roast a potato. We can't even cook a fucking burger in there. They've been in the fryer. Tell the fucking truth. Look, they went in the oven. Okay. Tell him the fucking truth. He's so adamant, I've even started to doubt my own judgment until I tracked down Alcimar. How many trays of potatoes did you fry this morning? I fried everything here. You fried all four? Yes. Yeah. And who told you to fry them? My chef. Your chef, yeah. yeah. Why did you deep fry the potatoes? You, you said it earlier, it's because the oven is nowhere near hot enough. Right. Can we get back to basics now and cut yeah. the fucking crap? Sorry. But I fucking hate liars. No, right, really. But it's me who's asking you. Yeah, from the camera. Oh, forget that. about the fucking camera. I don't. Philippe, don't you think that you, the only reason I'm doing maybe these programs is because it's the last thing that I can do to save the business? I want honesty from you. That's all I want. Don't be ever, ever be scared of looking like a prat. But I'd rather be an honest prat than a liar prat. Because then you lose self-respect. My mistake. Uh, I can only apologise for this. If there's one thing worse than a chef who can't cook, it's a chef who tells porkies. My workload has just doubled. And there's only one way out of this calamitous cul-de-sac. To get this place back online, we're going to have to close for two days. There's no way on earth we're ever going to get the food back up to scratch while you're sending what you're sending out. I need 48 hours. We'll work on tidying up the dining room, painting, and every member of staff working for that goal, to get it fresh, and then two days in the kitchen to get it on track. How do you feel about it, Israel? We can't afford not to take money, but we can't afford not to have a future business. Yeah. I think something that we need to stop is the bullshit. Mm -hmm. I need people to be honest with me. Philip, are you ready for this? If it is to make the business better, I'm, I'm 110% behind. It's not just the kitchener. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the dining room as well. Yeah, there's a serious, you know, improvement there to take place. It's a lack of pride. A lack of pride. And the potatoes was a prime fucking example. Cut the bullshit. You hit the nail on the fucking head. And those that are pulling on the rope stay and work. Those that aren't interested in pulling on the fucking rope, fuck off. Day five at the place in Essex. I've established the chef is to be kept on a very short leash. And his food is beyond tragic. So for the first time in four years, Israel has shut the place down. Hello, Michael, this is Joel Pond. Um, just returning your call. With no customers, we can throw everything at revitalizing the image. And most importantly, the god-awful menu. Whose fault is it really? It's mine and nobody else. Now it's a fresh start. Let's get it back on the road and very soon we'll be on the motorway. <laughs> when a restaurant drastically changes its food, it's important to back it up with the right atmosphere. A couple of coats of paint is an easy way to dazzle your customers and give you a second chance. Today, 
is just about getting the whole place back to look sharp, crisp, clean, uh, and nice, and walk in and say, wow, yeah, I like it. The kitchen's been scrubbed clean, and the oven's fixed at last. But that's not all. For Phil, it seems all his Noels have come at once. I'm shaking. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to have a kitchen with proper equipment. Israel and Tara must be bleeding somewhere. This one's going home with me. I'm sleeping with it tonight, not Dave. <laughs> From now on, plastic sauces and frozen foods are barred. The new menu will be cooked strictly from fresh ingredients, and our first buy is a four kilo ham. Drizzle, the honey and the brown sugar, over. It's a delicious steal at a cost of just 10 pound, and with a little lateral thinking, it's a potential money spinner. This ham, how far has it gone already? Fried eggs with ham, crop monsieur, pea and ham soup, can you see just how yeah. much money you can generate from one ham, yes? Surrounded by all this fresh food, there's a tangible change of energy in Philip's That's two really young nice. chefs. Really nice. mm. The seasoning is it's quite even. It's so quite nice. It's, it's, nice. Not, it's, not, it's not too much. Mm -hmm. While Munya tends to the soup, Alcimo is carefully preparing a pot of delicious bubble and squeak. Mm. What do you think? It's a little bit more salt. A little bit more salt, yeah, good. I'm glad you said that. Mm. Fresh food. Fresh food. Mmm, fucking hell. Their career's in your fucking hands. You know, you're supposed to be guiding them through this. You know that? Yeah? How many big chefs did you work for when you were their age? Quite a few. Yeah, and did they kick your ass? Oh, yes. Yeah? Do you hate them for it? I love them for it. You love them for it. Do you think they love you when you show them nothing? I think now I'm going to learn it. You've made that from start to finish. Before you taste it, do you know what I'm going to do? Take a fucking photograph. Oh, we know. Philip, yeah. that's your reference. Yes? At last, it feels like we're getting somewhere. The chefs are infused, and the dining room has been transformed almost beyond recognition. But as it stands, the outside of the building is selling all our hard work short. So well. Building's beautiful. Yeah, so show it off. But we've got to get rid of all the tacky shit stuck to the front of it. Now that you mention it, and you see it from a different point of view, we go, we're promoting drinks, we're saying cocktail night, Thursday night, mm. and we'll go menu displayed on a tatty yeah. board there. Yeah, it's, you're waking up to it, and I'm glad you're starting to open your fucking eyes, mm. because it really is important, and, you know, the fucking word, de place, well, yeah. you know, that's got to go in the bin. I think it's been consensus, we're going for um, Saracen's Cafe Bar. Yeah. Fucking perfect. Israel, it seems is now on a crusade to bring the place back from the dead. Now get out of there and tell the world about it. We've got just one day before the customers return to a fully booked grand reopening. Everything depends on the kitchen perfecting each and every new dish on the menu. Nice and fried eggs. Turn down the gas. I don't want the yolks broken. OK? They may be easy peasy, but consistent quality will be the key to ensure repeat business. You have to get in there and really concentrate. Yeah? This is so fucking easy. The centerpiece for our menu is going to be the most famous butty in the world, the club sandwich. When I started cooking, yeah. I had to make these for a living. Every day the same. Every day the same. In just 12 hours' time, the chefs in the front of house have got to function as a tight-knit, well-oiled machine. Chicken avocado salad, that's the ham roasted with double fried egg. And a the minor miracle has occurred. Salmon fish cake tartar sauce. Dave and Philip are communicating and the Welsh civilly. Fantastic, they all look really nice. The food is looking 200% better, but to please our lunch hour crowd, tomorrow the grub will have to fly out. Are you ready? I need to be sure yeah, these boys are, are really on their toes. I'll do the toast. When that goes to 12, we go. Go! Three club sandwich, quick! I'll do the bread. Quick, quick, quick. What are you doing first? Avocado. Come on! Tomorrow we're fully booked for lunch. Fully booked. Philip, it's not funny, you know that? Yeah, I know that. Al someone's the only one who's talking about putting his bacon on. Who else is going to put their bacon on? I am. When? Tonight? No. Nope. Ali! Push on cooler! Toast? Yes, here we go. 
Hey, presenting to you, Leo. Anyone thought about starting their French fries? Uh, Ali! There you go, so I'm going to get your fries on, OK? Thank you, Chef. Look at the speed of you. Fantastically fast. Is the executive chef going to come in last? <laughs> no, that's his. Thank that's you. yours there. Thank you. Ali Mounier, come on! Don't quit, big boy. Do not quit. You never, ever throw the towel in on service. Just come up to the hot plate and accidentally drop your plate. <laughs> drop it. No, drop it. Oh, shit! Oh, man. Mad town. Shit, Munya. Hey, listen. All three of you, well done. That was fucking excellent. Yeah, the speed, working under pressure, and concentrating was phenomenal. And the best sandwich is yours, Philip. Great. Without him even knowing it, I've just managed to demote the executive chef to the club sandwich chef. Now, tomorrow, we've actually got a chance of fucking surviving a very busy lunch. 10am launch day. With 70 customers booked in for lunch, no one can afford to be ill prepared. I'll be running checks and checking out the kitchen. All right. It's a delicate balance. We've got a new menu. Are you ready for this? Yes. Big day. Don't fuck that up. The waiting staff are only just up to speed, and one weak link could bring Israel's last remaining business tumbling about his ears. I think it'll go well. I'm nervous. Um, because everybody's on edge. It's like opening a brand new business. Uh, I don't know before when they know how disastrous it can be. The first thing I've got to say is the place is defunct. It's gone. Yeah, welcome to Usarison's Cafe Bar. Yes, we work together as a team. We understand each other. Yeah, there's going to be several customers that are going to be going for a 30 minute lunch. That's a soup and a sandwich, a soup and a salad, whatever they prefer within 30 minutes. I can guarantee if they leave under 30 minutes, they'll be back next week three or four times between Monday and Friday. Get it right, yeah? This is it. Without you, I can't do it. Consistency, Alcima. Yeah. Bingo. New order, two tomato soup, two sandwiches. That's the, the quick deal, yeah? 30 yeah, minutes, yeah? Is. Well, tell the brigade. The lunch deal is cheap at just £6.50. Is the bacon on for the club sandwich? Yeah. Is the toast in? It's going in Come now. On. To make it worth Israel's while, Dave must fill the restaurant twice over, which means turning the tables fast. This has to go like clockwork. Three more minutes. Excellent. Good. Um, two seconds. Philip. Yeah. Philip. Is that okay. Philip. Thank you. Yeah. What's that in there? A new potato. Where did that come from? I know we've got to push it out and move our ass, but we're not going to serve that like that. What's burning? Turn it over. Medium. Fucking We've been over this menu time and time again, but Munya and Alcima are already buckling under the pressure. Ham and eggs. How fucking yeah. difficult is that? Look, you've burst yeah. the yolk, yeah? It's the customer's privilege to burst their own fucking yolk, not you, yes? And there's only three orders on. Breast the lettuce, Munya. Some vinaigrette on the Welsh rabbits all pissing over the plate. Thanks the chef. By 12.30, the restaurant's full to bursting. Do we have a waiting list? No, it's all down to the kitchen now. One more club sandwich, another three bread, but another burger with chips and baked beans. Service, please. Service, please. Where's the rest Put of the fish cakes? The I said to take some out of the freezer. It seems my super basic menu isn't basic enough for this team of numbskulls. They're not cooked. No, they're not cooked. Look, Munya, Munya. The burner in the deep fat fryer has gone out, and they've been trying to cook chips in cold oil. Properly cooked. No wonder. But you can't let one problem bring the whole operation to its knees. No, we just fry the potato wedges in a pan, no? Huh? Yeah. They're almost like a roast potato. All together, six soup. The orders are stacking up. And the panic has already set in. Call these new orders. Can I have some grass on this soup, please. You mean chai? Yeah, just give me the fucking grass. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, and now there's a problem with the tickets. Table four, five, five. Table five, I don't have. I've got three. All the communication has gone out the window, and the customers are left in the dark as to why their food is taking so long. 
we have an hour for lunch, so obviously we had to try and fit the food in within the hour. So I've just had to phone the office and tell them we're going to be a bit late. I've got to get back to work in two minutes. Those that are getting their food are loving it. But 20 minutes later, there's no resolve to the ticket confusion. Uh, the ticket's gone. It's I know, it's disappeared. Yeah. That's why there's such a problem, because they've been waiting out for ages and nobody's getting their food. Mm -hmm. Phil's only guidance through this mess are his tickets, but it seems everyone's had their hands on them. I don't have the ticket back. And if a chef loses an order, it's like an air traffic controller losing a plane. Dave took it, he didn't bring back. One ribeye rare, one side... And this one's going down fast. Hold on, come here, come here. What's going on? Why is the food coming back? Turn around, I've got table seven here that you're giving me. That was gone a long time ago. So we've already sent the table? Oh, come on. Right now, we don't need to fucking repeat the order. Huh? That's because the waiter leaves don't, the order No, don't blame, don't blame the waiter. put it on the pig. No. Very simple. I'm going for a cigarette. I had it. Hello? Of this ship. What do you mean you're going out for a cigarette? Well, no. We're I, sinking. I had enough of this ship. Yeah, you but we're know, sinking. You, you can't know, just there, disappear. There, there is enough, OK? When somebody does a mistake, I'm the first to admit it, but not but, when I'm covering yeah, for you, someone else's shit. But you don't care. I had enough of this. You can't just walk out for a cigarette, Philip. I'm sorry. The shit's hit the fan. I'm here to help. Let's get back on here straight away and start again. Let's go. Come on. It seems Israel believes Philip's not entirely to blame for this fiasco. Why do I have a waitress going into the kitchen with a problem without Dave knowing? You've been told there is a manager on the floor, and that manager should be on the ball with every single fucking table. What stage are they? Have they had the coffee? Have they had the drink? How long since they order? That's what I want out of it. Stops here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stops no, it here. has to stop here, yeah. Exactly yeah. that. I was wrong. Israel's right. As a manager, Dave should have the situation well in hand. You were in charge of carrying the food in and out. You need and to know at what stage. No, no, no. You, it's going hang on. Well, hang on, let me finish. No, okay. Talk to me Get off today. the floor now. Yeah, get off the floor now. Fine. Okay, get off the floor now. Fine. Use the back door, please. The catalogue of disasters has yeah. taken their toll. Israel's had to give away over £100 worth of complimentary food and drink. And to avoid further embarrassment, he's decided to shut the service down after just one sitting. How long for table four, Philip? Do you know how long they've been in here? I can imagine. One hour, 20 fucking minutes. One hour and 20 minutes. What the fuck's going to happen Saturday? Well, tomorrow we're going to have to get our ship together, that's for sure. It's been a real disappointment for everyone, but we can learn from today's harsh lessons. May I suggest, you know, only take the customers you can do and then each and every day build it, because Chelmsford is a small, close-knit town and if word spreads that you've reopened and the food's not as good as you think it should be, then they won't come back. Huh? Phil's clearly been through the mill these last few days. Even though I didn't want to admit it, I have actually lost part of that passion which I had. Yeah, Doesn't it, it become it, painful, it, trying to cook with no feelings? It, it becomes an automatism. Mm -hmm. Will you find that passion again? It has come back already. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't think that lunchtime when you walked out for a cigarette. But you came back, that was the most important thing, you know that? Yeah. And I appreciated that. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to do it without you. Mm. It's not my kitchen, you know, this is your I kitchen. Know. I know. Yeah, perhaps one of the toughest weeks I've ever had in my fucking yeah. career. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, definitely. But get it back on track. Mm. That's the most important thing. Israel, keep on them. Mm. Yeah, breathing down their necks, yeah? Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Up. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, guys. Chef. Thank you. Yes. Do you really hate me? <laughs> Can I pass on the comments? <laughs> Bye, guys. No. Yes. Hey. Thank you. I'll very be back. Much. Huh? Thank you. I'll be back. Yes. Good. With my new potatoes. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh.
It's been six weeks since I was last in Chelmsford, and I've heard rumours that something strange has been going on at the Saracen's Head Cafe Bar. What happened to Saracen's Head? In the week I spent at the place, it didn't take long to suss out that D stood for dreadful. And for as long as I've got a hole in my butt, big boy, those fucking potatoes have been in the deep fat fryer. The owners were in dire straits. If I don't do something drastic, then, you know, this business will go down the pan. And the staff were dysfunctional. From now on, stop being a stubborn fucking French bastard. We need to turn their attitudes round and fucking get this place back on track. Over the longest seven days of my life, we injected some passion into the food. No, that's it. That's yours there. Ali, come on! And got the team eating out of each other's hands. That's me tasting it. It wasn't perfect. I'm going to get back to work in two minutes. But I really felt the Saracen's Cafe Bar was well on the road to recovery. All three of you, well done. That was fucking excellent. The latest news from inside is unbelievable. I thought things couldn't get any worse, but they just have. Um, God, how strange. I mean, really, really strange. Um, Israel's no longer there. The place has gone into receivership. She said two weeks ago, it doesn't belong to him. The brewery have taken it back, and um, he's been kicked out. The brewery has put the lease of the place up for sale, and Israel and Tara are out on their ears. Ironically, the one person I suspected might not be here is here. Philip Blaze, executive chef extraordinaire. It's, uh, it's a very, very sad, you know, uh, what a shock. story. Total, total shock, yeah. And everything yeah. you put into it, and what the guy's done, and just... Yeah. All gone down the drain, basically. You're looking very clean, obviously not making many club sandwiches. <laughs> What's the time actually, down to? We are, it's one of the best seller. What, better than the croque monsieur? It no, is, come on. It is better, a better seller than the croque monsieur. What's coming out the quickest? The club sandwich. The club sandwich. So it appears that things were really starting to happen at the place after I left, and the food sales were on the up. Hello, Israel. Hello. Um, I did not expect to see you here, you know that. But it seems it was too little, too late for Israel and Tara. Thank oh, you. shit. Yeah, very well. How are you feeling? All right, thank yeah? you. Yeah? Yeah. It was our last chance to get it, to get it together, and we did. The town was bussing with, with Saracen's Head being able to produce the quality of the food that we were producing. Nice, simple. Yeah, yeah. The people were coming in and said it yeah. was delicious, yeah. it was perfect. They didn't have long to reap the benefits. Shortly after I left, the brewery took the business out of Israel and Tara's hands. And then it just happened on the spur of the moment that you're at work and all of a sudden, bang. Well, we, were, we didn't even know we were going to be asked for the keys. Just bought a new house, mortgage, all at the wrong time. You're out? Okay. Yeah. On your ass. You're seven months pregnant? Seven, uh, eight months pregnant. Maybe. Eight months pregnant. I mean, this is not the kind of predicament I, mm. you know, I expected to see. Yeah. Um, what did you lose? Israel lost. Obviously, more than I did, but mine was inheritance from my mother and my grandmother. The fact that I was naive and I didn't know how corporate big nationals work and, and, and the world of the accountants and the solicitors and all of that crap, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about. Mm. I know how to serve people, I know how to make them smile, I know yeah. how to deal with a complaint, I know yeah. how to deal with the kitchen. I don't know how to deal with business, you know, mm. transactions of that matter. No. And that's where it hurts. I, can love you and leave you. I feel so sorry for them, and I still can't quite believe what's happened. Um, good luck Thank with you. the baby. Take care. Israel and Tara had generally right. thought they could keep the business going. Right. But sadly, after calling the spokesperson for the brewery, it all becomes crystal clear. OK. All right. Thank you, Tim. Bye. Um, sounds now um, like the brewery were only acting in their best interest by accepting the highest bid. And I think Israel's been slightly naive. No matter how good the food is, you've really got to understand every aspect of your business. And the areas you don't understand, seek advice before you get fucked. <laughs> Six and a half minutes. That's not bad. Does it taste as good as it looks? Very nice. You have got your passion back, you know that. That is fucking delicious. Nail it.
Brighton, London by the sea. Loads of locals and a steady stream of hungry tourists. Nesting just a stone's throw away from the seafront is Mama Sherry's Salt Food Shack, offering classics from America's deep south. Oh, nice, nice, nice. The big soul mama, AKA Sherita Jones, has raised 33 foster children, but running her first restaurant is proving a far bigger handful. It's all gonna just kinda go and fall apart. <laughs> so I don't want it to fall apart. God, it's definitely a shack on the outside anyway. Fucked up caravan. Is this it? Sharita Gordon, yes, good hello, to see Gordon. you. Nice to see you. This Welcome. is small and quaint. Welcome. It's quaint, it's cosy. No, I'll say. It's, it's, like so walking, it's like walking into your front, front lounge. Room. Thank you. And see? that's what it's supposed to be about. Because I tend to spend all my life here, this has got to be my front room. Otherwise, when do I get to kick my feet up? So this is where After three and a half years, despite throwing everything at this place and working seven days a week, Sharita is still in serious debt to the tune of £65,000. And who's the chef? I'm kind of the chef. I come from a background of big mamas, and all of them cook. Mm -hmm. It's called stick to your ribs, basically. Stick to your roots. Ribs! A oh, rib, <laughs> right. Stick to your roots, to your ribs. <laughs> Mama Sherry's shack seats 40 at an extremely intimate squeeze. But I yes. am not a West Indian restaurant. But sadly for Sharita, that's not often a problem, as weekday trade is virtually non-existent. It's great at the weekends, mm -hmm. but somehow we've discovered that we're in a hole. We're just in this hole, a financial hole, that we can't claw our way out of. Mm -hmm. Have you made any money since you've been open? Nope, not a penny. Not a single penny have we made since we've been open. It's hard to put our finger on okay. why. Is it critical? I mean, yes. how, long, how long can you continue staying like this, truthfully? <sighs> truthfully, I'd say... Three to six months? Maximum. Maximum. So no customers, no, life, no money. Mind your head. Right. Here it's you time go. to check out the kitchen. God. Sharita calls herself the cook, but Brian Moyo is her head chef. So who's in charge? How you doing, dude? Fine, thank you. Do you do this and all that and Paul and... Uh, I try not yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> we either this go in for cliches. No. So are you the head chef or are you the cook? Why? Um, I'm confused. Well, I... I was employed to come as a head chef. Right. But because of uh, problems with financing uh -huh. and things like that. So Don't let me stop you. I took a, a, a sit back. So who, do, who writes the menu? Uh, Sherita has written everything. She does uh -huh. everything, basically. So you've got a cushy job then, really, haven't you? You could say that. Uh -huh. As a chef, yes. Pretty chill. <laughs> huh? Yeah, as a chef, yes, it's pretty chill. But uh... A head chef who doesn't write the menu and only works 35 hours a week. Next, he'll be telling me he's forgotten how to cook. Here you go. We've Thank got you. some catfish goujons with uh -huh. hush puppy and our homemade pineapple salsa. It's actually quite nice. Very, um, very delicate fish. And um, it's nicely fried. Very light. Really nice. Thank you. Be back with your mains. Take it down pretty to my mama and mama oh to make it. Oh, my God. For mains, my plate's piled high with a clumsy mess of ribs. Spicy chicken jambalaya and corn and bean succotash. I hope he likes it. Mmm. <laughs> Fucking hell. There's ribs. It's so tender. I have to say, it's straight on the plate with no real care, but it tastes phenomenal. This may be the first time I actually go back to the kitchen with an empty plate. Um, thank you. Bloody delicious. Thank you. And you know what? Thank you. I thought it was going to be really spicy, but no, it turned no, down no. and no. it was spot on. Thank and it you. actually made me feel like I was back at Mum's for the first time. Oh. And having oh. some home cooking. Oh. It was very good. Oh, don't get me crying. The, 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 <laughs> there are things I would change. Okay, fine. And, tweet, and I'm happy, definitely. I'm happy to but hear about in general, that. I can't take a picture of this place. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Mama, mind your God. head, mind your head. Oh God. I fed Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and he cleaned his plate. How the hell did you turn that thing off? She doesn't shut up. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. Shit. Charita's down-home style should be a unique selling point but it ain't working. I need to go back to the kitchen and find out why. 
Friday. And Sharid is tackling most of the day's preparation single-handedly in a desperate bid to save money. Part of this is, you know, you've got to get your hands dirty. Yeah, of course, yeah. Marinating meat, making dressings, sauces and baking are all crucial things to prepare in advance of a busy service. And it's just shaking off the excess. Yep. But deep-frying chicken wings eight hours in advance of their first booking, that can't be right. Yep. Just leave so why do you cook them now? Because if you cook them off now and leave them to cool, when the order comes in, it's just a matter of picking out how many we need and they go back in and they come back up to a nice... And they don't go dry? No. Mm -mm, no. I'm beginning to suspect the good old home cooking isn't as wholesome as it could be. Mmm, they smell good. Most of it's coming from the freezer rather than the soul. So how many freezers have we got? Thirteen. Thirteen. Fuck me. By the time Brian turns up, there's not much left for him to do. So I mean, you can't really feel like a head chef if you've got Sharita in the kitchen every morning cooking the food and you come in That's and just yeah, you know. send it. In the sense that you're not actually really cooking, you're just coming in and putting things together. Putting things together, yes. It's, it's kind of hard, yes. Have you lost motivation? Yes. So, if Sharita's head chef's gone off the boil, I'm hoping her remaining crew of part-timers have a bit more spunk. Heading up front of house is Lauren. She arrives 10 minutes late for the evening service. 20-year-old AD seems to be more committed to his glamorous day job. So why panel beating? Uh, I've got my mate. Just to finish at half four every day. Kitchen porter Gavin lives next door, but he appears to turn up when he feels like it. And Sharita's librarian husband, Phil, hot foots it back from the day job to become basement barman and resident <laughs> DJ. <laughs> he looks like your washer-upper. No, no way! No, I have been able to wash he it does that here. as well. These and numerous other part-time staff are all members of Mama Sherry's big laid-back family. So when he's in the ship, in the middle of service, he slowed them down like fucking Michael Jackson. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, fuck you yeah, now. I hate to ruin a good party, but if you want to run a successful business, then the terms laid-back and professional just don't mix. It's not just about how good the food tastes, it's about how it fucking gets there as well. And that is crucial. I can't wait to see this team of jokers in action. All right, so we get going because they're hungry. Immediately, it's clear who's the mummer in this kitchen. I'm getting you a chili pepper because you ain't gonna. Yeah, no, just the one. <laughs> Can I take the seeds out at least? Sharita talks to them like they're her children, and she's the only one cooking anything from fresh. I need to start cooking up these fajitas now. Okay, Sharita, all of the seconds uh, part you're in. All right, okay. Two potato skins, onion rings, cornbread, two pieces. Can I get some jambalaya heated up, please? For Brian and Aidy, it's just an elaborate heating and plating up exercise. Mountains of messy food, school dinner style. A D minus, must try harder. That's hot gravy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. On hot turkey. Yep. Serves on cold plates. Yep. With cold salad. Yep. <laughs> What's he laughing at? So this is serious. This is you weren't going to break sweat there, were you? Okay. Oh, you were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's about to kick off. When? There's twice as many staff as there need be. This should be an absolute breeze. But Sharita's yeah. killing herself, yeah. trying to do everything. We got everything in the basement, yeah? Everything's gone. Yeah, everything's gone. <laughs> Paying two fully qualified chefs to dress and send a plate of nachos. Come on, that's a surefire way to break a business. Fucking hell, it's painful. Okay. Very, very painful. Right. Tonight, on several occasions, you're standing here, cooking away in a world of your own. Yeah. And these guys standing there, just almost playing with themselves mm -hmm. because they're waiting for something from you. If you are the head chef, yes. then you're going to have to start taking the reins. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try and get through it. A busy night without pissing your pants with laughter. Two hours, pure concentration, mm -hmm. without laughing. OK. And I bet you can't do it. I can do it. Are you fucking smiling already? <laughs> if there was ever a case of too many cooks, this is it. One of them will have to go. Brighton's best kept secret, Mama Sherry's soul food shack. It's so well kept, it's losing a thousand pounds a week. No one it. 
20 past 10 in the morning. No By day three, here. I've uncovered a couple of reasons why. I know it's chilled, but fucking hell, not as chilled as a snapper. Why is no one here this time in the morning? It's ridiculous. Firstly, the food's good, but it could be so much better. Where's, uh, where's Brian? Let me give you a hand. Brian? Yeah. I have no idea. He should be here soon. Secondly, there are far too many staff, and most of them aren't pulling their weight. Late this morning. Yes, uh, About half an hour. What did you do to him when he's late? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'm just going to wash up right now. So you're washing up as well? Yeah. She's in, she opens up, brings all the supplies upstairs. You should be ashamed of yourself. Brian. Sharita's next milk? task is to make yeah. a huge batch of macaroni cheese that will last her for two whole weeks. Let me just keep this going. Ah, oh, this is coming up nicely. Hot from the stove, her food is irresistible. People will travel miles to taste it. I like that. Yeah? Yeah, very nice. Uh, but like a lot of her home cooking, this lot is destined for the freezer, where its delicious texture and flavour will be lost forever. We cook beautifully. Yeah. And I don't understand why you want to freeze it, okay. why it's so tasty. Well I, well, I think, I don't think I want, it's not a case of wanting No, I think to. you've got into a habit. I've gotten a habit. Which is a lazy habit. Mm. You're not lazy, because no, you no. work so bloody hard. Yeah, He's lazy. It's, 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 it's a matter of... <laughs> <laughs> He's <Okay>. definitely lazy. <laughs> if you turned up for work half an hour late in my kitchen, trust me, you'd be home for the day. No, no. Looking for a new fucking job. To yeah. be honest, it's no wonder okay. Brian's lost heart. The man's been working in the kitchen for as long as I have. But to save money, he's been sidelined. So much so, he's rarely involved in actually making any of the food. There is a kind of a method to my madness. But you're throwing it together. Um, it looks like I'm throwing it together, but no. I throw it together the exact same way every single week. So when you're not doing it, who does it? I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, that's my point. OK. <laughs> if Sharita was using Brian properly, they could ditch the freezers once and for all. And the macaroni and cheese is nearly there. That looks delicious. Yeah. I think that should go to staff food. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> does look good, doesn't it? As it stands, few customers will taste the food at its best. She's just thrown away her unique selling point. And boy, does she need one. It's uh, ten past one, Saturday lunchtime. And this place should be absolutely round. And there's not a soul in here. This is dire. Saturday and Sunday are your prime days for business. But like many failing restaurants, Sharita's making some classic mistakes. Yeah. Poor man's meat pie. Yeah. Eight pounds. Yeah. I know it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. it Yet is. you go onto the menu here, you've got main courses at yeah. 14. Yeah. 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Why have they gone up so expensive? Um, to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. To be blunt, it was bank manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, accounting, and I was saying, help me, help me, how do I do this? They say, you've got to raise your prices. You gotta raise your prices. Always the bank manager's solution. Yeah, well, put your it, prices and up. it was it was literally down to yeah. the bank manager. Yeah. Well, he's an asshole. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's killing the business. Mm. I want to look at restructuring the menu. Okay. Making it a little bit shorter. Okay. Tweaking the portion size. All oh, right. Having less come back. Sixty percent yep. are bones come mm -hmm. back, but it's that forty percent I'm gonna work on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the objective for every customer coming through that door is to have a starter. Yeah. A mains and a dessert. Okay. You wait and see the turnover treble if you can squeeze three courses out of them. Okay. But before we can squeeze anything out of anybody, okay. we need customers. And if they're not coming to us, we've got to take Mama Sherry's finger licking food to them. So, got the meatloaf. Oh my yeah. god. Got the ribs. Yeah. Okay, got the chicken. That smells amazing. Oh, it's smelling so good. So good. And who better to flaunt it than the mama herself? Don't be shy. Whoa. I'm going to come to you since you're not coming to me. This is all cooked fresh at Mama Cherry Soul Food Shack just around the corner there. Okay? Pretty, pretty good. This particular food is called soul food, OK? Cooked from the soul, from the heart. Boy, she's good. A soul food evangelist. And she's out to convert the whole of Brighton. Soul food. Can I hear you all say it? Oh, All right. Just wind her up and let her go. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Give me some more wings. Big All right. Geez. Don't forget, this time it's on the house. Next yep. time they're paying you. Yep. Did you cook me? Yes, I did. I love it. There's no doubt that Sharita's a terrific cook, 
But she's employing Brian to do that job, and I'm beginning to realise she's wasted in the kitchen. What's it called? So good! Just call me Mama. Mama. <laughs> you got it. With Saturday night service about to begin, it's time to get this shack in order. It's pretty obvious that the business is in dire straits. You know, that's real. That's real. That's the truth. Watching you guys over the last couple of days, you actually treat it like it's your fucking home. Chilled, relaxed. And this lady here, you talk to her almost as if it's your mum. Mm -hmm. And that really has to stop. If this is going to go any further, and if it doesn't work, mm. not only are you out of a business and your livelihood's gone, yeah. all of you guys are out of a fucking job. Yeah. You've got no work. Yeah. So when it's that far down, we really have to dig deep and come up with sensible ideas. Yeah. And tonight, I'm going to ask you to stay out of the kitchen. OK. Because you've yeah. got so much to sell. Yeah. yeah. And you, you're a fucking good cook. Thank you. So, yeah. Sharita, let him cook. I'm going to let him. I'm going to yeah. let him. I am. Yeah. You have to pass the reins over now. And if you don't break away from this stove, mm -hmm. I swear to God, the business is going to close. And let them do the job that you fucking pay the money for. Okay. Yeah? Yep. I'm gonna go put some makeup on. Because <laughs> I'm going downstairs. Sharita Street Hustling has secured a fully booked restaurant tonight. If we're gonna get through it, we need to get this kitchen working like an efficient, well oiled machine. Eddie, are you doing the. Is that now, yeah? Time to whip up a bit of professionalism into these boys. Uh, Gavin, can you take those starters and food downstairs? Yeah, we're standing there doing nothing. Five to five. There you go. Five. Thank yeah. you. Okay, we're standing there. Yeah. Open up your eyes, yeah, and get in fucking working, okay? You're running this place tonight, you know that? Yeah. You're yeah. going to prove to her downstairs that you can do it. Yeah. yeah? Not just to her, but to yourself and me. Okay. I said no smiling, no laughing. Okay. Serious. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Let's go. She's still smiling now. Good evening. Hi. Have you had a chance to look yes. at the menu? Yeah. yeah. Downstairs, Sharita slipped effortlessly into the role of the hostess with the mostess. Any of you eat macaroni and cheese? We do. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Gordon grated my cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's taking his first decision as the head chef. Pre-cooked buffalo wings are off the menu. From now on, they're being cooked to order. Chicken's been cooked from fresh. Nice. People already have played the sound around in 20 minutes. Well, almost. The rest of the food's going out just as Sharita's always done it. Hot food, cold plates, uninspiring salads. Right, four pounds for that. That's shocking. And jaw-breaking meatloaf. What time are we close tonight? <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. Um, but let's not try to run before we can walk. Can I get this one as soon as possible? Yeah, it's going. It's going. Okay. I think it's going out of oven there. Okay. Cheese is good. How long? Um, Give Sharita a time. Three minutes. Three, three minutes. minutes. There we are. Sure. Right. I'll take that. Thank you, Sharita. Yeah. Bye. OK. See ya. All right. There you go. Up. The restaurant's full, but now she's front of house. Sharita's using every trick in the book to boost business. Five minutes. So you can go slow. right next door to my friendly pub. There you go. And I will uh, see you in five. See you in five. Thank okay? you. Thank you. OK. Brian, move up. Two hours in, and the food's not going out quick enough. Sharita's faith in Brian is dwindling fast. These guys have been in a long time. I got kids down there. Yeah, but their starters have just gone. They've got starters. OK. What happened there with those starters? With those starters? They're done. So we're already in the lift? Yeah. Yeah. There, Eddie, aren't they? What? These starters. What one? For this table. These ones? No, I'm doing them now. Oh, shit. I just thought that they're gone, man. For Brian, yeah. three years of living in a culinary coma is a hard habit to break. He's beginning to lose it. And Sharita's constant interruptions aren't exactly helping. Come on, Brian. Don't lose it now, yeah? No. What else on this table? I need to see. What's on it? You got, you got hot, right. hot wings and barbecue chicken wings. I've got the hot wings. I need whatever else is there. Because they are getting restless. Oh, dear. I am so sorry. I'll tell you what the problem was. With fresh food, yeah, you can't expect the food to just jump on your plate just no, like that. No, we you can explain to that to her after. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken takes a good 14, 20 minutes to make sure that you know you don't kill anyone. Okay, has that pig feet go on? Because it needs to go on now. Because it takes the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every minute you're in here, we're losing money. <laughs> Fucking hell. 
So, what do you think of that meatloaf? Lovely good. Thank you. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? I thought the kitchen got off to a really good start. You were slightly nervous being mm. down there because yeah. you were sort of not spying on them, but coming up, yeah. agitated. Yeah. Yeah. You lost it, Brian. A little bit. Yes. A little bit. And um, things just got a little bit on yeah. time. You said something interesting though. Yeah. yeah. Trudy has to understand it's going to take three or four minutes longer because I'm cooking from raw, mm. and the benefit is the customer. But I think this guy, yeah. with the help of Aidy, mm. can get faster. Yeah. Much, much faster. faster. I mean, how would you yeah. sum up? You were in the dining room yeah, tonight. Uh, uh, it felt good, because I'm telling you, uh -huh. for three and a half years being here, it was the first Saturday night uh -huh. that I have spent. Downstairs. downstairs. Right. They've seen you, you know. That's the face they want to see yeah. when they come to see Mama. Downstairs, I'm going to be cracking the whip a lot harder. It's your business. Yeah, so, of course. You know, and that's what I was whip. thinking. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I got to crack it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. OK. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Let me go down here Fire and finish off. seeing, because I got a few more desserts to sell. Yeah. <laughs> if Brian's going to win Sharita's respect as her head chef, he needs to become more involved in preparing the food as well as cooking it. Number 13, lucky for some. But since his hours were cut, he's been dropped in a catch-22 situation. Where's little lady gone? Hey. Brian's been left holding the baby. It became a problem because Claire had to go to work. Yeah. And uh, we had to find a way of meeting uh, the, the bill at the end of the month. Yeah. You know, and that's why uh, I can't do Tuesdays and Wednesdays. The whole thing is just confused. Yeah. You know. As Brian's involvement with the food has diminished, so too has his confidence. The first time he made meatloaf two years ago, it was a disaster. So we're going to prove that Brian can not only do it, but do it better. How much influence do you have on the menu? Even sometimes I'll do a menu or something, but she changes it anyway, so really, I think the, the, my influence disappears. But you've got to be strong now. Yes. If she's going to concentrate in the that dining room, yes. you're going to be running the kitchen. Yes. You have to be strong. Yes. Huh? Yes. The problem with Sharita's meatloaf is the bacon. By the time it's cooked, it's like cutting into leather. The back bacon you saw dries out. It's hardly any fat in back bacon. OK, so, you know, streaky bacon. Um, place one nice fatty piece of bacon there. As it's cooking, yeah, it's putting moisture inside the meatloaf. Yeah? Fantastic. You know, if, if I put my foot down and say, no, this is like this, like that, I think I can see myself going far, you know, I can achieve things. It's a, it's a happy feeling, you know. It's a happy feeling. Mmm, wow. just look at them. Mm. The seasoning okay. is just right. It's mm -hmm. not too salty. It's no. just I think that's fine. It doesn't mm. need anything. It doesn't need anything else. Anything else at all. With Brian's confidence slowly returning, now I've got to work on Sharita. She excels as a natural cook and a great hostess. Oh my God, that's everything on my menu. Sharita. <laughs> but when it comes to business, she's a self-confessed numbskull. Yeah, one and a half meters long. <laughs> and this tells me the money. The money is, look how that's a bit shorter. Shorter, yeah. <laughs> we want it the other way around. I want it the other way around. <laughs> Definitely. But it's not right. just the takings that are the problem here. Okay. 200 grams of butter. Right. Yeah. Like a beautifully risen cake, successful cake. restaurants only thrive Real. when three key business factors Good. are working in close harmony. Gradually adding 200 grams of flour. We establish one third staff costs, yeah. one third food costs, and one third gross profit. Combine all those ingredients into one recipe. Yeah. Chemistry. You have okay. the most amazing cake. Mm -hmm. And that's how any good business works. Yeah. At the moment, Sharita's business cake is way cooking? off course. I'm okay. going to show you something, what we've got currently happening here at okay. the shack. With few midweek customers, okay. Sharita's gross okay. profits are dangerously okay. low. Very, very little uh, profit. Her food okay. costs are reasonably healthy, but her massive overheads are crippling her. Well, I just want to show that what it's going to cost you when we start adding really high staff costs. So there's an imbalance oh my already. God. Yep. <laughs> Bloody hard. Now, I'm doing this on purpose to prove a point. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. You can't complete a recipe for a successful business when you've got an imbalanced yeah. situation. You can tell me to fuck off, but how much do you pay yourself a month? I pay a month? Uh, well, I get around 200 a week, that's it. I'm the lowest out of the kitchen. 200 pounds a week? A week, yeah. 800 pounds a, a month. month? yeah. You're working seven days a week? I'm working seven days a week. That's yeah. a fucking disgrace. I mean, 80 gets more than me some weeks. 
A commie chef mm. that's part time mm -hmm. gets paid more than you. Mm -hmm. You're far too fucking soft. No, I know. I know. You really are far too soft. Mm. Well, it stops yeah. now. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. That is a profitable business yeah. with the right ingredients. Uh huh. Yeah. That is what you're currently running. Right. Have a think okay. and let me know which one you'd like to eat. Very good. Oh, I just feel like crying. <laughs> Why are you crying, Trinita? Because I'm not going to lose my business. I'm nearing the end of my week in Brighton. Not sure I've found my soul yet, but Brian is finally beginning to behave like a head chef. And Sharita is undergoing a transformation from mother to matron. And from now on, she'll be ruling this roost with an iron hand. This is not a drop in cinder. But we still have a fundamental problem, a crippling lack of weekday customers. Yeah, no, what we need is a gimmick. A bargain that will ensure the shack's full to the rafters all week long. The idea is, is to sell uh -huh. your restaurant yeah. per table. OK. OK, so a table of six. Uh -huh. Six chairs. Yep. £10 a head. Uh -huh. £60 for that table. If that worked yeah. every night at uh -huh. £10 a head, yeah. that's £360 pound yeah. in the till. Think of it this way. Yeah. They'll spend the same amount of money on their alcohol. On alcohol. <laughs> My plan is to create an exciting three-course fixed buffet for each table, simplifying the service and cherry-picking from the existing menu. But before we do the big presentation to Sharita, I've got to inject some life into those god-awful limp salads. How much does salad cost on the menu? £4.50. fucking fifty. Huh? Do you think that's real good value for money for what you're serving? No? Huh? Made a very simple dressing here. Roasted cumin. Yes. Yeah? A little bit of olive oil, uh -huh. fresh lime. Uh -huh. Okay. Look at the difference now. And start building it up and get some colours in there. Yeah, four pound fifty for a salad. It's a fucking joke. Um, sweet potatoes, uh, huge in soul food. Yeah. Yes. All they've done is been blanched yes. into the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nicely coloured. Okay. Don't move them until they've got colour on there. Okay. The there. more you move them around, what happens? They break up. They break up. That voice in the background. <laughs> She's in the kitchen again. And lady, the secret here now is to keep them. Nice and hot. They go really nice, almost like a roast uh, yeah. potato. This yeah. is not a difficult, finicky thing to do. No. For me, you know, when you look at the style of Shrita's food, it's really important to keep it rustic. rustic yes. Don't want anything fancy. I'm not being funny, but Gavin, the yeah, kitchen yeah. porter, can get this stuff done. Yes. Huh? Oh, that is good. Damn. Mm. I'm in heaven. What mm. I'm trying to do is mm. make the plates look less cluttered. Yes, mm. I yeah? understand. Because the food speaks for itself. So, mm -hmm. yes. And sometimes I see these mountains of food going out. Okay. okay? Yeah. And you know, it's it's too much. So come here. Here you go. Lick it. <laughs> go on, you know you'll want to. <laughs> what can I say? Cousin Gordon's sweet potato salad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be called. Mix it. Oh, mix it. <laughs> How can I mix it doing that? <laughs> that was better actually. I did better just Thank so. you, Chef. Seriously, Chef. No more food piled high on cold plates. Okay, I want to get these bowls filled up. At ten pounds a head, as long as it's delicious and looks good, the customers are going to love it. Brian can clear the frozen backlog and start from fresh. Make it look nice. Yeah, we've got to sell this, yeah. Yeah. We're really sell it. Simple, sexy, and irresistible soul food. Sell as well. Come on, then do it. Yeah. Do yeah. something. Yeah. You're driving around the bend, you know that. Aidy, what do you think? Table of four. Huh? Fucking good. Yeah. So this, 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 this is fantastic. Honestly, yes. what leftovers? Right. What you, you can do with it? Yeah. Sure let's go. Fuck now. Right, Charita. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, we've gone through the fridge, seen what needs to be used up, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, every day is going to change. Yes. Here we just made a really nice uh, vegetable um, uh -huh. pig lily. 
-hmm. And it just marinades yeah. through brown sugar and yeah. vinegar. Look at that there for four people. Yeah. You've got a mug of soup as well, don't forget. And I think it's quite sort of fresh and new. Yeah. yeah. And it sort of deformalizes the restaurant because it is soul yeah. food yeah. and it's, you know, across mm -hmm. the table. Yeah. It's yeah, lovely. but I think it's, it, it also introduces everybody to different, different tastes types. of all the food. So yeah. everyone is having different mm -hmm. tastes of everything. Yeah. yeah. And the idea, of course, is once they've experienced this, they come yeah. back Friday or Saturday yeah. for a full thing. Yeah. Yeah, this looks great. Good. Mm-hmm. I like this. Tomorrow we're going live. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to be... Now that you said live, you wait. I'm going to be live. It seems Sherita's well and truly sold on her new idea. Wow! OK. I just got to think of a word for tapas. I'm going to come up with my own word. I'm going to make a word up. But I guess I can't call it slappers, because that sounds too rude. <laughs> Short, dynamic, yep. to the point. Yep. Yeah. Good. The mama's on a crusade. Right, customers. Okay, customers. It's all in a bowl, all right? And we're launching tomorrow evening, having a big party down there. Ten pounds each, three courses, delicious. That makes it excellent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. okay. I'm doing ribs, jambalaya, barbecue chicken, going yeah. Brownies. Yeah. Bring, bring some friends with you, okay? You love the food. Yeah. Fantastic. By tomorrow night, Sherita wants the whole of West Sussex to know about Mama Sherry's. This is Southern FM, that's six of the best non-stop, wrapping up with the House Martins happy hour, thorn in my side with me. And its brand new midweek eating concept, Soul in a Bowl. Oh, come on then, Nicky, give me some of this. The ribs, the ribs okay, are delicious. This is ribs. OK, here we go. Mm. Yeah. Gorgeous, mm. absolutely lovely. You eat, I'll talk, OK? <laughs> when you're hungry and you're in need of a serious food attack, just come to Mama Cherry's The Soul Food Shack. We've got Soul in a Bowl. Three yummy courses served on a platter, fried chicken, jambalaya, and more. We're talking soul food tapas. The price is so right, so come to the shack tonight. Mm. Well, for a memorable okay. night. Okay. Seeing as you brought us breakfast, you can have that huge plug for nothing. Oh, thank, um, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Breakfast was On a normal Wednesday night, Sherita would be lucky to get eight customers. Good morning, Mama Cherry's gonna help you. But whilst we've been out, bookings for this evening's launch okay. have gone through the roof. Early or late, I'm doing probably two sittings, a seven o'clock and a nine o'clock sitting. It's all coming together, except for one small hitch. There's no Brian, there's no AD, there's no Gavin. No one's here. Brian's stuck with a fucking babysitter somewhere, God knows where. And um, you know what? If they're ever going to get this place right, then they're going to have to really understand discipline because this is a joke. Big day, no one in the fucking kitchen. Where have you been? Looking for babysitters, chef. Looking for, come on, go and get changed, yeah? No, I thought you were going to be here by 10. I was meant to be at 10, but yeah. uh, I tried to phone the girl who looked after them yesterday. Yeah. She said, no, go, just like that, out of the blue. Get changed, yeah, and let's get fucking started, yeah? yeah. Let's go, yeah? I was hoping the renewed responsibility of running this kitchen would relight Brian's passion for cooking. You need, young man, eggs. A fucking rocket up your ass. And with it, bring a new commitment to both raising the quality sure? and the urgency with which the food's delivered. How about sweating off the onions at the same time? They're in front of there, look. Oh, mm. OK. There you go. But even if Brian was making the new improved meatloaf twice as fast, fucking useless. it still wouldn't be quick enough. I'm just testing it now to see what uh, flavours have come up. Yeah, but you haven't put the wet mixture in there yet, so how can you identify the texture? Oh, yes. Get the recipe complete the first, first and add the breadcrumbs, the then do the fucking yeah. test. Jesus Christ. Some mothers do have them. Huh? And I've got one. Thankfully, Shreet is completely unaware that Brian's already losing it upstairs. So how's it looking now? Um, it's looking full. No, no, what no, day no, of the so week am I? Wednesday. When, this is wonderful. No, perfect. And, and 50, mm -hmm. 55, customers yeah. tonight, that's £550 on food. Yep. The same again. Yep. Hopefully on, on the drink. Drink, yep. that's £1,000 in the till. Yep. Which is equivalent to a Friday night take. Yeah, yeah, that's a Friday night. Show a touch of flexibility. It's a new start for the shack. The and tonight, every First member of Sherita's staff kitchen, has got to give 100%. OK, here are a set of rules that each and every one of you are now going to abide by. And it's not a governing rule, it's an understanding of what this business needs to go further and forward. I need everybody here on time. And on time means if I say you start at six, you get here at quarter two. 
That way you have your cigarettes, you get changed, you chat, you have your coffee, and so that at six o'clock, you're on the floor, okay? The next one is there is always something to do. And if you can't think of it, ask me. The queen <laughs> is now in on residence. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sharita is now on the floor. Yep, that's I, where I'm gonna be. And to confirm that, we're gonna raise the flag. Yes? <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Sharita is in residence, that. yes? Hey, and that's where she stays. I want you to pull this up here together. There you go. Listen, have a great service. Think, customer, push the wine, and work together. Let's get it right. Right fucking now. Let's go. Okay, inside. Is your table here? The success of Soul in a Bowl relies on doing large numbers. At only £10 a head, Sharita must fill the restaurant He's twice over. Everything prepped, yes? Are you nervous? Yeah, I am. Good, it's a good sign. Start shitting yourself. Brian, AD and Gavin have got to get those platters flying down those stairs, but they're only just peeling the last potatoes. We're going to send you down a tray designed for two. It comes with cornbread and soup as a starter. Soup's excellent. So I hope you enjoy it. I think Thank you, you will. Much. All right. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are fully booked tonight, but... It's the first Wednesday night ever they've had to turn customers away. Slightly spicy sweet potato soup. Table three, two meat tapas. <laughs> Okay. Just to bring it up to the point. Okay, seven that you've got up there, it's down as three. They've had a person join them, so it's now a four. It's already looking better, but tonight it's got to be perfect. Stop, stop, stop. Take the fucking bowl off the tray. Put it in the bowl. Yeah. I still want all the shit on here everywhere. Yeah, I want nice and clean. Fucking clean. Come on. Yeah. And for the first time this week, Brian's not smiling. That looks lovely. Well done. Right, vegetarian, please, Eddie, send it away. So now we're looking for a four soup and a three soup. Four cornbread, three cornbread. Gavin, you're taking care of the uh, desserts. Uh -huh. Yeah? Chicken. The team is pulling together. Can you, can you put a small, just a uh, bowl of uh, veggie jambalaya on it? Communication is much, much better. Can I get a timing on some of these so I can tell them? Five minutes. Five minutes, Five minutes. on all of them. Okay. Keep it going, Ryan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. ADS. Yeah. Uh, eight o'clock. So far, so good. Yeah, you're doing a good job. If they can keep it going, we might just pull this one off. They said they are stuffed. It was delicious. All of the different flavors that go with it. Fully satisfied. I'm going to take them some dessert. You see that? Empty bowls. And for that dessert, Aidy surprised us all with his homemade pecan pies. That is delicious. That no, beats panel really beating bad. any day, you know yeah. that? Well, any day. At just 40 pence to make each slice, it's a fifth cheaper and ten times tastier than the ones Sharita's been buying in. How was the soup? Good? Yes? Yeah? All right. Things okay. must be going OK, because we've hardly seen her in the kitchen all night. Are we starting to turn the tables now? I'm starting to turn, but I've got to get this is a crucial thing out. at £10 a head. Yes, we have to turn I've those tables, yeah? So can we do two trays at the same time? Is it possible? We can. Yeah? Now the pressure's really on. We're losing. Come on, let's get some organisation, guys. Come on. It's still not perfect. A table's called away. You stick that ticket on the tray. No one touches it. But the vibe up here has definitely got more professional. Hey, we're losing valuable time, man. What are you doing? Nice, we're two minutes over. How's it feeling up here? Hot, Hot pumping. Okay. <laughs> right. Can't quite believe I'm saying this, but I think Brian's actually breaking a sweat. Good guys, looking good. They're loving it. People are loving it. Very tasty. Very good food. You got the salads. Well done, man. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't eaten anything quite like this before, and it's really nice. Okay, what we need is a two, a six, and a four. Then we're finished. You can get better value for money than this. It's, 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 it's remarkable. Let's get it going. Last table goes out just like the first table, yes? I will come back, definitely. Definitely will come back. Nice, you know, beautiful. Huh? Fucking well done. Yeah, really good. Yeah. That's one day. The real work starts tomorrow, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. I didn't know how much I was going to cope today, you know? I didn't know if I was going to cope. Or break, basically, but I had just one thought in my mind is to get through this. Thursday morning, and the whole team are in early. You got 
got to get that well going. They're clean out of food stocks and fully booked tonight. So they're starting completely from scratch. Fresh home cooking straight from the soul. Hallelujah. Can I just say, you set me a target. Yes. When I spoke to you last night, we hadn't reached that target. 800 pound last night. Yeah. I asked for 1,000 When pound. I cashed up, I hit 1,000. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, it was 1,080. Fantastic. Yeah, to find these two. Yeah. They did it. <laughs> 80's quietly impressed me this week. But if he really wants to make it as a chef, he's got to decide where his loyalties lie. No, I do, I do enjoy it, but I don't think, I don't like the hours. I don't want to be working those sort of hours when I'm 30, unless I'm as rich as you. <laughs> and then I won't mind. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> Can I just say, when I was your age, at the age of 20, there wasn't enough hours in the fucking day for me to work. So, um, yeah, I'd be very happy to become successful, but you've got to work for it, big boy. It doesn't just come on a plate where you've got to read the following and it'll happen. And Brian. Well, the success of Mama Sherry's depends on his strength and his commitment more than anybody's. You've really pissed me off this week, you know that? Yes. I felt really bad after, especially yesterday, when I realised that I haven't been really... sort of... It's like I didn't care almost. I just thought when I first saw you in the kitchen, you were treating it like a job. No passion. But last night, it came back and I could feel it. You are the head chef. chef yes, yes. So act like the head chef. Yes. Take responsibilities of the head chef. Yes, yes. Get a grip, wake up, and fucking stop dreaming. Yeah. And, and I think Sharita knows app. what she yeah. must do. You are the most marketable asset mm -hmm. yeah. of oh, this yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be selling myself now. I'm now, out of that kitchen. understand. Just... Kitchen morning, AM, yep. hosting the room and being present in yeah. the evening. Yep. You have got That's to it. continue that. I will do. Then I've got to take some control back. Set a fucking example. I'm going yeah. to. Do not be scared to get rid of baggage. Back in December, I spent a week at Mama Sherry's failing soul food shack, and I've never spent a week quite like it. I fed good Ramsey. <laughs> And he cleaned his place! No discipline. If you turned up for work half an hour late in my kitchen, you'd be home for the day. Looking for a new fucking job. And £65,000 in debt. Every minute you're in here, we're losing money. <laughs> fucking hell. I whipped the head chef into shape. I said no smiling, no laughing. Okay. Serious. OK. Yeah? You need, young man. Eggs. A fucking rocket up your ass. And the mama found her true calling. If you don't break away from this stove, mm -hmm. I swear to God, the business is going to close. What's it called? So Thank you. Just call me Mama. <laughs> Mama, you got it. Together, by the end of the week, we have the shack firmly back on track. You see that? Empty bowls. It's a Wednesday night, and I'm just hoping the Mama will be glad to have me back. Hello. Oh my God! <laughs> my cousin. You're in the dining room. Mm -hmm. Of course. Where, where else would I be? I'm out of the kitchen and soul in the bowl. Still going? Going well. I mean, I wish you could have been here last night. We were absolutely full. What, upstairs, on a Tuesday? On a Tuesday. Upstairs no. and downstairs. So, Amazing. Yeah. Staff-wise, how are they getting on with stuff? A lot better. You mm -hmm. see, Lauren's actually in a uniform. Hi, Lauren. Uh, yeah. Were you late today? No, no, no. I came in early today, actually. Early? Yeah. Early. early. Oh, yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. My moonwalker. Where is he? Oh, he's upstairs. Is he? He's upstairs. Oh, yeah, is he's he? where he's supposed to be. Yeah, can I go up and see him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, there's a surprise. Oh, it's great to hear that Brian sorted out his babysitting problems. Sharita's been able to take him on full time as Mama Cherry's head chef, and he's a changed man. How are you doing, big boy? Fine, are you well? Thank you. I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you. It's nice to see you again. On weekdays, he's running the kitchen single handed and he seems to be thriving on the responsibility. That looks fantastic. You're not throwing things in there anymore now. You place them in there nice and they actually look it's, it's smart. It's better. It looks better. Huh? It does, yes. What's Just happened looks... to you over the last two months? I've been, I've been huh? uh, I went through a, a phase, like, I mean, the estate you found me in when, when you came in was totally huh? sort of... The Lord's up. come down and touched I, you. I, I'd given up. All credit to Brian. He's taken soul in a bowl and run with it. It's looking really fresh. Now, you also get, you get starters, and you get a choice of nachos or soup. Nachos, 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 nachos. Five nachos. 
How long is it taking now for the food to come out uh, on the tray? On the tray, it's mm -hmm. taking about at least, I would say about six, seven minutes. It should Good. be five minutes. So quick? Quick as possible as I can be, uh -huh. yeah. So you haven't lost your touch then? Nah, no, not really. <laughs> It's coming back slowly, you know, when you lose a bit of confidence, it's kind of difficult to sort of try and find yourself back again. You know, but at the moment, I'm so into it, and I'm going to get it done, mm -hmm. whatever happens. Okay, here we go. The team has been stripped down, and the customers seem to love their new improved food. It's all good for business. It smells good. Got some jerk chicken. You know, meat jambalaya, hot wings, barbecue ribs... January's takings are up a staggering 60% on last year, despite now being closed on a Monday. And last Saturday, Sharita filled the restaurant three times over, with Brian and Aidy cooking for a massive 105 customers. I'd love to see you spinning around doing 105 covers, you know that? Yeah? I bet you were moonwalking all over the fucking shop. Oh, I didn't see the moonwalk for a second there. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Soul in the bowl. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go. Let's see what we got here for you tonight. Brian looks well. Is exactly what I wanted him yep. to get some confidence, and he's yep. got that self confidence. I know. I walk in and see what you've done to the menus. Can you see what I've done to the they menus? They look fantastic. You see what I've done to the menus, and I've also created my own soul and explaining it out. It's easy people. format. No easy. intimidation. Yeah. And you know, when I think back to that folder and go mm. through those pages yeah. Yeah. and all that crap on that, mm. you know, well, I mean, now look. It, it was like a book, but I think it was, it yeah. was too much to do. Yeah. It was taken up too much they're, they're, they're smart. What's happening now is I've got people coming on the weekdays ordering the soul in the bowl, and then they say to me, I can't wait to book a weekend because I know now I'm having those ribs. They weren't enough. So how worried you were. Yeah. So what, what wasn't happening in the business, no. actually. But no. that stress has gone. That... The stress is gone because now I feel that there is a future. Before, yeah. I didn't think there was a future. Yeah. I've got that fire back inside of me. Yeah. Well, you know? I know what you're saying. Yeah. And you know where the business is going. Yeah, and I know where, it, where it's going and where it can go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. are you making the perfect fucking sponge cake? <laughs> um, do you remember that one? Yes, I do. You do? I will never forget that one. So if you had I to put it together now, that one. Well, how would it come out, your cake? My cake will come out better than your cake. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're cooking the books. <laughs> Long live Mama Cherry and her finger-licking food. I'll definitely be back for more. Great, great, great. I bet you you can't make it past 20 metres. 20 metres. You're full of shit, you know that. <laughs> OK. Go for it. Tired? No. Not no. yet. Not yet. <laughs> you look tired. You fucking win. Still going. I know. <laughs> Give us a spin. Give us a spin. Spin, spin, spin. <laughs> Fuck off. Scotland, home of the brave. Home, too, of haggis, neeps and tatties. And the deep-fried Mars bar. But in Inverness, there's a restaurant on a mission to bring sophisticated French cooking to my fellow countrymen. OK, you send me two prestata right now, please. Yes. It's prestata. the vision of French head chef, Loïc Lefebvre, who's trained in some of the best kitchens in France. I went to work for the president in France, Mr. Chirac. When we had, like, Mr. Bush is coming, our Japanese president is coming, we used to do, like, big function. Service, one seabass, one brain, table 14, go. Then I moved uh, to work with the Postal Brothers in Montpellier, and they have three Michelin stars. Service, please. I can't wait to meet a young chef with such an impressive pedigree. Hello, Louis. Nice to meet you. Enchanté. Enchanté. And this is the team? Yeah. To help realise his dream, Louis handpicked an impeccably trained brigade. Sous chef yes. Jeffrey has worked in restaurants with both one and two Michelin stars. Did you work with Louis in France? No. 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 So I, I came basically here uh, because it's a very good opportunity to work with some of the uh, three Michelin stars. Um, yes. Regis also has a Michelin star studied background. How long have you been cooking? Uh, eight years in France uh -huh. and uh, in a different country, you know. And so does the junior of the team, Nicola. And uh, Nicola, whereabouts in France are you from? Brittany. Brittany? Nantes. Got a good football team there, huh? <laughs> but now you support Celtic or Rangers? FC Nantes. FC Nantes. <laughs> no, I did. Well, well done, Nantes. Hey, you're in, you're in Inverness, for God's sake. You've got to support a proper team. <laughs> and Gérard's not letting the side down either. His previous jobs were at Michelin star level as well. Gérard, do you have a Scottish girlfriend? Uh, yes, my French accent. 
It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> 1,400 miles from the French Riviera, Louis has created a mini French stronghold in Inverness. And no one's Scottish in the kitchen? No, no Scottish. No Scottish. There was some, but uh -huh. not anymore. Did you sack them? No, 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 no. It's the first time when I came in the kitchen, I switched off the microwave, put it in the car park, and three days after, I was by myself. They got so, the message? Yeah, because they were using microwave all the time, oh, uh, powder for stock, Oh uh, deep frying everything, even yeah. fondant potatoes. So I had to build a new team, okay. which is good. Luix determined that his dream team is going to get him his very own Michelin star. A bit like Roman Abramovich when he wanted to get the Premiership title. Yeah. He went round and got the best manager, uh -huh. the best football players, and then brought them all over to Chelsea. Yeah. Fantastic. Off from the pop, that's good. Yeah. yeah, all done. I think if you can get a Michelin star, that should be great for us. We are looking to achieve like one Michelin star to, to start with. Why not two and, you know? This is new. Even the fridge right. is top of the league. It's wow. a big walking fridge. Fucking hell, look at the size of it. Yeah. It's like a one-bedroom I mean, flat. Yeah. Huh? And the produce is the very best. Flying vegetables in from France is over the top, even for me. But the local shellfish is really top-notch. They are amazing. They've been fished on Sky. When they come down to London, they're definitely not that fresh, I can assure you. Uh, that is incredible. <sighs> Fuck me. They've got the best of everything here. I mean, really the best of everything. Someone must be paying a small fucking fortune to run this place. And that someone is multimillionaire Barry Larson, hot from his 600-acre private shooting estate. He made his fortune from the catering business, but it wasn't exactly fine dining. Morning, Julie. How are you? This is the man who brought Kentucky Fried Chicken, Wimpy and Harry Ramsden's to Scotland. And now he's invested nearly £2 million trying to prove he can make fine dining finger-licking good. Sounds amazing, the sort of dream team that you've put together. Yeah. I'm slightly concerned about the expense involved in that because dream <laughs> teams don't come cheap. No, no, they don't. You haven't got any grey hair. So no, I've got some. Yeah, well, you're so. hiding it very well, <laughs> unless you die uh, the fucking thing. No, 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 I don't die. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, but no, it's expensive. You know what the school is. Yeah, big time. Have you owned hotels? No, I haven't owned before? Uh, no, no, I haven't owned uh, hotels before. We've had various restaurants, fast food chains that we've built up, sold out, really? um, family restaurants that we, we still run, but obviously at a different, completely different level. I mean, a fast food restaurant's miles away from anything to do with fine dining. Yeah, but you know, you still want to produce quality for, yeah, the, for, the, for the spend. It sounds fantastic, but this place is costing Barry over £8,000 a week on food and staff costs alone. And they seem to have forgotten the three most important things in the restaurant business. Customers, customers, customers. Four days a week, okay, the restaurant's second. dead. Two soup, one non -starter. and one cheese sandwich. And every night it's empty, it's another big dent in Barry's investment and Louis's ego. Uh, sometimes you get zero. Really? Uh, yeah. Must be uh, hard that when it's zero, no? Yeah. Especially with all this team here. It's a nightmare for us. Does it hurt? Yeah, a bit, yeah. You've got the team, but you want to play. You're ready to go. But... Oh, yeah. That's difficult. We, like, we are like dogs, you know, uh, when they go shooting. Yeah. We are ready. Louis's hungry for success, but the locals aren't biting. Can you do me a favour? Can you um, read that out for me? Oh, gosh, I can't say that. What really Bollinger did? of Jerusalem artichoke. Do you know what that is? <laughs> One glance at his menu, and I think I've spotted the problem before I've even tasted the food. Not sure. Declinization uh -huh. of salmon. Baragoulis Joss. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> How's your ghoulies? Yeah. Baragoulis. That, that doesn't sound very appetising. Well, no, I'd probably order that one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that means? This food may appeal to the connoisseurs in the south of France. I haven't got the frog. But this is Scotland's smallest city. Right, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Would you eat that? Would I eat it? Aye. You can't eat it, so you don't know what it is. Uh. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Barry and Lewick want Michelin level success, but I'm afraid they've lost sight of the basics. You are an impatient bastard. Yeah. You want, uh, you, 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 want, you want it, and you want to get your shopping trolley and go along and get that and get that, and, and you're, I can see it in your eyes. You've had a, a lot yep. of success beforehand, yep. Yep. bringing all these things in together. Yep. It's not the perfect recipe for an instant hit. Right. I'm just worried that you don't fall into the same fucking trap that I did, 
and I lost a lot of money. Right. It was a proud day for me when I opened Amaryllis in my hometown, Glasgow. We got off to a great start, and within our first year, we'd won a Michelin star. But as the menu became more elaborate, the diners started to dwindle. The food was so fancy, it put off the locals. They stopped coming, and I was forced to close Amaryllis down. It's a bit of a deja vu for me, and I'm concerned that you may be running what? too quickly, too soon. You know, you're in danger. Oh, fuck it. It's going too far. That happened to me after 12 years at the top. There's no doubt in Luik's talent. It's his lack of experience that worries me. One's color, level three. It's his first ever head chef's job. There's always a big, big trap they fall in. Are we finished? Where they try to do too much too soon and almost try to be sort of competitive and thinking that what they saw in their previous kitchen, which was in a three mission star, I've got to be better than that. And that's where a lot of young chefs fail. Could you check table 10 for me, please? You put the name and everything, huh? It's my second day at Le Riviera, a top restaurant with no customers. So if the locals aren't eating here, where are they eating? Busy for lunch. Fuck me, 5.95 for two courses. Starter and main. Inverness is a fast-growing city, and the restaurant market is clearly thriving. 7.95 is fucking cheap, isn't it? Now? Look, early supper menu, two courses, 9.95. I've asked Louis to serve me dinner from his a la carte menu, which costs £34 for two courses. Yeah. With that team in there, and the produce in the fridge, it's to die for. Um, so it should be a great dinner. I'm looking forward to this one. One scallop to follow one duck, the, the breast pink. Yes, yes. Allez, let's go. This is your canapé. You have an olive medallion and a cheese beignet. Canapés and a pre-starter. This is ambitious food for London, mm. let alone in Vaness. Mm. Potato soup mm. with um, wasabi. Mm. Very creamy. Very, very rich. I, I, I'm excited about the food, but I don't feel comfortable sat here. You are like a painter. You need you need a, you need a good eye. You know, like the painter will put something like black here and not here because for him it doesn't look right. Okay, okay. Let's go. One scallops, table nine. Very complicated. A lot of mm, a lot of um, combinations of flavors going on. For me. The golden rule is always keep it simple. You're tasting a broad bean and white asparagus and a citrus vinaigrette, a confit tomato, fennel seeds, fennel flowers, chervil, salad, parmesan. There must be 20 things going on this plate. And then, you know, that looks fantastic. But... It doesn't do anything, really. Next up, duck on deux service. This is a duck leg. Decided to make it a ravioli on duck leg for the nine. A good um, 10 to 12 flavors on the plate again. It's just confusion. And your mind is sort of working every time to try and understand what's happening. OK, service, please. A main course served in two parts. That's just pretentious. Almost like someone um, is uncontrollable and almost like a little bit carried away and um, overexcited and nothing saying, just stop, come back. Oh la la. Is that all for me? Yes, it's all for Louis seems desperate to impress. Next, they'll be telling me how to eat it. If I may, to recommend you the order. You've got the tiramisu first, uh -huh. please. Then the floating island. Yep. Then you'll have the souffle. Mm -hmm. Then the sorbet. Mm -hmm. Finally, the cornetto with marmalade. Yeah. Well, I had a bollocks. Next, we'll be told which direction to pee in because of the fucking salmon in the river. Technically, flavors were amazing. The scallops were delicious. The um, light vinaigrette. Yeah. Um, did it need the parmesan? Did it need the flowers? And do you need that many flavors to make it work? I won't change anything on the flavor. I think the way we work, the product um, bring to the guests the, the flavors yeah. that I want. Your personality has to be comfortable mm -hmm. on the plate. And I see a lot of uneasiness on the plate. I don't know if you're confident enough in what you're doing. And I've got to be very honest because this is very crucial. But this, 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 this has to work. Mm -hmm. Barry, what do you think? When you think about it, it's probably right mm -hmm. that he has to just find his own style. Barry's acting more like a besotted sugar daddy than Lewick's boss. 
you take on somebody like that and you're taking them on because of their capabilities and their ambition. And, you know, the last thing I want to try and do is restrain that ambition and, and what he's doing. I'm not, you know, I'm not a chef and I couldn't do what he does. I'm not really in a position to criticise. One Sibas, one grill. But I am. This place isn't even breaking even. And yet Barry's forking out four and a half grand a week just on staff. It's no way to run a successful business. Barry's in love with you. Uh, no, you're not too... no. no, no, but no, he's in love with your food. Um, yeah, I seem to like it, yeah. He's never going to be your critic. And what I've got to understand is where is your critic coming from? Uh, uh. Who's telling you to stop? That's it. Send it. When I think it's all right, don't touch it anymore. It goes. It goes. No wonder his food's over the top. Now I want to see how he runs his kitchen. Scalpel. Tweezers. Forceps. As every plate journeys around the kitchen, each of his seven chefs adds another flourish. And all this unnecessary fussing is wasting time and money. Hurry up now. Here, all done. There's so many hands that are going on round the kitchen. The mm. plate, is that normal for it to go round? Can they not finish anything? Then use my sauce. It's the same for the lobster, then in my sauce. OK. You put the plate under the grill and yes. I sauce, OK? Service, okay. please. Service. Up. One is missing. No, 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 it's OK. It's OK, sorry. OK. Yes, yes. Oh, fucking hell. It feels like we've done 250. And um, we've cooked in the last um, two and a half hours is um, 10. Service, please. I felt that I wanted to just say stop. What you've got at the beginning was just enough for me. We prefer something more simple. Simple because the ingredients you've got uh -huh. are phenomenal. He needs to let his food speak for itself. His approach feels outdated and pretentious. Is it easier if we maybe cook a dish, uh -huh. uh, like cook the scallops and look at the difference and, and, and go through it together that way? Right, uh, what should we do? Scallops? Um, now, now. Whatever. Um, I've got a few things to do first okay. for the guests tonight, and I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the restaurant was full, I could understand his arrogance, but it's hemorrhaging cash, and no one seems to care. It's almost like um, the barricades are up, and you know nothing's going to get through because all I want to do is do the dish together and look at the different stages we're taking out to make it more appealing. But it doesn't seem to sort of sink in. I only want to be part of the team. Just let me in. Being hard ass is, yeah, nice. But when you're in this situation with over complex food and no direction, I'd fucking grab that kind of insight if I was in his shoes. The owner, trust me completely. I can do what I want, whatever I want. So. It was a deal between us. A carte blanche on whatever I do. Louis behaving like a spoiled brat. So as a last resort, I'll try his brigade. Is there something you can, you know, work closely with Louis? Yeah? You cannot make the food too complex. Yeah. You can help us as well, I'm sure. I want to help. Yeah. Definitely. Let me fucking in. Yeah. Yes? First, I'm going to tackle the language barrier. I'm going to have to get you speaking fluent Scottish. Dirty wee bastard. Dirty wee bastard. No, too far. Dirty wee bastard. <laughs> it's getting there. Dirty wee bastard. Sorry? It's fluent in Scottish now. All oh, right. <laughs> so when someone upsets him in the high street... Dirty wee bastard. Or piece off. Or <laughs> piece off. No, piss off. Piece off out of my way. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, uh, fucking hell, eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking hell, yeah? <laughs> I'm making headway with the team, and perhaps I can get through to Lewick if we're on neutral ground. Are you familiar with any of the songs? Do you know what they sing here? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't shout that here. <laughs> I'm not sure the locals will appreciate French football songs any more than they'll appreciate Lewick's food. I look at your situation and I can't stop comparing it to my situation when um, I opened up in my hometown in Glasgow. It, it, it got too serious. Uh, and then everybody was scared to come. And then we lost a lot of money. And, you know, what's the point in keeping a restaurant open if you're losing money? Yeah. And it, it, it broke my heart. And that was my hometown. I was born there. 
And that's what, you know, I don't want to see happen with you. Mm. You're running La Riviera um, like a three Michelin star establishment. And you started at such a high level. I don't know if, if it is uh, such a high level. I mean, um, when you practice with, I mean, like your chefs, when they practice sure. with you, one day they'll, they'll go by their own. What Absolutely. Do you, what do you think they're going to do? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Chips and uh, fish. I know, but you've got to start with the locals. It's not going to survive unless that restaurant's full. So what do the locals want? Some uh, mustard or ketchup? Uh, mustard, please. Thank you. You have to help yourself, you lazy bastard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can't beat an Aberdeen Angus steak sandwich. Mm. That's not bad, though. That's not bad. Beef is good, huh? And when you've got such good local produce, you don't need to mess with it. He didn't give him a change back, did he? I don't know. No. See, he's really Scottish. It's already my third day, but nothing's sinking in. Surely Louis can't ignore the evidence if it's staring him in the face. This isn't a meal for six. All this is dinner for one at La Riviera. Looks like a fucking feast for a king. Henry VIII. Huh? It's quite interesting when you um, start from one end and go all the way right to the very end. It helps you to identify where you can just draw back a little bit mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. look at the whole balance of exactly what you're doing. And people have to understand that they are here to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So they have to spend a bit more of time on the table, like just say, OK, we've got two hours and a half yep. to enjoy it. I couldn't eat all that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd have to stop halfway, I think. I'd, I'd stop halfway. Yes? I don't know. Um, if I was not able to do it all this, I wouldn't do it. What Louis can't get into his stubborn French brain is that refusing to trust his ingredients isn't just putting off his customers. It's also a turn-off for Michelin inspectors. Maybe I can convince Barry. It is his money, after all. Recommend me a whiskey. I'll try to explain in terms that any hot-blooded Scotsman will understand. And one for uh, Barry, please, because yes, obviously of Barry's paying, so... <laughs> Can I just have a touch of ice in there, please? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Do I have a touch of soda in there, please? No, because you're going to spoil the complicated the, the, the drinks. Are you suggesting or telling me? Um, doing both. And no yes. way is soda on the, on the morch whiskies. There's no way. No. Let me just say something. Uh, you're absolutely right. You don't fuck with things that are good. And the first thing I said to Livick about the food, when you've got quality ingredients, let them speak for themselves. And when you've got something as good as that, yep. that speaks volumes, doesn't need anything else. No fucking parsley, no shovel, no bay lift, no fucking fruit garden, nothing. Yes. Just bang, get it out. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. Barry seems to be getting it, and I've got an idea that just might convince his chef. The Saint-Jack dish. I want you to cook that, and I'm going to cook a Saint-Jack dish alongside you. There's a lot of, of way to do it, I mean, like... Yeah, no, 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 no that's what... No, no, of course, you know, it's just I'm 38, I'm 10 years older than you, yeah, I, I, yeah, and so it's not because I'm fucking 10 times better than you, I just want to make you understand how I think. Ah, yeah? OK. OK, Monoui. No what Luick doesn't know is that I've invited ex-AA inspector David Young to judge the dishes for himself. And what he won't know is whose is whose. My Sanjak dish has just four simple ingredients, as well as the scallops, it has a cauliflower puree and a caper and raisin dressing. How long for you? Uh, 30 seconds. Louis' dish has at least 14 different flavours. So you've got the new season asparagus, white asparagus, with the roasted scallops. Uh, you've got a fennel artichoke and anise jus. And I mix it with the fennel milk, OK? You've got the Parmesan crisps, and you've got the broom. Okay. Thank you, Dan. It's time to let Louis into my little secret. Um, I've arranged for the inspector, mm -hmm. the AA guy, mm -hmm. to come and taste our food. Thank you. Go, darling, please. So they're going to make, like, a competition? Food inspectors are feared and revered by chefs all over the country. If they judge your food worthy of Michelin stars or AA rosettes, the reward is a place on the gastronomic map. Very much, thank you. Thanks. And ideally, 
customers beating a path to your door. Thank you. Will you prefer Louis' elaborate plateful or my simpler rendition? This particular one has much more visual impact. I get the feeling that the dish is going to taste of exactly what was described to me. Whereas this one looks a little bit over garnished. Uh, there's a bit of a muddle of different types of flavours. Inspectors like David can make or break a restaurant's reputation. Introduce you to Louis. Hi. Nice to meet you. If Louis is going to gain a coveted Michelin star, his food really needs to be worthy of four rosettes. How difficult, David, is it to get four AA rosettes? Well, it's very difficult because, to put it into context, as at this moment, there are only two AA four rosette restaurants in Scotland. In the whole of Scotland? In the whole of Scotland. Is it a four-star dish, what you've eaten? This one, Gordon? Yes. No. No, th this particular dish would be uh, somewhere between two and three rosettes, mm -hmm. whereas this dish would be probably four rosettes. Mm -hmm. The combination of the cauliflower and caper puree just absolutely lifted the dish into a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, some of the flavours were overcomplicated, to, to be frank about it. Mm -hmm. And it may be just a case of um, sometimes um, less is actually more. Louis has taken the news badly. He thinks I've stitched him up. Anglo-French relations have hit an all-time low. But time is running out at La Riviera. It's got to work, hasn't it? It's your first headshot job. You can't afford to fuck that. Will I ever make princes out of this colony of frogs? Fucking hell, it doesn't cost anything in Scotland. I'm getting towards the end of my week at La Riviera, and I don't know if Lewick is still speaking to me. Last night he reacted badly when an AA inspector confirmed that his food was over fussy. What was the first thing you thought about this morning after um, yesterday with the inspector? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, was the, what was the one message you, you, you learned from it? Um... Now, I had your advice, I had his, his, his advice as well. So, one, you can say maybe he's wrong. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, you start to take care of that thing and uh, maybe I am wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so... It's a difficult thing to accept. Mm -hmm. The French franc has finally dropped. It's been hard for Louis, but he's already changing his game plan. He's come up with a new, much simpler idea for the scallop dish. It looks fucking brilliant. Uh -huh. And what I can identify now, I know there's apple, because you kept the green on there. I know there's rocket. I know there's pumpkin seed. And it, it makes me feel comfortable, because I know what I'm about to eat. Yeah. I can identify what you're doing. That, that's delicious. Everything that goes on the plate has to have a reason, yeah. not for this, but for here, for the yeah, for the palate. And what you've just done there, Louis, you've given your food clear mm -hmm. insight. OK. You understand? And it's not three, four, five rosettes for me. I'd be happy eating that anywhere, you know that. Mm. Where's that fucking inspector? <laughs> Putain. Fucking hell. Hallelujah. I've just taken fucking France. Now Louis has finally swallowed his pride. We can begin to move forward. With his team behind him, maybe he has a chance of achieving his ultimate goal. Um, you told me that you wanted a Michelin star. And at first, I didn't think that was possible, you know that, because of how things got so complicated. But with this here, there's no two ways about it. It's definitely worth a star. Uh, I respect Louis for taking it on board, yeah. because it's a fucking hard lesson, yeah. very hard lesson, but, you know, it's got to work, hasn't it? Mm. It's your first headshot job. Mm. You can't afford to fuck that. Yeah. Crucial, you've got the right training, now you've got the perfect position to do it. Mm. But winning over the kitchen is only half the battle. Carolyn is the maitre d', and she's also Louis' girlfriend. She's responsible for writing the elaborate menus, and I've already discovered that the locals haven't got a clue what they mean. It's time to turn the tables. Uh, read that for me. Crunching pepperhead with massed tatties. Nice. <laughs> Colour... 
<laughs> Lucky we busted. <laughs> to prove a point, I've given them a menu of classic Scottish dishes. What do you think it is? Something sexy? Uh, <laughs> something um, spicy? Tatties. Tatties. Louis, what do you think that one is there? <laughs> this one here. Blood is for far, and we talk about the salad of grids. No idea at all. What is Queen Mary Tart? Queen Mary Tart. Queen Mary Tart. Yeah. And we paid the Canadian cream. Ah no, cream. Grumble Crunch. Do you have any idea what I'm trying to yes. say? It's impossible to choose uh, anything you don't understand. Exactly. That's exactly it. It's what difficult it is. for make a choice when you have this one because it's... Yes, that's... You know? it's, it's, yeah. it's difficult yeah. for fucking yeah. Scotland to yeah. understand okay. you guys. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Same. Yeah, he's saying, yeah. So yeah. it's less intimidating if you have an assortment of salmon, um, you know, a, a selection of uh, mandarin. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. yeah. At last, I'm getting somewhere. Okay. Just look at what you're taking to the table. And... Fucking hell. You know, it's like you're a librarian. Yep. You should see what it's like when the table are sat and six of them are looking in here. Yep. You've lost everybody. Yeah. Yeah. There's no dinner anymore yep. because everyone's behind a brick wall. Yep. You can simplify the whole yep. thing. Yep. Just one beautiful open card, starters mains. Yep. So everything going down there has simplified it. And it's not just the menus that need lighting up. Smile, mon ami. <laughs> smile. Yes. He's far better yes. looking when he's smiling. Ah, smile! Yes. Fucking hell, it doesn't cost anything in Scotland. <laughs> oh, <but laughs> well, well tried, yeah. Oh, fucking hell, throw him in the river. We're supposed to be in a restaurant, not a Sunday school church service. Where's my Bible? Barry's grasped the nettle and has radical plans to transform the dining room. We're going to uh -huh. take this column away. Yep. We're going to take the raised area away at the uh -huh. back on that side. So we've got at a cost of £35,000. The arches over the doors we're going to square off. Yeah. And then it's all panelled mm -hmm. all the way around. Some nice artwork. It doesn't look that bad, does it? And it, it doesn't look... I don't think it looks particularly... Yeah, it's not glamorous, but it's, it's not, not glamorous. It's but not it's shitty. Is no, it? but yeah. it's just not. I just think it doesn't look right. But I've got a low-cost idea, okay. which I think will give La Riviera a unique selling point. I said yes, salad. I'd like you to start thinking about having a table in the kitchen where you have locals to come and sit and eat. Uh -huh. yeah. It starts to break up the sort mm -hmm. of wall mm -hmm. that you know sometimes you have when you yeah. come to a strange new country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As I've discovered, Having a chef's table in the kitchen is a great way to bring customers into your world and keeping the chefs on their toes. And this would be the first restaurant in Scotland to have one. I think this, this will be the best place. Yep, this is down definitely, there. Yeah, just in a corner and they will see everything. everything. Yeah. And it can help create something exciting in Venice. Can you imagine the buzz going round town? The chef's table could be a way of showing off and establishing your reputation here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and be, be, be first. Yeah. yeah, I think it's an exciting idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> I mean, yeah. for once we're going to see how do the people react, react to your food. food. Yeah. If it's no good, I mean, like, just to throw it. Yeah. You have to take care <laughs> of this. Hopefully they won't do that. Super. But it all costs money. And although the chef's table is a great investment, until they've got customers coming yeah. in, they need to make economies elsewhere. Crab, foie gras, and hand dive scallops which are king scallops. So, I mean, the Rolls Royce of ingredients. I mean, everything's here. Fucking hell. Luik needs to do what I did when I started out. Learn to use good, cheap cuts to put together an inspiring menu. Do you ever use a shin, Lugin? No. No? Ox tongue. Making something exquisite from a shin of beef or an ox tongue takes a lot of skill. About the size of my feet. <laughs> And it's a great way to identify talent. Right, um, Oxtail, you, you and you, Bridges, a little competition. I want you to cook a dish, come up with something really exciting, and then Lyric and myself will look at it, and the most tastiest, delicious dish will put on a lunch menu. And for me, the most important thing about this is always a sign of a very, very good cook to turn something very, very cheap into something quite special. So, 
Bridges, take it to bed and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next morning, I'm pleased to see the young chefs have taken their oxtail challenge seriously. What's that? Yes. And uh, oh, three, yeah. And so it's very, you know? Yeah, nice and long. Very wrong. Yeah. Yep, roll it, put it back into still uh, shape from the beginning. That's a good idea. Yeah. Juice reduction. Mm -hmm. Reduction uh, yeah. glass. Like a font. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the oxtail dishes for the lunch menu are almost ready, and they've each cost about a quid to put together. So this is braised oxtail with uh, winter vegetable, braised jam lettuce. Dishes like these are not only highly profitable, but bringing together great Scottish produce with French flair is a winning formula. I like the jus and just a bit of Australian sugar. Yes, it tastes delicious with the white root vegetables. It made it feel earthy and, and, and together. Thank you. Yeah. Who's next? And despite what Louis thinks, simplifying his dishes will actually make them more likely to win awards. I've never had oxtail and sesame seed together before. Michelin inspectors never reveal their criteria, but I know from experience that beautifully cooked food is not enough. Next. Inspectors look for good quality it's ingredients, uh, ideally uh, regional uh, and definitely in season. And I put uh, carrots, celery. Mm -hmm. This idea is great. And the balance of like flavors onion. is yeah. crucial. Very rich. It needs a salad. Yeah. Because it's quite rich. And what I like is only you put the salad just next to and not mm -hmm. on a plate like this. You can choose. Thank but you. first and foremost, okay. don't confuse a Michelin inspector's palate by putting too many ingredients on the plate. Never expected anyone French to come up with a jack and potato mm -hmm. stuffed. Thank you. The simpler, the better. Um, what do you think? Brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Flavors Amazing. are very good. What you've Amazing. managed to do is to bring out the true flavor of oxtail. Bravo. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Any one of these dishes would be worthy of a place on the lunch menu, but we're choosing just one. I want to see if Louis and I will agree on the winner. I'm going to touch my plate, which I'd like on the lunch menu, uh -huh. and you touch the plate after three. Yeah. OK. One, two, three. Equal. Oh. Well, well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well done. Let's go. <laughs> it was real and authentic Scottish food. Yep. That's, I think, he understood, really understood where we want to go. With Louis leading the way, we're ready to relaunch the restaurant. For me, it's a critical stage for any restaurant is to get a lunch full. And if our customers have an enjoyable lunch, chances are they'll be back for a more expensive a la carte dinner. And when they leave with a bloody good lunch, good prices, I can guarantee by the time five o'clock in the afternoon hits, you know, they've told a hundred people, go there for dinner because I had a fantastic lunch. I want to see if we can push this starter, main and dessert, one hour. Yeah. As well as the new oxtail dish, the menu will include mackerel, pheasant and goat's cheese ravioli, venison from Barry's estate, tuna and the cheapest cut of pork. Customers sometimes are scared about belly of pork, thinking fat, greasy. We've taken the fat off, rolled it, and um, spiced on a bed of spinach. Um, it's a caramelised onion puree. Have a taste if you wish. And I've got some other ideas to give Scottish traditional dishes a modern twist. This is a soup that doesn't look pretty, uh -huh. but tastes amazing. They wouldn't expect the Frenchman to make a cooking soup, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which is a really nice way of um, yeah, putting your identification on it. Uh, Louis, just an idea for the rice pudding. Yeah. We grew up with this kind of food, so uh -huh. we can go a little bit further, caramelised pineapple, mango, or even marinate the prunes in a, a nice small whiskey. Yeah. yeah? The kitchen's finally turning out the kind of food that I know will definitely appeal to the locals. And even the waiters have promised to try and smile. But there's one more thing to complete the transformation. You've got to come with me now, because we're going to become even more Scottish. Any ideas yet? Bridges, have you ever taken your knickers off before? No. No. <laughs> Chance to show Amy hey, Lush your Scotch eggs. Okay. <laughs> it's time for Lewick and his small colony of French comrades to surrender themselves to the Scots. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Fucking hell. The things I'll do to get the arrogant French to become a little bit more Scottish is amazing. You know that? It's corn! <laughs> 
How do you put it on? We don't wear pants underneath our clothes. It's wonderful. Very hot. And it's very sexy. <laughs> Hey, there's 25 very important guests coming for lunch. Yes? yes? But some really good news. Uh -huh. They're all women. Nice. nice. Very powerful women. Super. If they can impress 25 influential local businesswomen, they'll be the talk of the town. Do you guys have the ox tail on the floor? Yes. <laughs> there were two, four guests. One potato soup, vegetarian. Three ox tail, two for one gnocchi. Two minutes on, one tuna. Nicolas, we're going to start off. We'll give you a ticket. Okay? Agis, I want two mackerel, two raviolis, one of Okay? Watch your legs. Watch your front legs. At last, Louis' team are beginning to dance to a different tune. The food looks really good. Clear and simple. Fucking fast. Hi. And everyone's coping really, really well. It was the first time I've actually seen a real taste of Scotland in this kitchen. About fucking time. Just after this, we have to go for two cups. Lewix on his way to the top of the Premier League. Allez, go. It's wonderfully presented. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And judging by the reaction of his fans, he's definitely scored. Absolutely divine. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful presentation. You couldn't fault anything, really. I, I would imagine normally this sort of food, you'd be talking at least a couple of hours for lunch, but to get something like this in that time scale, brilliant. It's beautiful. You have tried. You win this. And also, OK, it's for you a present. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. What the fuck is that? Who is that? <laughs> I think it's a big chef. And what is that there? Ah, balls. Balls, yeah. yeah. Trust me, I have a big pair of bollocks. <laughs> Alili Blue. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Chin chin. Chin. Louis and his team have come a long way this week. And if he sticks to my keep it simple mantra, then I think La Riviera might be on the right track for a Michelin star. Outside. Just for the ladies, Regis, to understand that you really are part of Scotland now, we're all going to turn around. Okay. <laughs> turn around, turn around, turn around. Ready? One, two, three, go! Right, Louis. It's been two months since I was at La Riviera. Bonjour. Have you missed me? Oh, a little bit, yeah. So, what's changed? Okay, you take one pork, one ravioli, table four. The menu looks lovely. And you've got um, cheaper ingredients on. Ox cheek for the lunch menu. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm. I'm dying to taste the pork cheese. Can you cook me one, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah, with the uh, risotto. Yeah. It looks lovely. Oh, yes, very nice. Uh, that looks interesting. Is that the chef's table? Yes, I'm finishing the chef's table. Very impressed with that. That looks great. Yeah. It's good to see he's acted on my advice. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Here we are, monsieur. Thank you, uh, Louis. Um, the pork cheek, mm -hmm. which is a uh, ebli risotto and yeah. chanterelle. A dish with just four ingredients. Mm. Absolutely delicious. That, for me, so far, is one of the most tasty dishes I've ever eaten here. Uh -huh. Really, really delicious. If you continue like this, this place is only going to just get busier and busier and busier. That's what we want. That's a great dish to be proud of. Mm -hmm. How's the refurb been going on in the dining room? Dining room is finished for one week now. Wow. Fuck me, what a difference. Bloody hell. It looks a lot more um, slick, smart. smart. Barry must have spent a fortune on it. Beautiful uh, dark panel of wood. Um, a completely different dining room. Huh? It is. It is another restaurant. It feels more relaxed, but is it money well spent? Has anything improved since the last time I was here? Yeah, the restaurant's bookings have improved. Uh -huh. We've just, you know, looked at what you told us mm -hmm. on simplifying the menu, writing yep. the menu. A mission star? I would love, love to get one. But what's more important for me at the moment is that 
we build the customers. It's certainly come a long way from the restaurant I found two months ago. Yeah, all done. His food was so elaborate. Let's go. There must be 20 things going on this place. It had frightened off the customers. Oh, fuck it. Uh, uh, fuck it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Hurry up now. He was desperate for a Michelin star, but reluctant to let me help. But by the end of the week... Bridges, take it to bed and think about it. <laughs> the message had sunk in. Hallelujah. I've just taken fucking France. And we were able to fill the stuffy restaurant with happy diners. His dream was to win awards. And with his newly simplified food, I thought Luig was finally producing dishes worthy of a Michelin star. It looks fucking brilliant. Where's that fucking inspector? Putain. This time round, I raised the bar even higher with another surprise visitor for Luik. Last time I saw this man, he actually gave me three Michelin stars, so um, perhaps the most revered and feared critic in the world. Derek Brown is the grand fromage of restaurant inspectors. Hi, Derek. He's the ex-president of the Michelin Guide, and he's agreed to do me a favour. Um, I'm not going to say too much about this particular um, restaurant, but um, he's a very intriguing, talented individual, and just would love to see uh, See what, what you think? What he's capable of doing? Yeah. Now, remember, you don't know me. Don't know your yeah. top, top okay. secret. Sure. Head chef Luik has no idea he has such an influential critic in his restaurant. Won't ask if you've been through the for his dinner. sake, I hope Derek goes for the simple pork cheek I had. The lamb, please. With the lamb. Mm. Damn. How would you like it cooked, sir? Um, pink, please. Pink. Yeah. To me. The Scottish lamb with stuffed baby artichokes looks just as elaborate as it did two months ago. I see you've got your herb garden back. I'm from the south of France, so herbs is very important for me. I hope Bye. to God I'm wrong. You can't eat it. <sighs> I can't wait to see Louis's face when he realises that the food he's sending out now is for the ex-president of Michelin. He's going to shit his French knickers. Time for the moment of truth. Louis, Louis. two seconds, please. Um, Louis, do you know this gentleman? Mm. No? Well, no. Sorry, um, Mr. Derek Brown, Louis. I think I've seen you, yeah, already. Yes, maybe in France somewhere. I'm so dying to find out. I'm sure Louis as well. How was lunch? Well, it was very interesting. Your, your technique, you, I mean, you've been very careful about the whole preparation of each mm -hmm. of your dishes. But, you know, it was too complicated. There were ten different flavours on the plate. Mm -hmm. There was garlic and herbs in the artichoke, which is itself a delicate thing. A little bit overpowering, I thought. The shoulder, which you'd done a confit of, that was the tastiest part of the dish. The million dollar question, uh, was lunch worthy of a Michelin star? I would, I would say that you, you have not got very far to go. I never gave advice in my working life before, but if you want me to give you some advice, I would simplify what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the customers are going to be happy with every dish that you ever make them. And things like stars from the Michelin Guide will follow. Mm -hmm. The old boys have got to be replaced, so it's up to you and, and you've got the talent. Just, just use it and refine it. Mm -hmm. But has the message really sunk in? Or is he still intent on forcing over-elaborate French food on the locals? This is our challenge. This is not to bring people sure. like you do in London. Mm. The challenge is to teach them and to bring them in. Yeah, yeah. That's why you have to make something really special. Yeah. Fuck me. I mean, my, my, my frustrating thing is that you've really got to understand the message because, yeah. you know, I fucking said this from day one and I'm not an inspector, I'm a chef and I see it from your level. Service! Will he ever understand that simple can also be special? One salmon, one venison. So are you feeling a little nervous about the chef's table in the kitchen tonight for the first time? If they see a nightmare, yeah, they're yeah. going to say, look, this fucking French is fucking crazy. No, I think they'll be very happy with a fucking nightmare. With a fully booked restaurant tonight <laughs> and his first diners in the kitchen, <laughs> Louis should be a very happy man. OK, uh, mon ami, bonne chance. Allez les bleus. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I hope you're glad to be the first in my uh, kitchen table. Um, I will make a bit of music for you if you want. I can, I can manage this. We'll never be the best of mates, but we do have one thing in common. Uh, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Ambition. Remember what he said, that thing about 12 or 15 things on one plate. Uh, so yeah. next time you put a dish together and you've gone past eight, nine, ten things on the plate, mm -hmm. give me a fucking call, because I'm coming back when you get to 11. OK? okay. Allez, les bleus. Bonne chance. Yes? Good luck tonight, yes? Because yeah. I think you're going to fucking need it. Ciao, ciao. Bon soirée. I sincerely hope he makes it a success. Who knows? Maybe the Michelin star will follow.
Blackpool is Britain's biggest and brasses resort, home to the nation's favourite C-list comedians and an unprecedented choice of chip shops. Love it or loathe it, this place doesn't do anything by halves. I used to come to Blackpool all the time uh, with Mum and Dad, in fact, this time of year, to come and have a look at the lights. And um, Mum used to go and play bingo, would you believe? Same trams, <laughs> same lights, same noise, and same freezing weather. Shit, it's cold. Catering for the massive 12 million tourists that come here every year, there are more than 650 places to eat, and I'm looking for the one that's been crowned Blackpool Tourist Board Restaurant of the Year. Is that it? That can't be it. It actually looks like a sex shop. Having co-managed a restaurant in the local casino, 46-year-old Dave Jackson and 30-year-old partner Dawn Brindley pooled their life savings to offer Blackpool a unique oasis of home-cooked cuisine. It's got a cracking atmosphere when there's people in it. It's lovely and I, I, I love it. And to see it empty, we did it last night. We stood here for three hours and I just could have gone home in tears. 18 months later, they're barely breaking even with turnover at a paltry £500 a week. We've won an award, we've got pretty good reviews, but we still can't get people up the stairs. It's very depressing putting food, fresh food in the bin after two or three days. It's only the ground floor greasy spoon that's stopping them from going under. Morning. morning. Clubway, this uh, is it. Upstairs, first floor. Restaurant of the year. In Clubway's upstairs restaurant, Dawn looks after the front of house mm -hmm. and comes up with the menu ideas, while Dave rustles them up in the third floor kitchen. Hi, Dave. Hi, Gordon. So this is it? This is it, yeah. This is my little bit. Thanks, then. What's that you doing there? Butter peach, sultana, bread and butter pudding. Popular? Yeah, very popular. Uh -huh. Occasionally, uh, well, I forget about them. So <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the uh, most popular dishes on the menu, what are they? Main course is chicken's popular, yep. lamb's quite popular. This sounds intriguing. Flake salmon with strawberries. So Flake, I, yeah, that was popular. Topped with lemon and lime and honey dressing. Yeah. Soup of the moment, what does that mean? Soup of the moment, it's whatever, whichever one we do, rather than put on an actual soup. So, like, I mean, we do tomato and cointreau at the moment. We've got... Tomato and? Cointreau. Jesus, where did that one come from? So, again, I think Dawn came out, I came up with the tomato and she added the cointreau, so... Cool. But, yeah, it works well. Does it? Yeah, it flies out. In order for me to get up to speed, yeah. I'd like to eat, eat off it. Fine, okay. no problem. I'll see you in five. <laughs> that I wasn't expecting, because nothing's on. As a starter, <coughs> I've ordered one of Dave's favourite dishes. Thank you. A salad of salmon and strawberries with a lime and honey dressing. No one's ever been in my kitchen. And now I'm cooking for Gordon Ramsay and... My fingers won't work. My brain won't work. <laughs> what can I do? A three-course meal at Clubway costs between 20 and 25 pounds. There we go. And pray. For that price in Blackpool, Dave's food can't afford to be anything less than perfect. Thank you very much. What was going through somebody's mind putting salmon with strawberries? That can go off the end of the pier. Next. Joe, I used to think it was bad cooking for the mother-in-law. Day's clearly out of practice. <sighs> but then, this place is like the Mary Celeste. <clears throat> OK. Just explain what it is, please. OK, we've got medallions of pork on a bed of spring onion mashed potato. The yep. sauce is brie and nectarine, and we have parsnip crisps and compliment. Oh, paprika. Mmm, hot. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Very tough, the pork. It's been battered and beaten heavily. You'd struggle to give that to a dog. Bits of parsnip. Rubber. They're supposed to be crisp, by the way. A brie and nectarine sauce is fucking disgusting. We'll skip the pudding. Time for a debrief. I just hope Dave and Dawn have got stronger stomachs than I have. OK. We need to talk. OK. I didn't expect it to be that bad, cos everything was rough. Yeah. Trust me, the combination of a hot brie, nectarines and whiskey. That's probably the worst sauce I've ever tasted in my entire life. Overcooked, insepid pork. 
and badly put together. Right, OK, yeah. So, work to do. A lot of work to do. OK. By the way, the mash wasn't bad. I've got one. <laughs> Fuck, I'm not crying. <laughs> At least I've been told I'm shit by the best. That's fucking brutal, that was. Mash wasn't bad, though. That's something. How this place ever won anything other than a fucking booby prize, I'll never know. And if there was a rule book, this place would be the classic example on how not to run a fucking restaurant. Starting with rule number one. Don't assume winning an award means people will know who you are and where you are. Um, do you know where Club Way 41 is? It's Black Blackpool's Restaurant of the Year. Nah. No? It's around here, just off the promenade. No, I'm going no? to play. Hello, mate. It's Blackpool's sort of restaurant of the year. The hotspot since when? Yeah, this year, in fact. Ladies, have you heard of Club Way 41, a restaurant? <laughs> Nobody seems to have even heard of the place. It's Blackpool's restaurant of the year. Never heard of it. Oh, God. But remarkably, it seems the award really is genuine. I've just found the um, forms for the nomination for the Blackpool Tourism Awards. Some of the best fresh food we've ever eaten. Varied menu catering for most tastes, yeah, I'll say. Taste from a fucking cow's backside to a pig's fucking snort. I would honestly say this has been the best meal I've ever had in my life, honestly, in brackets. A truly unforgettable experience. Well, fuck me, I've had an unforgettable experience. <laughs> Eye catching decor. Someone's pulling my fucking plonker. Yesterday, I spent my first day at Clubway 41, Blackpool's failing restaurant of the year. And quite frankly, I don't know where to start. Come on, tomato quattro. Come on, pork mix greens. Dave and Dawn have already lost two houses in an effort to stay afloat. And if they're not careful, they'll lose their last remaining lifeline. The downstairs greasy spoon, that's just about keeping their bank manager at bay. I was trying to freeze my... It's one of those days where I really just want to be somewhere else today. It's time to bring Dave, Dawn and their food back to the real world. How are you feeling this morning? Totally destroyed. Um, listen, you've got to bounce back. Yeah. I, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I ate that food last night and I was honest. I'm fucking... I'm destroyed. Yeah. I've, that's how I feel. I feel like I never want to fucking yeah. cook again. You're a tough cookie. And you're resilient, and you've been through the mill before, and you know what's good and know what's bad. I'm here to help. And I'm not going until I get it right. OK, I'll take, I'll take the fucking shit, yeah. But bands back. I will. I will. If he thinks that's pressure, well, wakey, wakey, mate. Get a grip, look for your bollocks, and once you've found them, then start using them. He's seen fuck all so far. In order for me to really see what you're like and understand your capabilities. I've got 20 people coming for lunch today. OK? Now. Yep, OK. Um, they've got to be in and out in an hour and a half. They're coming at 2 o'clock. It's been a long time since Dave had 20 customers to cook for, and he's clearly petrified. So I'm hoping to enlist the help of a man who's been coping admirably with pressure since I arrived. Order, table five, bacon and bar. Nigel, the short order cook in the cafe downstairs. Um, so when you get a rush on, yes. how many orders yeah. come on at once? Uh, well, the cafe could be empty at one stage, then all of a sudden now it can be full. There uh -huh. 12 tables. And you're on your own? And how many customers have you done in one day, max? What's the, what's the most? You're going about 250, 300, easy. And that's on a good Saturday. Yeah, it's busy. Yes, very much so, yeah. Oh, yes, very order. much so. Yeah, the buzz, the adrenaline is amazing. Two minutes for the breakfast, babe. Nigel may spend most of his days cooking bacon butters, but I wouldn't mind betting he's a solid man to have by your side. Okay, you go on table two, two breakfast, mate. Especially when you're as jittery as Dave is. I've got a problem with the, with the brilliant nectarine sauce. Cause I haven't got any nectarines. Right. Can you know. Well, have you ever tasted it without the nectarines? No. Have you ever tasted it with just a simple gravy? Yes. Finished Brie's. with fresh rosemary. So forget the brie sauce. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. As a 46-year-old chef, Dave's naivety is beginning to shock me. Right, I'm going to start off with a quick red wine sauce. But it turns out he's hardly set foot in a kitchen since he trained in the 70s. You don't squash the garlic down if you just put it in no. hot like that. All I did was just crushed it lightly. 
Just with the heel of the knife. Exactly that. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number two. Never appoint yourself head chef if you can't cook. When we bought this place, to save on money, you know, I took the role of up here, and then Dawn, we know, was perfectly capable of running the restaurant. And so Dawn, where does Dawn, where does Dawn get these ideas from? Vivid imagination. She is, I mean, a lot of the stuff she does come up with, certainly last year, I mean, it worked, and it worked well. You know, but we've got we... no customers. Yeah, I know, well, yeah. So how did it work? Did it well, work for you? Did it work for her? Or... Cos it didn't work for the restaurant? No, yeah, all right. I can't win that argument cos I've got an empty restaurant. So it tastes the... That's where the... That's where the, that's where the flavour is. You don't, get, don't get that out of a tin, do you? <laughs> you know. Our 17 customers are local dancers who've hot-footed it here in between shows. They need to be in and out within an hour and a half. The food's prepped and the restaurant's only half full. And with Nigel by his side, Dave should be able to cope. Thank you, sir. Need to see the kitchen under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know he's your boyfriend, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But give him some work to do. Bring him on. Dave, <laughs> hey, are you really sure, eh? No, I'd put me three inches of water in the bottom of that, mate. Dealing with several orders at a time is standard practice in the kitchen. First order on. But within seconds of receiving the first bunch, Dave's flapping about like a headless chicken. Yeah, OK, darling, right, you've just put me four checks in, yeah? Who's in first? OK, yeah, they both came in together. We got both the checks at the same time. Big deal. <sighs> and whilst he's been panicking about the orders, Dave's burnt the custard. It's a criminal lace. Fuck, fine. So that's on, that's on the chicken. Do you call out the orders, Dave? So, sorry? Do you ever call out the orders? Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm struggling in my own mind at the minute, so... Right. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number three. If you lose all powers of communication under pressure, you shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Nice, can you be doing anything? Dave, you've clammed up. You've talked to him, tell him what you want him to do. I'm not sure, sorry, I'm not sure myself. So... It's your fucking restaurant. I know it's my restaurant. Right, get me a piece of pork. No, it's there. Dave, you're looking at the shit already. I am, yeah. You are. The customers have been here 27 minutes and they still haven't had a sniff of grub. Okay, I'm going to be nearly ready to go in a minute on the first table, yeah? Right, right. thank you. The food has finally started to leave the kitchen. But whether it's edible or not, is another matter. It's depressing. They're cooking for a dining room that's only half full. But for Chloe to survive, it needs to be completely chocker at weekends. Very difficult to keep people placated when you're not boring anyone. We're not giving them all a bumble. <laughs> I'll pay. <laughs> Fuck me, it's been a long time. I know, it's hard, so I'm getting no feedback from Dawn. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm running blind. Running blind at the minute and not what having feedback, any. What feedback do you need right now? Well, really, is, is everybody okay? Is anyone, more, you know, starting to sort of like whinge because they're waiting or. It's just like... relax, just relax. Just, you're it's... all over the shop like a fucking orangutan. If you cool down and just relax and get yourself composed, I think you'll do 10 times better job. Yeah, yeah, I know. No? Yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. Without getting paranoid. Yeah. Our guests have to leave in 15 minutes and they haven't even started on desserts yet. Well, You've got a challenge, yeah? Yes. You've got first table, right. table two. Two moves. What bread have got pudding? Have I got it? Yeah, you got it. Right. Table seven. Four moves. Have I got it? Yeah. Wrestling of the year. Blackpool. Yeah, shithole of the year. Um, yeah, making hard work and nothing really. All over the place. Uh, completely disorientated in his own kitchen. Very bad at delegation. And totally in a mess. I can't think of two things at once. Seventeen guests. That's all. It took him one hour and five minutes to cook for ten people. And the last seven guests have taken 45 minutes. Shocking. So you want three first, basically. one bananas, what yeah, are you going to have? Yeah, well, I was asking you. OK, that's fine. Right. Tell me that in the third place. Fucking answer. Go around the fucking houses together. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's a spare room again tonight. It's the end of the season for Blackpool. Tomorrow night, the illuminations will be switched off and the tourists will go home. From what I've seen so far, it will be a miracle 
if Clubway 41 survives the winter. Right, Dave. Stop cooking like a ray of time. Stop monkeying around. And bananas are off the menu. Thank you very much. Thank you. By day three, it's clear in my mind that there's only one way forward. Simplify the food and simplify the preparation. But first, I want to give Dave and Nigel senses a wake-up call. Get those on. <laughs> yeah. Up. Got to really rely on your taste buds. Now, how not to run a restaurant. Rule number four. If your chefs can't distinguish between heavenly and hellish food combinations, then your customers won't be coming back for more. Dave, what can you taste there? Uh, no, uh, baz basil. What about something meaty? It's like very rare beef. Yeah. Watch my fingers, please. Remember this one? Dave's signature dish. Even my six-year-old daughter would know this is a culinary calamity. Dave, talk to me about that one. What, what flavours can you identify straight away? Cheese. Yeah. Pineapple? Yeah, pineapple cheese. Think what it is. Is it like a shellfish, which like a scallop? When you brush your teeth in the morning, do you use toothpaste or cigarettes? Because you've got a mouth like a cow's backside. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Good. Olive. Tomato. Do those flavours work together? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They definitely work together. Yeah. One of my favourites. Yeah. Ready for the last one? The evil salmon and strawberry starter. Open wide. That Dave swears is so popular mm -hmm. on his menu. Mm -hmm. First of all, nice. Would you be happy to pay money for that? No, not this. No. On that one, I, I wouldn't. Not to my taste. No. It no. doesn't work for me. It doesn't ne work for me. Nectarine and pork. <laughs> okay, take the fucking blindfolds off. That last <laughs> stick had your salmon and strawberries salmon? and fucking Fuckin watercress on there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If it doesn't work in your fucking palate, what chance has it got working in a restaurant? Yeah. Point taken? Very much so. Very, uh, yeah. very constructive, that. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, I need Fuck. to be sure the creative mastermind behind Clubway's yeah. disastrous current menu isn't about to sabotage our painfully slow progress. My question is, what gives you the right to think of these ideas? and then, in your own mind, think that it's right for the customers mm. when you haven't seen it before. Just experiment, really. Just uh -huh. try and put different flavours together. We, we've tried, because we've tried so many menus, yep. and to try and fill the restaurant, we have done plain, and then we've gone the avenue, well, maybe um, we are too plain and people can make this at home. And unfortunately, it's not working? No. I mean, until you've actually put it as plainly as you have done yesterday and today and actually gone through. There's yeah. too many flavours going on. Because the business is disintegrated mm -hmm. and there's no customers, mm -hmm. you're digging deep. Mm -hmm. But you're lively, you're a live wire, and that's a healthy <laughs> sign in a business. You know, it, it needs that energy. But I think what you've got to really understand, what you're telling Dave to do, he's not capable of doing. All right, OK. The restaurant is empty and the next stage is to close it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to close it. No. We're going to look at clever, simple combinations, mm -hmm. put them back on the menu, okay and get back to something that sounds in touch with Blackpool. Okay. Clubway's food isn't just unappetising. It's packed with costly, out-of-season ingredients that reflect in its overpriced menu. He said, like, I could use anything on it, didn't he? I've decided to challenge Dave's perception of simplicity by giving him a tray full of ingredients to make a broccoli soup. He can use as many or as few as he sees fit, but it's got to be good. Okay, is it finished? Yeah. Have a little taste. Should you taste broccoli? I can taste little bits of broccoli. Taste the bits, but you can't taste the flavour. You can't taste the flavour, yeah. exactly. Water onto the boil. My recipe consists of broccoli. Yeah. And broccoli. And broccoli. And broccoli. And broccoli. Boiling rapidly. I can't believe it's that simple. Because once we've cooked the broccoli in that water, we're then going to strain it. Yeah. And add the water back to the broccoli. On. Dave's simple broccoli soup contains 16 ingredients, including pricey cream and butter. Mine is just three. Broccoli, salt and water. It cost pence, and it took a lot less time to make. How it taste? I love the colour. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? God, that is so tasty, a broccoli. 
Salty taste. And it gives me that sense of, Christ, that's Moorish. I want more because mm, it tastes of broccoli. I understand. And the next one? I'm going to taste that one. Dave likes it, but what about his missus? Which one would you pay for? I don't like either. You don't like either? No. Fucking hell. That's too plain and that's yeah. too... From now on, you're staying out of the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to do with your food. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to do with any tangerine, nectarine, yeah, fucking yeah, no mango. Problem. Yes. I'm never going to look at one every no. day. Fantastic. <laughs> Dave, you're now in control of your kitchen. Thank you. OK. okay. Fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number five. Don't give your establishment a name that makes it sound like a strip joint. Subway 41, first floor restaurant, licensed cafe restaurant. Fucking hell. Gotta think of a name. Something positive, something that rings. What's your surname? Mine, Brindley. Brindley's. Brindley's Bistro Cafe. Mm. What's your surname? Jackson. Yeah. Jackson sounds good. Mm. And it's. Jackson. Um, enough to marry me, babe, aren't you? So I'm a Jackson too. Ah, <laughs> even more pressure now. <laughs> Everything costs me money. Uh, are you it? proposing? Isn't it your job to propose? <laughs> it's the love of my life. So, so there you go. We'll take oh, a day off. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Take a day off and I'll marry you. So long as it's on the cards, then. Yeah. 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 I'm happy okay, with that. Good. I'll go with Jackson's. That. Yeah, we'll Jackson's. go with that. We got you it. You sure now? Very. Yeah. And are you settled on that? One hundred. One hundred. One hundred percent. The Bria nectarine fog that's been surrounding Dave appears finally to be lifting. Are you in touch with Blackpool? What's all the chefs using at the moment? What's the, what's the latest big thing? What's caught locally? What's from the fish market? What's down the veg market? No, then I'd have to put hand on heart and say no. No, because I'd rely on my suppliers. Yeah. We've lost direction. It's gone badly wrong. Um, you've got to keep your ear close to the ground. So what do you want from Blackpool? I want people to come and have good, honest food. Uh-huh. That's it, in that shop. That's what I want. And how far are you away from that now? Miles. Probably further than we are from the restaurant now. It takes a brave man to acknowledge his business is on the brink of collapse, but I've not given up hope on Dave yet. We've hit rock bottom. Yeah, we've hit rock bottom. Now we're going up. And if you can't stand the heat... Fuck off out the kitchen. Fuck off out the kitchen. Hold on tight. I'm fucking holding on. Oh, shit! Fucking hell! Really pleased to see the back of that. Yes. It's my fourth day in Blackpool, and its restaurant of the year, Clubway 41, is no longer. Yeah, look, 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 all coming down. Fantastic. From today, this place will be known simply as Jackson's. Darren, can you get that fucking banner down as well, please? Yeah, we'll give that back to the tourist board. <laughs> but even with a facelift, we're still breaking a cardinal rule in how not to run a restaurant. What's fucking name? Rule number six. First floor establishments are notoriously difficult to fill. So to give Dave and Dawn's new venture a fighting chance, I've come up with a radical idea. I think you're missing a real serious trick here. This cafe functions brilliantly during the day. And I think we should look at moving the restaurant and operating the restaurant from here in the evening. But I stood outside last night and I looked and I thought, God, that frontage. Restaurants would die for that kind of frontage out there. It's not utilised, is it, really? No, it's no. not. No. Yeah, the kitchen's on show, yeah. there's an atmosphere going on, there's a bit of banter. Yeah, you've got all the bus stops, all the locals going home. Yeah. yeah. When someone walks past that and they see this place full, what are they going to do? want to eat there. They want to come in and eat. It is a nice room to work and plus no buzzers, no phone, I can see David. It's one-on-one, -on -one. they can see him and it's more of a, a partnership for the two of us then. The customers are coming in and seeing us both in our environment, not Dave stuck in the kitchen and popping down when he can, so... Can't pour a jug of milk over his head down here, but we have got a cellar, haven't we? Tomorrow night, we've invited 50 influential people to launch the new name. And to match its fresh, clean exterior, we've come up with a fresh, clean, simple menu. Have you made a castle before? No. No. you never made a castle before? No, never. No. Fuck me. 47 30, years ago. 30 years ago, probably at Catering College. It's right. time to nail Rule number seven, don't attempt to cook elaborate food yep. before you've mastered the very basics. We'll start off with just roasting off the vegetables. Right. And then we'll brown the meat, put it all into a pot, and let it cook nice and slow for about an hour and a half. I've got just 36 hours to teach Jackson's inept head chef 
how to cook. Nigel, yes. you're doing the potatoes? Yes. Once they're finished, we're going to make a fish stock. Right. Yeah? That's going to be our base for fish soup. Lamb, we need to colour it off. See, look how dark it is. That there is, is all, all, all about flavour there. That whole thing there is just pure flavour. Using inexpensive produce fresh from the local markets, 90% of this new food can be prepared in advance. Dishes like lamb casserole, pork terrine and fish soup are designed to take the heat off during service. That's it, nicely mixed. Good. The aim is to get Dave and Nigel sending out delicious, tasty food to a dining room full of customers, without Dave having a nervous breakdown in the process. You're free. You're free to control it and do it properly without having to do 20 things at once. Yeah, I understand. Next up, we're prepping some locally caught fish for a deliciously simple soup. Right, go on, just give me a hand here, will you, please? Yeah. See the knife? Yeah. Then watch it all the way down to the tail. Yeah. Out. Straight off. Right, eyes out. Yep, and just cut it up into quarters. Any specific way or just... Well, it's only for a fish stock, Dave, so whatever way you feel fit. OK. This is like pulling teeth. Anyone that hasn't actually been cooked in casserole before, yeah, or filleted fish, shouldn't be owning a fucking restaurant. So let's get cracking on with the fish soup. Cook off your mussels, and we'll save the juice, yeah? Have you cooked mussels before? No. You're pulling my plonker now, aren't you? You've never cooked a mussel? All right, we can shout or you can fucking help. I don't mind. What do you mean I can help? Hey, what have we been that's doing for the last... Yeah, OK, fine, you're right. I'm sorry. What have we been okay. doing for the last two hours? Fine, so what do we want in here? I'm just amazed you've never cooked a mussel. I haven't. Don't take the piss out of me for it, though. Oh, who's taking the piss? You are. I don't think you can actually cook. If you'd have fucking talked If you can't me, cook a no, fucking mussel... you had fucking yes. talked Yeah! Go uh -huh. on. Hey? Go on. Yeah, uh -huh. Finish it, then. Finish what? What are you about to are say? You? What am I about to say? Cook a mussel. No, I haven't cooked one. Right. OK. Right. So, shall I show you how to cook a mussel? Oh, at last. Thank you. Yes, oh. please. Right. Are you going to tone your voice down or are yes. you going to shout like some dick? I'll shout like some dick and then I'll calm down. Right. Now I've shouted, well, I will calm down. Why don't you fuck off to the bookshop, read how to cook a mussel and come back and see me? Yeah, okay. And I'll run your fucking restaurant. Thank you. Plonker. Twat. <laughs> fucking hell. What's all that about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, at least we broke the ice now anyway. We know where we stand. Yeah. Five minutes after he put his toys back in his pram, Dave returned ready and willing to learn how to cook mussels. All well, we're doing is steaming them now. Not quite. We've done more in the last fucking hour than we have in three days, yeah? Yeah. I know more about you and you know more about fucking me, yes? True, Chef. Thank you. Gordon. Gordon. Fuck the Chef. Yeah. Rule number eight. Don't assume you can run a restaurant just because you've worked in one. Sometimes, you know, when I listen to you talk about food and the way you are in a kitchen, I'm concerned that you fall in love with becoming a great chef, but forgot to go through the journey to get there. What do you mean by a great chef? I mean, to reach... A good your, cook. Your no, 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 fuck all to do with me. You're not working for someone else now. You're working for yourself. And, you know, this is on his ass. Yeah. The business can't get any worse. I just don't want you to get in a situation where you think that you're going to be Blackpool's best chef, because for as long as you've got a hole on your ass, that's never going to happen. All right. Dave and Dawn would be better off with a new chef, but they simply can't afford one right now. So there he is. <laughs> Mookie the Clown has agreed to try and work some miracles with what we've got. Now, that man's got amazing coordination skills. That's good, that's good. That's it, slow, like that. Yeah. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. Okay. Leading that's a successful brilliant. kitchen takes tremendous concentration. So all we're doing, really, is creating that momentum, aren't we? You've got to constantly be thinking ahead to keep on top of the game. Just like being in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, and creating that momentum with great coordination skills. A table three, table four together. Putting two tables together. Yeah. Sending three tables together. There we go. Now we have to take them off. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. That it may be a crash course in controlling his kitchen, but at last yeah, something seems brilliant. to be sinking in. This one needs to be. Come on, Dave. You can do this. See? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Take a bow. Yeah. <laughs> With the launch of Jackson's restaurant just 12 hours away, its new downstairs venue is being treated to a facelift. 
It's goodbye to the old clinical cafe and hello to a warm and inviting restaurant. What a difference. Huh? Brilliant, isn't it? It looks absolutely amazing. It really does. It looks absolutely smashing that. Very nice. There's loads to do. Food for the new simplified menu needs to be prepared, practiced. We waste nothing. And perfected. Same amount for the bottom, same amount for the top. Two and a half minutes each side. I never thought of having the worst thing. Never in a million years. Okay. And just to make sure, we're instigating idiot proof measures. Down. Take the air out. Okay. One nice portion. So, water's boiling rapidly. It goes in. You cut the top off, and it's away. It couldn't be easier. But a restaurant's first night is everything, and the team can't afford to put a foot wrong. David, it's your restaurant. No, yeah, I'm big night. Is there anything you think that you can't do? No, nothing. Yeah, anything you want to change? No, I'm happy with it. Lamb casserole. Bring it back to the boil, middle of the plate, meat in the middle, mm -hmm. dumplings on the side. Mm -hmm. Pushing, pushing in here. Push, 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 push. Question, question, question. Running through your mind. Then it becomes fluent, fluid, happy fucking customers, full dining room, and everything moves. OK? OK. The newly incarnated Jackson's has got to be a slick operation. Jackson's, that looks nice. Two courses, £14, three courses, £18. Uh, Darren, that doesn't sound expensive, does it? Two courses, £14, three courses, £18. Cheap, that. Looks nice. Hey, welcome to Jackson's. Nice, new, immaculate hats, proper hats. Just do me a favour, you look the part, cook the part. Good luck, everyone. Thank you very much. Stay cool, stay calm, yes, and communicate. Oh, our first customers. Hey, guys. Yes, you are. Good evening. It's nice Good to meet you. Nice Welcome to, to Jackson's. Right. Ladies from the tourist board, don't mention the banner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I feel like I'm just about to light the fuse and let it explode. It's a huge gamble putting Dave and his nerves on show. But maybe an audience is exactly what he needs to focus. That's what's happening. Nice, nice, buzzy restaurant. We'll keep it that way, yes? Here we go. One check on, please. OK, one macro salad, one soup, one lamb, one steak. Dave's off to a good start. How long, please, Nigel? Uh, good. Okay. David, yeah. that's good. Plenty of talking, yes? He's got a confidence about him I haven't seen before. And he appears to be in control. Thank you. Service, please. Table two, two tart, one mackerel. Okay. Got table two's mackerel and pate, and that wait. Go ready. Your bread. Okay, I'm going to go with table ten mains, then table seven starters. First main course now. First main course Good. now. Table ten. Let's go. Service, please. Major wait. Table ten. The plates are spinning, but will Dave be able to keep them up? Come on, guys. Okay. Nicely seasoned. Nigel's been as clear and concise with his steaks as he is with his bacon and eggs. One steak, medium. One steak, medium well. Medium well, darling. Medium. OK, Good. table two. OK, table two gone, Dave. Thank you. OK, service, please. Table one, one pate, one tart. Thank you. Check, please. Even in its heyday, this place has never been so busy. Thank you. Service, please. Table five, two soup. And there's nothing more alluring to potential customers than an attractive, buzzing restaurant. There's nothing difficult here. Soup to reheat, everything's cooked. Even the potatoes are cooked. All they have to do is dress the salad, grill the mackerel, and put it onto a plate. Got anything else? Was it tape? That was tape. What have you just sent, Nigel? Five? Sorry? Is that your fish and yours? Yeah, I've got it done. Yeah. Don't forget your lemon. But 50 minutes in, and the kitchen's having trouble keeping pace. Now, what I'm doing now, Dave, right, um, we'll, go, we'll go with these starters. Sorry, first. Those plates are beginning to wobble. David, don't burn any of that mackerel. We need everything that's on order now, you know that. Sorry? Don't burn that mackerel. I won't be here next week. So Dave and Nigel have got to prove to each other they can do this on their own. OK, Dave, what starters are coming now, please? OK, I'm doing now table nine starters. OK. And then we'll all the rest of just come out together, yeah? Uh, okay. Go on, can we serve some more champagne for those people that haven't got starters? Or some wine or something? Yeah. Just keep, just keep them happy. Well, it got off to a great start. Now it's gone really pear-shaped because there's actually six tables waiting for the starters. I need seven and six next, but I need the starters on eight. Mikey! Mikey, I need some pans, mate, please. 
And you've got a state well done. I've only got one state no, left. You're here. Yeah, I've only got one state left. I did say that. Dave's plates are no longer wobbling. They're crashing down around him. I, I haven't got the steak. I can do the penne. An hour after they ordered, customers have been told their choice of main course is no longer available. And we need these customers back. I've had the starter chef. So already we've gone back to the table and said we've got no steak. So how long for those starters, Dave? 11 and 12. Okay, let's see what that. They should be ordered between 11 and 12. Okay, fine. Watch those steaks. That's all we've got left. You know that. Two medium well, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Despite all the delays, Dawn's waiting team have managed to keep the customers happy. They gave us an extra glass of champagne. That was lovely. That's made our night. A little bit tipsy now, but we're all right. Table <laughs> nine, please. The food has looked a hell of a lot better. The mackerel started was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. We've had a wonderful evening, and, and the food, well, uh, if it's all around my mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even more miraculously, Dave has got through it. Okay, service, please. Without having a nervous breakdown. Done. Done. Dusty. Hi. Well, mate. It's not perfect by a long chalk, but they've come a hell of a long way in a week. The following morning, Dave and Dawn have had a booking for ten based on a recommendation from last night. You can't get better feedback than that. Morning. Morning, Gordon. How are you, well? Morning, Hi. Dawn, you well? Hi, thank you. There's a present. Um, I want it for you. You want it for me? Yeah. Hey. Is it a coordination challenge? It's a ring attack. Oh, is it? Yeah, keep it as a good luck mascot. Nigel, how are you feeling? Yeah, very well. We yeah. were positive about last night, actually. It's just sort of like, you know, give us another two, three services there, and, uh, we have it top notch. It's not until you work something that you find its pitfalls. Yeah. So, and now we worked it and we saw the pitfalls. Yeah. So now we know which areas to look in. Dawn's sparkle and energy are perfect for front of house. I just need to be sure she'll steer well clear of that menu. Last night I stood outside and just looked and saw the restaurant full. <laughs> you were busy and buzzing. It was great. And feeding off the customers and bouncing off them. It's the base now, the start for something that we think is going to really take off. Yeah. My concerns with David is I don't want him getting beyond his station again. Yeah. I don't want you filling his head with brie. No, believe me, it's never going to happen again. No. I've listened to you, no menus. Yeah. This is my bit, that's his yeah, bit, absolutely. no menus. Last night worked, and you so know it fucking works like that. Nothing more. I want you to keep hold of that. It was nice to see it buzzing again. It's simple. It's all about organisation. Yeah, but don't get too ambitious and certainly don't turn it into something pretentious because that isn't going to close this place. I know money's tight and finances are difficult. In time, I want you to look for a new chef. That's crucial. Good. Yeah, I agree with that. One more thing. Keep the fucking nectarines <laughs> in the fruit salad. Yeah? <laughs> Keep the nectaries in the fruit salad. <laughs> yes? Not with fucking battered out pork. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Look after that lady. I will do. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Drive carefully, please. Oh. Thank you. Damn. I forgot to mention rule nine. You're only as good as your last service. Eight months ago, I came to Blackpool on a mission to breathe some life back into its failing restaurant of the year. Right, table two, two moves, one bread and butter pudding. Have I got it? But a quick resuscitation for Club A41 was out of the question. That's probably the worst sauce I've ever tasted in my entire life. They were breaking every rule in the book. I don't think you can actually cook. If you'd have fucking talked If you can't me, cook a uh, fucking if muscle... You, if you yeah. you yeah. uh, Get rid of the fucking name. But after a week, We'd moved heaven and earth to make the new Jacksons a going concern. Table one, one pate, one tart. And by the skin of our teeth, we just about pulled it off. He gave us an extra glass of champagne. That was lovely. That's made our night. I left Dawn and Dave at the end of Blackpool's season, with a chance of surviving a long, bleak winter. Summer's here, and they're still open. How are you? Hello. Thank you all right. Yeah, very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah. On the surface, say... the place is looking great. Yeah, just give me an heart attack then. Oh, please. <laughs> but it's soon clear that things are far from rosy. 
Nigel. And where's uh, Nigel? Well, Nigel's gone because. Nigel's gone because I think it's probably best not to death like that. You're missing a chef. God. Things must be bad. I was hoping Dave was going to recruit reinforcements in the kitchen, not get rid of them. So getting through the winter was the most important thing, which yes. you managed to do. Yeah. I mean, we knew winter would be hard, but we didn't, I didn't think it would be that hard. All the way through January, February, we no, carried no. on, nothing. And then we ended up with this bus station right outside. We can't have the doors open in summer because the, the fumes, the diesel fumes, are disgusting. This is a terrible twist of fate. They've just about survived the winter, and now a bus exchange has landed on their doorstep. Apart from physically drag these people into the building, I really don't know what more we can do. I mean, we've worked our asses off all year. With debts at an all-time high, Dave and Dawn shut down the evening restaurant just two months after Jackson's relaunch. It just seems a, a missed opportunity if you bin that idea so early when you, you worked at it for six, seven weeks. If I hadn't have done it and, and cut my costs, we wouldn't be here now, literally. Yeah. In a desperate effort to save money in the cafe, they've shot themselves in the foot by ousting home-cooked food. They're back to bog-standard frozen Blackpool fare. So yeah. just cafe food? You're just, putting yeah. this breakfast? Yeah. What about the specials? The specials, well, they've been up there. I mean, we just have the board up there now. If summer trade doesn't pick up soon, Dave and Dawn will lose everything. Have you ever thought about you have to speculate to accumulate? Yeah, yeah of course absolutely. they piss you off, but turn it round to your advantage. So I've come up with a unique marketing strategy, using the god-awful buses to bring fresh food and customers back to Jackson's Cafe. The idea is attract them into the restaurant in the evening and the kids eat for, for free. For free. Yeah. As an incentive through the summer 2005. And, you know, look, delicious home-cooked evening specials after 6 p.m. Yeah, very good idea. Are you happy? I'm happy with that, yeah. Thanks yeah. for that. So, for our summertime special, it's fresh fish and chips from Mum and Dad and free homemade chicken nuggets and mini burgers for the kids. Yeah. So, they're not coming to us. Fuck it. We're going to go to them. We're doing some homemade specials this evening. Um, if you order a special, little girl will eat for free. Everything's homemade. So we'll see you in about, what, half an hour? That's <laughs> probably you. Around, around the, corner. the corner. Jackson's on Market Street. Right. Right. See you there, yes? Thank you. Bye. <laughs> on the adult special, we've got fleet good fresh caught fish, beer batter. You like burgers, don't you, big boy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> You're too slow. Yeah. Yeah. At last, a smile. Dawn's a natural saleswoman, so why isn't she out here every evening? Everything's homemade on the premises, fresh today, fantastic produce, and we start at 6 o'clock this evening. What's your favourite food? What do you like? Curry. <laughs> Curry? Curry's off the menu. It's about 6 o'clock. All right, then. Thank, you. Thank you. The past eight months have clearly been very hard, but to survive, you can't let it get you down. Uh, you know, the place is better than the cafe. I think yes. that's my... Yeah. That's my, 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 my gripe. There must be a, a 500 cafes that serve full mm. breakfast in Blackpool. And if it's got any chance of surviving, you know, you've got to be better than that. Mm. You're fucking on the arse like that and the business is so <laughs> fucking weak. We've got no choice, have we? Huh? Come on, don't be upset. No, I'm all right. No, don't be silly. Come here. Come on. Don't be silly. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, it's just Don't be all silly. Here you go. You've got to be strong. <laughs> Should get back and cook some goujons? Yes. Yeah? Or do you fancy a swim? <laughs> Not a sniff. Well, you're already, you're already wet. <laughs> huh? Standing in a fucking swimming pool. Let's get back to the restaurant. <laughs> Tonight's a chance to lift the bar and convince the punters that Jackson's home-cooked fresh food is a cut above the rest. Are you set up for uh, for dinner? Oh, I'm just about, yeah. I've just got these. But Dave and Dawn have go got to stick to their guns. I was a little bit miffed this morning when I heard that it only went for six weeks. That's not long enough to try it. And I think what you're doing is listening to the first or second customer and then that's setting your thoughts for the next three or four months. I, I really had to look at the cost big style, yeah. you know, at the end of the January. Now the season's here, we have the chance to evolve it yeah. in these over the next sort of like 12 mm -hmm. to 14 weeks. Yeah. But you've got to make a noise, Dave. This is. Uh, you know, a cafe, it's a smart place, but you've got to get that message across and you've got to continue putting that message out there. Our PR exercise has paid off. The customers are flocking in. Two minutes for your garnish. That's fine, thank you. Dave's at home cooking this kind of food and it's flying out. OK, I need four goujons out, please. And the home cooking seems to be hitting the spot. Dave is nice. Oh, 
Mm. Nice, crispy batter, very tasty. And the cod. Mm, that's delicious. You can do it. This is simple. I might actually ask them for the fucking recipe. Chales burger, Chales burger, no chips, okay? Well, I'm convinced. How about the kids? Yeah, where's it gone? I've been poor. Well done. <laughs> Out of ten, how many would you mark it? Hundred. That means it was a really good burger. The meal deal's been a real success, and the fresh food has proved its worth. The food was a hundred times better. Customers were happy, weren't they? Yeah. Huh? Quite Kids were in there. Mm -hmm. We had to go off the street and drag them in, but you know that's what's going to take to get this place back. Yeah. Great honest food. That will fill a restaurant. Do I yeah. I really do. Yeah. 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 And thank it, you. It's not that difficult. Yeah. Is it? No. Uh -huh. No. This is a rule book, because when I first came to Jackson's, or Clubway at the time, yeah, it was everything a Russian shouldn't be. Read this. There's one special rule. Rule number 10, don't think your life saves into opening a restaurant if you're in any doubt of success. If I asked you to turn the clock back two years, would you have bought Clubway 41? Knowing what I know now? Yeah. No. But hindsight's always an exact science. Mm -hmm. But with what we've learned, we will carry on. And it will work. Look what you've been through. Yeah. Don't bin it. Read me the rule before I go. My lucky number, number seven. Don't attempt to cook elaborate food before you've mastered the basics. And that is one thing we definitely learned from your last visit. Yeah. Good. Sound advice, though. Sound advice. Lovely. Bedtime reading tonight. Bedtime Thank you. reading, big time. Hey. Good night. Good to see you. And you? Yes? Yeah. No, I'll give you a kiss. Dave and Dawn have been through the mill. But if they can stay focused for the rest of the season, they might just be here next year. Do you actually get a shot? You don't get a shot, no. This is where David needs to sit inside so we can wake him up and get his numb fuck head out of his brie and nectarines and get back to some good honest food. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's a fuck. <laughs> Nantwich, a wealthy Cheshire town in the heart of a thriving farming community. Just off the high street is Oscars, named after Irish writer Oscar Wilde. It's been hard work. Like I've put a lot of money into it and I want it to work out now. I'm running out of excuses. Kathy, you use sort out the bar for me. Thank you very much. Please. Twelve months ago, with the support of her family, Maura put £65,000, her life savings, into opening her dream restaurant. I like, I like meeting people. I, I love meeting people, and it, this is what I enjoy. One big, happy family running a quaint Irish restaurant. Perfect. <laughs> Trouble is, Maura's now losing two grand a week, and this place was meant to be her pension plan. It's just a nightmare. It really is, it is a nightmare. It's, it's a panic, and especially when I'm on my own. You know, I have nobody to go home and say, oh, God, you know, what do you think? Maura can't afford a head chef, so her son Lennon's heading up the kitchen for free. I'm the one that's closest to my mum, so obviously I wouldn't see her in that age, and that's it, I've just stayed. But even with Lennon's charitable contribution, it seems Oscar's is on its last legs. Fuck me, it's on top of a butcher. Are you well? I'm very well. It's Mora. Mora. Good. Bigara, bigara. This is uh, cosy, nice. And who's that on the wall down there? Who do you think it is? It looks like a fat version of Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Lenny. How are you doing? Pleased to meet you. How are you? What's under here? They're the ribs, okay. which um, cook in Coca Cola. Cooked in Coca Cola? Yeah. Fuck me, that's a new one. Honest to God, they are. They're cooked in Coca Cola? In Coca Cola. Okay. Lenin used to be a pub chef and it looks like he's picked up some bad habits. And what style of food is it? I call a bit of everything. There's bit of everything. Uh, fish, steaks, a bit of pasta, a bit of vegetarian. Try to cover a bit of everything. Oh, dear. I can't wait to find out what Moore's eclectic menu has to offer. OK. Thank you. King prawn wrap, green lip mussels, soup du jour. A little bit of everything. A good restaurant does one sort of food brilliantly. A bad one does 50 badly. Oscar Wilde Buffalo. Buffalo in Cheshire. 
Even I'd find more as menu a challenge. Gordon's having a paella small God paella. knows how her son Lenin copes. He wants a carbonara for his mains. Oh, the bastard. Who's this? What? He had to pick the thing and roast that. Oh, thank you. My paella starter uh, takes 20 minutes to arrive. So, it's a nice um, psychedelic pink crab stick. It stinks as well. Then, like everyone else, I start waiting. And waiting for my main course. Oh, for fuck's sake. What are they doing in there? Lots of cutlery on the table, but no fucking food. Has anyone told them there are 38 customers in the restaurant? Tables three and seven have been cleared for about 20 minutes. With food and service this bad, first-time customers will never come back. Somebody's having, somebody's having a laugh at you. Table one has complained about waiting so long for the food, now they want a bottle of complimentary wine. What can you do? You have to keep the customer happy. Moore has been forced to flush what little profit she could be making straight down the toilet. Somebody! Thank you very much. At last. An hour and a half after ordering it, my carbonara finally arrives. It tastes like there's vinegar there. You don't put fucking vinegar in a carbonara. There's no egg in there, there's no parmesan in there. It's bland, it's garlicky. Chicken's rubbery. Apart from being crap and really shit, I actually feel really embarrassed because the girls behind me haven't even eaten yet. We've been in here since 8 o'clock and it's now 10 past 10, so we've kind of gone a bit past caring as what comes. <laughs> I'm amazed they've held out this long. What's going on in there? Uh, Lennon is really fucking embarrassing me out there. Let me, uh, let me give you a hand. So, um, who's, communi who's communicating? Who's, who's doing what? No. Anyone in? What's that loom down there? Who put that under there? Obviously. The smouldering 35 degree heat in this kitchen oh, has nice. started to scramble their brains. The Who put it under the grill, guys? I put it on there. And did you look after it, Les? Well, I just assumed they saw me put it under. Because oh, it was still right next to me when I did it. So. This is like a fucking Lauren Hardy show. Huh? This is another fine mess I've got myself into. Salad four. Salad. Two veg, four, three. Salad? Veg, salad, yeah, three, yeah. yeah. It's a farce. Veg is overcooked. Is that overcooked? With mother and son playing the blame game. Where is it? What? There's no where it's going, the fuck all. This is the problem we have most of the time, fucking waitresses. No one is taking control. Table two's now looking for some discount. I'd say get fucked. No, you, don't, you can't do that. No, you you can't. don't speak to customers like that. Two bottles of wine. Two of us, that's like nearly 30 Yeah, quid. but you can't speak to a customer like that. Well, I fucking disagree. Well, I, I'll sort it out. Well, I'm just saying, the fella... This kitchen's a pressure cooker, waiting to explode. Anyway, let's not argue. Let's just try and get some food out. Let it. Fuck off. Fuck me. Fucking cook it yourself. A head chef who can't stand the heat. What happened to the quaint family-run restaurant? Fuck me. It's not normal, this. You know, this is not fucking normal. Huh? Doing your mum a favour is one thing. Helping to run her business into the ground is another. You can't be happy with this. It does hurt to see it, because I know that every penny my mum's got is in the, her house is in this, everything's in this. It's shit. I apologise yeah, yeah, so much. Maura's given away over £100 worth of free drink and food. She'd have been better off closing for the night and saving the restaurant's reputation. Uh, Lenin, stand next to your mum. I actually sat down with a little bit of excitement, you know that? Thinking, Christ, this is quaint, this is beautiful. Then when the food arrived, trust me, I don't think, quite honestly, we need to hear any more bad comments on the food tonight, cos I've had a fucking belly full. We're in the shit. Morning. Morning. It's my second day at Oscars. Last night, Mother and son team Maura and Lennon ran possibly the worst service I've ever seen. The first thing that struck me when I came into the kitchen last night was the disrespect between mother and son. That was a big shock for me. Yes. Um, with it being a family business, you know, this is like a livelihood. And I walked out and I, I do know 
that, you know, that wasn't right. What the fuck happened last night? Um, you give it to me, truthfully. Truthfully, um... And seriously. And seriously, I, um... I was nervous about the whole thing, and I did, and I'll openly admit it, have a few drinks yesterday, uh -huh. waking up to it, and... Basically, through that, I did lose my concentration of what I was doing. Everything just went pear-shaped. If I am going to get involved and start working fucking hard to help get this thing back on track, you've really got to promise me that you're going to concentrate, not disappear, and forget uh, anything about a fucking drink. 100%. 110%. Well, I promise you that. I'm really worried about Lennon turn into alcohol every time there's pressure in the kitchen. So many chefs go down that line. And if it's not alcohol, it's drugs. And that's the last thing you need when you're under pressure. It's a fucking recipe for disaster. Like his dad before him, Lennon's always wanted to be a chef. But so far, I've seen nothing revolutionary in his cooking. It's time to find out just what lights his fire. I don't cook for myself. You don't fucking eat your no. own food. Are you keen on anything? Curry. I just like Vindaloo curry for some reason. Vindaloo? I'm, yeah. No, I'm red. No, I said, I'm sit, I'll sit with a bottle of wine with that, now I'm happy enough. So you eat Vindaloos, right. you smoke 40 cigarettes a day, a bottle of wine. Sugar sandwiches. Sugar what? Sugar sandwiches. How just the fuck do you... the bread and dip it into the sugar bowl. Gorgeous. Trust me. You must have a pant like a cow's backside having fucking right. diarrhoea, you know that? Sugar sandwiches and ribs braised right. in Coca-Cola. Lennon's taste buds have clearly lost Lamb. their Irish roots. Lamb. I need to inspire them with some good old-fashioned ingredients. Lamb. Now that can be turned into three, four hundred quid's worth of turnover. How can you turn that into something delicious, yeah, and sell it on the fucking menu? Think of something for chicken as well, you know that. Let's see what his vivid imagination can muster. Not out of a cookbook. They're off the top of my head. OK. Ready? Yep. Right, the chicken, yep. marinated in honey and whole grain mustard, mm -hmm. served on a bed of wilted spinach. Go on. I like that. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, I do like that. You had a drink last night? Last night, yes. Yeah, I didn't so, drink a thing last night. It tastes like shit. Yeah, it tastes like shit. Next. Diced lamb, cooked in tomato and basil sauce, and just topped with palms and cheese. Put a bit of chilli, just give it a little bit of a bite. See, this is why I think you destroy the majority of the stuff you do, because you put all these little bits of shit at the end that just blows it. Uh, I, I don't think that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Almost reminds me of a stew, like, a, like an Irish you know, stew. And if I came to Oscars, I'd, I'd love to see a real nice Irish stew. If I knew the chef was Irish, bang. You'd expect. I'd be over the fucking moon. That one's workable, but not bad. OK, thank you. But you can definitely do better. Yeah. And there's no time like the present. Irish family. When we put the cabbage in, I think we can do it quite sort of rustic, no? OK. Irish restaurant, Irish Set stew, up. here we come. Shake, shake, shake. So we dry them out a little bit. Create a little bit of fur around the outside, almost like a little bit, bit like a fur jacket. That's right? what they do yeah, yeah. in Ireland. When? When, when? In Ireland, when they boil the spuds and drain them. Welcome, welcome back. They go back on until they just yeah. start to fluff out. Why the fuck are you telling me this, yeah? Right. In your own restaurant? when you produced the shit you produced and now you've just opened up and hit the nail on the head. You've fallen out of love with food, haven't you? And a lot of people have said that, yeah. I don't know why. I have no reason why. You've got to get it back. So, what does Mum think? I'm ashamed to say I'm Irish and I couldn't make Irish stew like this. It's lovely. Yeah, you're Irish, for fuck's yeah. sake. You should be, you know, renowned in this town for your Irish stew. Walking around like proud cock. I mean, it, it, yeah, and it's, it's simple, it's basic, it's cheap. Yeah, OK. Mother and son are starting to see eye to eye. Now it's time to get mature trainee chef Les up to speed. And did you not want to be a chef early on in life, or...? Did... No, it never really... It never really occurred to me. I mean, when I left school, it was just take what job I could get at the time, really, money-wise. Yeah. Les has Good had life. 21 Basically, jobs yeah. in 21 years. Started cooking at 18. Everything from gas man to bingo caller. Give me a call. The eyes down, here we go. So it's uh, on the blue, four and two, blue, 42. <laughs> two fat ladies, 88. 
All the sevens, a pair of crutches, 77. <laughs> if he can cook as well as he can call, then job Fucking 22 out, could I'm be the winning so number. Six and two, clickety duck, 62. Uh, red all the ones, legs 11. Legs. <laughs> Where's the whistle? Oh, they whistle, they... Of course, yeah. Thank you, whistle. Okay, you great. <laughs> the chefs may be on side, but if Oscars is empty midweek, it doesn't matter how much we improve the food. How much do you need to take a week to break even? To break even, about three and a half. Thousand? Mm. And what are you taking? On average, at the minute, it's two. Two thousand? Mm. Relationships are frail, and business is down the pan. But how long can you continue surviving like this? Oh, uh, I'm at, uh, at the end now. I just I can't carry on like this much longer. It's a nightmare. I'm, I am getting worried. Uh -huh. My dream is just going down the chute. Where's the butcher? Craig. Moore has never run a restaurant before. And upstairs establishments are the hardest to fill. So she's got to get her business head on. Your windows, yeah. they're fucking amazing. I've never seen such phenomenal space in all my life. You know that? She's been ignoring a tailor-made marketing solution that's right on her doorstep. Walking down here, Craig, he's totally oblivious that there's any restaurant. Hey, Chinese next door, fine, but bloody hell. I want to know what's going up in there. Does any customers ever tell you that no, they don't know where the restaurant is? Yeah, didn't know you were here. I think you know what's coming. What I want to do is pull those beautiful big blinds down and just stick Oscars. Classic Irish cooking, upstairs. Telephone number. And what I'd like to do is try to come to some arrangement where you can bring your family for a little bite to eat. Maura will host the table, and we can have that bit of sort of working relationship together. Oh, That'd yeah. be brilliant for us, yeah, isn't it? brilliant for both of us, yeah. Huh? I'm just trying to think of ways that we can have as a bit of a marketing tool without having to spend shed loads of money. Thank you. Butcher's handshake. Solid as a rock. Building a reciprocal relationship with the butcher is key to Oscar's success. Currently, we're using upstairs your fillet steak, the ribeye. Ribeye, the chicken. Yeah. chicken. The chicken. And the ribs. And the ribs. And is it um, local lamb? Local lamb. All local produced, yes. Thank you. By making full use of his local suppliers, Lenin and his customers will be getting a better deal. Fresh food on the day. No. New menu. It's going to be a new menu on there. So. And with Craig's name all over it? Yes. I say, we'll put your name on our menu. This is where we get our meat. So we need a good discount. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. I'm serious. He's getting the hang of this. So I'm going to push him even further. I want Lenin to buy lunch for 15 surprise guests. 30 quid. On 30 quid. On 30 quid. So uh, what's two pound a head? A fiver for the lot. <laughs> Go on. Please. Cheers. If he can stick to a budget, You'll make more profit for the restaurant. How much are the potatoes? A pound. I'll give you 60 pence one. Because <laughs> then you can, you know, taking the mud off them. He's definitely got the gift Thank of the gab. Are you good at this, yeah? <laughs> but can he transfer some of that energy into the kitchen? Are you lazy? Uh, yes, I'd say that. Yes. You are. Why have you turned lazy? Um, I don't, I, I, I can't, I don't know. Part because no one's driving you behind and telling you what to do? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Maybe you've just hit the nail on the head. Your mum is a weak lady. I know that. So uh, she's not going to be there fucking caning you and, and fucking telling you off? No, I get annoyed with her. And that's when the argument starts. <laughs> they say never work with children or family. Today, they're all here. But I'm keeping Lenin in the dark. My little surprise. But let me just say, this is one table. Right now, Lenny, you can't afford to fuck up. Right. Yeah? It won't be fucked up. It better not be, cos his family are his harshest critics, especially his younger brother, Gilly. There have been a few times where I've come and I haven't been overly impressed. I'm not sure that repeating the same dish uh, constantly he, he can do at the same sort of level. I think that, that is his biggest issue. This is a chance for you to show me that you can cook and control something from scratch and yeah. create something which is not on the menu, something completely different, and something a little bit inspirational. Right. Excite me. Light my fucking fire. Everything is fresh, cooked fresh, all bought locally. It's... <laughs> what the fuck are you... Write me a fucking storyline or something, cos I've no idea what, what you want me to say. What I'm trying to get out, Lenny, is some fucking passion. Some fucking care and attention and love for food. Blow me away. Deep fried local mushrooms stuffed with mature cheddar cheese. Good. Slow roasted pork. 
finished with sage. Sounds nice. The dessert is fresh local strawberries served on a bed of cream. There you go. What was different on that? It's all that bullshit you're telling me that's so hard. That's sounding fantastic. Right. That's not so bad. But the pennies just dropped with me because that's what you are lacking in. Confidence. A chef without confidence is like a car without wheels. And Lenin's got to get in that driving seat. If he can woo the family with a simple roast dinner, that's half the battle. See this rock salt here? I rub it in there like that. It takes out the water, okay. out of the fat. What happens to the fat? It goes nice and... It'll crisp it up. There you go. The other half of the battle is making full use of his assistant, Les. You're an important member of this team. We need you here. And you've got to feel a lot safer when this guy's connected to you. The minute this guy's not by your side, your mind's fucked, you know that. Yeah, yeah. You definitely need help. Maybe this will be a turning point for Lennon. And with his confidence boosted, we can concentrate on his cooking. Good. Good. Hey, hello. Three and a half minutes for 15 main courses. Yeah, fucking well done. Do me a favour and fuck off out there. Go on. It's time for Lennon to meet his surprise guest. <laughs> so how's he fared? This is gorgeous. <laughs> this is absolutely gorgeous. What's the back there? What's the meat that's in with the, the cabbage? Bacon, onion, black pepper. But he does have a connection with food. Unfortunately, he just lacks the confidence. That's the real sad thing about this guy. Cooking for your family is fucking difficult because they've been criticising for a long time. I just wish he can actually do the same now for his customers, because if he gets that right, we've got a chance of getting this place back on the fucking map. It's Saturday night, and Oscars is fully booked. I might want you to make it here a favour. Lenny's working with Moore's expansive menu, but to give him a fighting chance, there has to be a system. So that's nice and clear. Table seven, four customers. Communication between front of house and kitchen must be seamless. Time's on there so we can really concentrate on getting the food out. And there's no one's arguing then, because you're saying it's 25 minutes. And he's saying, no, bollocks, it's only 10 minutes. So look, it's on the ticket, 7 o'clock. Now, for me, the first ticket is absolutely crucial. We'll start off the evening with the first ticket going out, flying out. Hey, there's an indication that we're going to get off to a really good start. Yeah? Right, that's, that's good. Yeah. Wakey, wakey. I'm putting the disasters of my first night down to Lenny having a nerve-steadying drink. No. Tonight, yeah. I'll be watching him like a hawk to see where he's going wrong. Table 11 goes to one soup, one ribeye, an extra portion of chips, 7.35. Mmm, not bad. And he's actually sounding like a proper chef. Can I go, please? Yes, please. Thank you. And that has been the best eight covers I've seen go out of this kitchen, you know that? But after 40 minutes of faultless control in the kitchen, yeah. Lenny mysteriously loses it, big time. Lennon, this was cold and a bit tasteless. I thought we'd made good progress cooking for the family. Lennon? Basically, just apologise for me. How come we're back at square one? What the hell was this for? The kitchen's gone silent. It's like being in a church. One, two, three, four, five, six tickets on board. Les is wandering, wandering around looking for stuff to do. Uh, if you don't open up and tell me what you're thinking, I can't help you. Oh, no, no. Yeah? Well, Gotta open up. This is pretty pants. It's really bad. I'm really sorry about your delay. Between our charm and the drink is about the only thing that's holding it up, so... I've never seen so much food come back. Something fishy's going on here. What's, uh, Senna? Black corn. What's in there? I don't know. I've got a cat to do it for me. No, no. Tell me the truth. You said you're going to be honest this morning. Right, being in water and um, a vodka in the bottom. When you started off service at 7 o'clock tonight, yeah, it was going well, you know that? It's 9 o'clock and they're starting to complain. Is that because of that? No, that's the first one that's come in the kitchen. Now, that is the truth. But why did you tell me you weren't going to drink? Because I'm absolutely not. I've been here all day and I just wanted one drink, so I got Catherine one. I do apologise for that. Fair enough. I'm sorry. Um, Service? Um, fuck. It's all becoming seriously clear. This is not just about Lenin's lack of confidence. You let me down fucking big time. Half past eight inside that fucking cup. He's sneaking vodka in. 
And I don't mind having a beer after fucking yes, service. Yes, I, I don't fucking care what you do after service. But in service, from 7 o'clock to 11, you fucking stay away from that. And you put your pressures on me. You give me the pressure. And it's not just the kitchen you're fucking, you know that? You're screwing it's your mum. Restaurant. It's gone beyond food now. Jesus. We've hit rock bottom. But Lenny's proved to me he's got talent when he's not drinking. And he must care for his mum and the business if he's here every night for nothing. Why does he drink? He really gets stressed. And, and I often wonder, uh, am I putting him under too much pressure? You've got to be very careful with that because he's lost his motivation and he has lost his direction. Mm -hmm. So you're the only person that can turn that around, you know that. Every time you give him a drink in the middle of service, you're pushing the distract button. It's you that's going to, you know, close the fucking door. Mm -hmm. You can't allow him another mm -hmm. drink. Yeah. Day three at Oscars, and the writing's on the wall. Like many chefs, Lenin finds it difficult to cope with the stress of a busy service unless he's had a drink. When you're in the middle of service, that's the last thing you need is a fucking drink. And I've seen my chefs try to do it as well in the middle of service by using alcohol to get them through a very busy night. And if you haven't got your fucking wits about you in the middle of service, then you've got no chance. They can be the most disastrous, the most dangerous place to be. First thing with Lenny is to take the pressure away. Starting with his mum's deranged bit of everything menu. I've trained to cover everybody from about 16 up to 80. And I made a pig's ear out of it. Can I just say a menu that big, even I wouldn't attempt to cook. You're putting a noose around his neck because he's not capable of doing it. I think you're more capable of doing four or five starters, four or five mains, four or five desserts. Fuck all else. But for God's sake, you're both Irish. So I want to have a bit of an influence from there, from the trout, the potatoes, to your Irish stew, and make it sort of become a hallmark. I want to get Lennon excited about a new Irish theme menu. Let's get this fish cake together, shall we? Garlic butter. And show him that food can give him his kicks instead of the booze. Just come in a minute, let's smell the fish. <laughs> and hopefully, there you go. they can taste the there. difference between his cheap, bought in cod and pancetta fish cake. And what are you serving that? Chili sauce? Get it on there, big boy. And my fresh homemade alternative. The first one that went in your mouths was what? Oh, homemade. And the second one that went in your mouths was what? That cherry there. You got into it. What's the first thing the customer sees? Collar. Collar fish. fish. Yeah. Tails of salmon, smoked haddock, a little bit of mustard. That's lovely. That really was nice. And this place becomes renowned for the most amazing homemade fish cakes. Christ almighty. They're, they're a good size. Go in deep in. The menu starting to come together. I just hope no, I'm not no, putting no, too much pressure on Lenny too soon. Are you struggling today without a drink? No, I'm not doing too bad. No, I'm all right. We're cooking and the fucking shit hits the fan again and we're under pressure. I don't want you going out there. No, no, no. Guarantee you that. The restaurant relaunches in two days' time. But tonight, I'm trying to break Lenny the in gently. We've got just 15 people booked cooked. and it's a chance to try out some new specials. Push that and push the Irish stew and push all the specials. Who's in charge of the dining room? I am. You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't feel that the other night when I sat in here. I didn't feel like there's one person actually controlling it. I think there's two or three things that are going wrong in the service. You really have to be strong enough to tell them off about it. They'll respect you more. One final thing. Under no circumstances does anyone give this man a drink in the middle of service. Is that clear? Mum? I'm the one that objects. Yeah, OK, That's good. True. Put your foot That's down. so true. Put I'm, your foot I'm down. Sick yeah, but put, I'm sick of putting my foot down with him all the Your time. restaurant? Yeah? Yes. Your son? Yeah. You fucking tell him. Yes, we get a kick. Good. Here we go. The aim tonight yeah, is to teach Lenny some control yeah, and yeah. discipline. Good. Well, we've got ten minutes before the first customer comes. Do you want to nip off a quick cigarette? Do you mind? You wouldn't be telling me if you did. Hey. Yeah, I do. But come back. This is the challenge, you little fucker. OK. Every time you want to go and leave this kitchen and disappear outside for a cigarette, you put a pound in the box. Every time I swear, I put a pound in the box. Here. And that stays on there. No smoking or drinking for Lenny, no swearing for me. 
one lamb, medium to well, one chicken and ribs, one portion of chips. Time, 8.15. You sort the pasta out, Les, and leave Richard to tidy up. He can chop them for you. That's it. Now we're working like a kitchen, guys. There you I go. don't know how well Lenny's going to fare in this challenge. What's in the glass? Vodka. Water. <sighs> Fucking hell. Shit. Too quick. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Have get we started? That, get, start getting that full. Have we started it? Yes, you did. Fuck it. Add another one. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Les, you happy? Yeah. Let's be having your... Uh... Nice. And you check. You check. We've sent out three tables beautifully. Don't start fucking up now. OK. It's hard to break the habits of a lifetime. Les, how long are you? How far are you away now? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And it's eight o'clock, so you must be ready for your next cigarette. I'm That's not unfair. Cigarette. Thank you for that. Got through a fiver in two minutes. Jesus, that thing takes two of us to lift it. So far, so good. No drinking, no smoking, and the fresh fish cakes are going down a storm. It's nice. They're nice and light. Mm. All clean. No, oh, come on. Seriously. Yeah. Lovely. One smoked salmon pate, two fish cakes, cotton, one cotton pancetta, oh, fuck that. I can't send out the decent fish cakes with one of them cotton pancettas. And this is a big move for you, and I'm not trying to make you look yes, fucking stupid, I know but you I think mean. you should go and tell them that. I don't think it's something your mum should go and do. No, That's no. That's your fucking kitchen. Yeah, OK, OK, come back and sell the fish tape. Where am I going? The actual special fish cakes are homemade today, and they're beautiful. And I'll be honest, the other ones are frozen. Oh, Try them, please. Pride and confidence. Yeah. Right, that is the homemade. Oh, oh to die for. <laughs> and you've spoken more here in the last two hours than you did do for three days last week. Yeah. And it sounds fantastic. Right. And you sound in control. And you look bloody good. Thank you. Lennon's proved he can get through on a quiet night without his usual distractions. I can smoke now, I've got to right. Smoke some fennel seeds or... Here you go. Just try it. Try it. Try it. This is therapy. Go on, try it. <laughs> there you go. It's not mine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now smoking asparagus, and it tastes fucking delicious. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's nice to see that standard of food going out, and it's nice to see it going nice and smooth and not coming back. So I'll sleep tonight this time, I'm sure I will. Right, so let's get tidied down here. We're making great headway in the kitchen. Now I can work on Mora and making it perfect for the customers. First problem? Finding the place. That looks fantastic. Huh? Oh, lovely. Yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You'll never get a better advertising space than that. Fresh home cooking with an Irish flavour upstairs. That's lovely. I'm glad you got the flower boxes done as well. It looks like there's something up there now. Hopefully that should help get some more bums on seats upstairs. Second problem. To win back Oscar's lovely. reputation by creating a midweek bargain. It's a small, close-knit town here. Nantwich. Yeah. So you've got to install confidence back in the locals, and now is the time to turn it around. £14, not too cheap. You can make money on £14 for two courses. And if we can do that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, with 30 customers a night, 90 covers, at 30 quid a head, you know, it's £4,500 in the till. No, I like that. And everything's fresh. Next problem, That's good food right. at a bargain price isn't worth mm -hmm. anything well, without good cool. service. We have to bond, we have to gel. There's not enough teamwork going on in here. Work with your customers and work with your chef. Stack of the tickets coming through, great understanding, and uh, make sure we've got great communication. If they get it right, then they'll also help to take pressure off the kitchen. One lamb, medium to well, one chicken and ribs, one portion of chips. Time Lenin gets off to a good start, but he seems a bit more stressed and sounds less confident. You right, Lenny? You've gone quiet on me. No, fine. But evidently, he wasn't. 
Later that evening, events took a terrible turn. Lennon collapsed. He's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance, and I hope the hell he's OK. It was a fucking shock. I need to know what's going on. It seems Lennon's drinking has aggravated his health problems. And I wish that I got told the truth when we first met. And I felt he's put an amazing brave face on and he's, he's stuck in there. But, you know, when I heard the problem last night with the drink and his medical condition mm. and the problem with his liver, you know, I, I was shocked on the, on the back of trying but to deal with that. Uh, I thought Lennon had t told you. I feel like you're not being honest with me. But I am, Gordon. Everything's, everything's hid from me. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know. And it seems even Maura isn't aware of the extent of his problems. Lenny? Hello. Fucking hell. How are you? Not too well. Yeah? Yeah. Am I pleased to see you? How are you feeling? Uh, better than oh. last night, anyway. Fucking hell, boy. You scared me last night. I'm just amazed that you didn't want to sort of share it with me early on, because I, 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 I would have rather known. Yeah. It was more embarrassment than anything. There was nothing to embarrass me. I just wish I knew when we first met that you had that problem. Well, and yes. you've got nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm sorry. Fuck all to be embarrassed about. That's your health fine. and your condition makes far more important than that restaurant, you know that? Yeah. Can't go around like this, I know that. And before he goes anywhere near a kitchen, yeah, he's got to get himself better and clearly start looking after himself. But before any of that takes place, the family I've got to start talking to each other so they can fucking help him. Using alcohol as a crutch in the kitchen is a problem that can't be ignored. To better understand Lennon's problem, I've contacted pioneering chef Michael Quinn. Um, thanks so much for coming over. Michael set up the Art Foundation to tackle the industry-wide problem of alcohol and drug abuse after he himself was toppled by the demon drink. Yeah. We had the perfect job, for fuck's sake. The first ever British chef to be crowned the chef de cuisine at the Ritz Hotel. Absolutely. When I left the Ritz, I was at the top of the tree and alcohol just completely took over my life. Yeah. I went from the Ritz eventually to living on the street. I slept on the bridges, in doorways. You know, I was in hospital with liver failure. I had the last rise from a Catholic priest. When, my, when that priest... That close? Yeah. Why do chefs today think it's part of a fucking rock and roll image to drink? Our business as chefs is a very tough... Uh, yeah. It's a tough business. The immensely long hours we do, yeah. the heat, and also that, 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 you know, you're almost part of an SAS squad, yeah, yeah. squad yeah. In, Martin, in the though. kitchen. Yeah. It's that work hard, play hard. We'll show the rest of the bastards how good we are. But one in ten cross that line. And if you cross that line into addiction, into yeah. becoming an alcoholic, you can never go back to social no. drinking. Can this guy continue to cook and deal with a problem at the same time? No. No. He needs to be separated. Willpower doesn't get you well. In order to recover, you need to surrender and admit defeat. And that is the step forward to freedom. Michael's an extreme case. But Lennon needs to take a lesson from this and nip his drinking habit in the bud before it's too late. We're all upset about Lennon, but tonight sees the launch of our new menu, and the show must go on. Everything on this fucking menu here is fresh. And the sad thing is, I wish Lenny was here to cook it. But I think what we do for tonight's service is owe this one to him. Yeah? I think that sounds like the first customers. Let's go. With Lennon out of action, it's bingo caller Les to the rescue, and he's nervous as hell. Right, Les, how are you doing? Uh, not so bad, not so bad. Good. You're sweating, yeah? Yes. Good, it's a healthy sign when you sweat. <laughs> so, you stand on the hot plate, you call out, and you tell me what you want doing. Gordon Ramsay's gonna be your fucking commie. Go easy on him, you're a little bit fragile. Okay. Yeah? Run it through your mind first. Yeah. And bingo. Bingo, yeah. Richard, Eyes down please. for a full house. Table six, cover seven. Three pate, two ribs, one broth, one asparagus. Yes, yeah, chef. Gently, nice and gently. Careful when you put in the bowl, please. Yeah, the idea is not to splash it everywhere, yeah? Yeah. Every time that's staying there, Les, you just fuck it up by letting it yeah. get stone cold. He's off to a shaky nice. start. But this is his first time running a stop, kitchen. Stop, stop, stop. Come on, Les. Fuck it, what do you want them to floss with a fucking clim film? Come on. Go, please. 
Give me a little toss. I'm sure you're good at tossing. Come on. Watch those eyebrows. Gordon shouts too much out. Go. One, no dumplings. Go. Maura's still not leading her team in the dying room. Shit food doesn't get tipped. Good food always gets tipped. They need to be inspired. Work the table. Charm them. Come on, Les. Happy? Yep. Good. There you go. Cross them off, please. Table nine. In the kitchen, things are looking up. Three fish cakes, two cabbage, one peas, three mash. Yes, sir. This is fantastic. Yeah. It's absolutely fucking amazing. Brilliant. Well done. But the one thing letting Les down is Maura's lack of discipline front of house. The last order, yeah, one of the girls forgot to take the main course out. And that's what I said earlier about how the diamond's really got to fucking wake up a little bit. It's not funny, sweetheart. No, you're not. What I'm trying to say, yeah. we have got to get it together. End of story. Yeah? Quickly. Service. The numbers are really coming in for Les tonight. Yeah. Everybody OK outside? Everybody's enjoying the food. Great. Kids are coming back clean. That's You're doing right. a good job, Les. Thank you very much. I'm not a great meat eater, but this is brilliant. It's lovely. I went for the ribeye steak, which was cooked superb. The food tonight was gorgeous. Really, really nice. Yeah. He's done a fucking good job. Everyone was expecting him to sink and to crack and to disappear and fuck off back to college, but uh, he's done himself proud. I think more importantly, he's done Lenny proud. The fact that everything's gone out brilliantly and smoothly, you know, and the fact that I've spent all day preparing it and from fresh, that's so why, why I became a chef, really. Good feedback, customers? The last tip we got was the £18.50. <gasps> £18.50? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. You know, some mistakes tonight that they're really a problem, but they're so easily sorted. Yeah. So. That's just communication, you know that? Yeah. You're not good at disciplining staff. Is that what you think? Uh, you show, you've proved to me. Mm. I've never heard you shout, never heard you tell anyone off, because when this business closes, they will go off and look for a new job. And if you're going to maximise on your dream, sweetheart, and keep this place open, you so, so, so have to get on top. Your business and your money. Before I go, I just want you all, for 30 seconds, to close your eyes. And Les is just going to read off some numbers. Give it to me, big boy. Eyes down, look in. Les is dead, number 10. <laughs> Two fat ladies, 88. All the legs, 11. <laughs> Anyway round, 69. All credit to him. So Les has pulled it off tonight. Fantastic. House. But he's only a novice. Good night. And Lennon needs rest and time to recover before he even considers stepping foot in a kitchen again. Dear, oh dear. If Moore is going to stand any chance of getting Oscars back on track, she needs to find a new chef. And fast. It's been a month since I spent a week at Oscars, and it was one hell of a week. What the hell was this for? The food was so bad, the customers came once, but never returned. Somebody's having a laugh at you. The head chef lacked respect for the place. I'd say get fucked. His mum, the owner, was at her wit's end. I just I can't carry on like this much longer. Lenin smoked and drank on the job. I've been here all day and I just wanted one drink. But we worked through it. We've sent out three tables beautifully. Don't start fucking up now. And the new Irish menu was looking great. The food tonight was gorgeous. Really, really nice. Yeah. But Lennon wasn't. He collapsed. He's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance, and I hope the hell he's OK. After a break, Lennon's back in the kitchen, and I'm here to find out how he's response. doing. Thank you. Uh, we got some colour on your face. You look brown. Oh, you I look... feel a lot better now. Yeah? Drink-wise, are you seeing someone? That's Yeah, I am, actually. I've been yeah. to my doctor, and I've been everything sorted out. A couple of bad days here and there, but uh -huh. um, the majority good. Most well, important thing, Lennon, you're, you're doing something about it. You know that. Because that's I not fair know. on you, and that's not fair on Mum, and it's not fair mm. on the restaurant. When are you having a drink? After service? Before service? What are you doing? Before, um, any time. Now, 99.9 after service. Possibly, sometimes, don't even bother. I just go home and get in my bed. Good. And I'll sit right now, make some menus, and just mess about at home, really. Are you eating properly? Oh, God, yeah, I'm eating. Like, I can't stop eating at the minute. Well, you're not exactly fucking fat, are you? Well, dear, dear, Len, turn around, let me show a proper tummy. Yeah, that's what you call a fucking triplet and big boy. Uh, he's fucking eating properly. Hello, Gordon. How are you, darling? I'm all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank How you are you? Much. Not too bad. Yes. Yes. Um, how's business? Um, well, my quiet tuition age of coming on now. Uh huh. Midweek. It's um, getting better. More importantly, Lennon. 
is he up to the job of actually running um, it full time? I am iffy about it. I am iffy. Not certain. No. 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 Oh, he's all right. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's drinking and uh, kitchens and stoves don't go together, do they? No, uh, lethal combination. Maura's keen to take the burden away from Lennon. She's lined up a potential new head chef. But Lennon's not happy about it. I mean, I've worked in my own restaurant um, since I was a child. I wanted to be my dad. Uh -huh. um, and now that it's here, I do have that fear that it's going to be taken away from me. Mm -hmm. No yeah, one's getting yeah, rid no, of it. I understand Fuck. what you're saying. Yeah, we're trying to think of a way forward so we can um, keep benefit, keep this place alive and, 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 and keep your mum's dream and her ambition. You cannot continue like this. You know that? It's going to kill you. And a new chef, I think, is a breath of fresh air. Uh, yeah. So can we kiss and make up and let's meet this fucking chef? <laughs> huh? Thank you. I love him to bits. Mark Warrington is a fully trained chef with an impressive CV. Oven's on. But can Oven's he cook? On. Come up with anything you wish. One dish is fine. Yeah? Is that that, kid? Come through. Um, well, it looks a little bit more fucking Chinese than it does to Irish to well, me. The fish is, but the rest of it. But the potatoes are Irish. Yeah. Uh, the fish is cooked nicely. I do like it. Fish is lovely. Yeah. Mm. It's quite interesting seeing you guys bonding there. Hmm? Um, good work, Mark. No problem at all. Yeah. No I thought problem that was... at all. Lennon, Lennon and me basically, we can bounce ideas off one another. Mm. What I've seen in the kitchen. Looks like we found our man. Mark starts his new job at Oscars next week. But tonight is Lennon's chance to shine. I can't fucking do anything in there if you still come and talk to me. Everything that you know is fresh. It's got to go out. Bit of a surprise for you tonight. I haven't told any of you. Oh, bollocks. What's yeah. happening now? I've got ten very important customers coming. It's the ten customers that are absolutely fuming the first night I had dinner here. Big fucking night. Now, on top of that, they're going to be presented with this. It's an Oscars restaurant loyalty card. And it's to inspire them to return to the restaurant. And on their sixth visit, they'll come as our guests. Look out for them. Yeah? This evening, Moore is hosting an Irish night. If it's going to run smoothly, the waitresses must be keen as well as green. And um, are you in control? Yes. Yeah? Because remember last time, I wasn't that impressed with the service, you know that? And tonight, I'm going to be all over the service, you know that? Like a rash. Yeah? Whose kitchen is this? Mine. Do you want me to stand back? Yes. If you yeah. don't mind. And uh, not interfere? Yeah. So I'll stand back. All right, let's dance. Yeah? Well, I don't know about fucking dancing. Right. I can moonwalk, but I can't fucking dance. I've seen nothing. I've got to be honest, you look like a rice right truck. Yeah. I'll dance that. The menu of Irish stew and pork and Guinness is exactly right for Oscar's new Irish theme. First order, patty soup and the garlic mushrooms, um, two fish cake, two stewed little veg, three potatoes. Off to a good start. Yep. Yes. And the restaurant's full, so the waitresses have got to give it their best. Just slow the girls down a little bit, get them walking a little bit gracefully, like ladies, yeah? Not like baby elephants. Lennon's food seems to be hitting the spot. hundred times better. The plates are consistently coming back empty. But I thought bingo caller Les might have shown a bit more pizzazz. Les, you're a big softie, you know that. Push him out of the way, take some pressure off him, and be strong. Big softies don't make good cooks. I don't want to fucking hear that you've turned into a fucking dinner lady. Yeah? <laughs> Or you're working for fucking Jamie Oliver. Yes? It's been a good night for Lennon, but I'm pleased he's got a chef to help him through. Maybe more as Irish Dream will come true after all. One last thing. 15 stone chefs with size 14 feet don't dance. I'm telling you, I can't dance. I can't dance. I'm not going to 
fucking dance. Come on, I can't dance. Oh, no, 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 babe. I'm 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 babe, I can't dance. I'm just a magic. I can't dance. Go on, you come and have just a quick... No, honestly, I can't. Just a wee move. I promise you now, honestly, I can't dance. I can't dance. Give me a kiss. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think I'll leave him to it. The Sandgate Hotel is perched on the gorgeous stretch of the Kent coast. It's 24 miles from France, but a million miles from being a good hotel and restaurant. The Sandgate Hotel. What a great spot. It's got 15 rooms and a covered in AA rosette for its food, and I'm checking in. First test of any hotel is the reception. Always a great sign of how it's run. Hello. Thank you. Sorry, are you you're on the phone? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Is it urgent? No. I'll tell him that I'm going. Yeah. Tell him he's a customer. Sorry. Uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye bye. We are room number four. Thank you. Three years ago, Lois and Peter Hamilton Slade pulled their life savings and bought the Sandgate. At the moment, this place is losing around two grand a week. So Peter has had to keep his engineering job while Lois runs the hotel and restaurant. You've obviously yep. run restaurants before? No. Uh, no. Never? Never. Never. Or small guest houses then? No. Never? Never. This Jeez. is our first, first effort. This is the restaurant. Oh, it's very small, isn't it? Yes. Huh? Very small. Lois has gone from selling perfume at Gatwick Airport to managing this small boutique hotel by the sea. And the food comes up through the stairs? No, it comes through here. OK. Dumb waiter. Yeah. Dumb waiter. A husband and wife team running a hotel and a dumb waiter. Bazoo! <laughs> From the restaurant, there. yeah, to the kitchen. Restaurant to the kitchen. And that must be a nightmare, no? It seems to work very well. Does it? Yeah. Extraordinarily, it's not just one restaurant. There's also a terrace barbecue, a bar, and Kent's first Japanese restaurant in the basement. It's a strange mix, but they do have one thing in common, no customers. How long can it survive? If we don't have a very good summer, or I don't think we'll get through the winter. And if the shit hits the fan and that doesn't take place and we have a crap summer, mm -hmm. um, what do you lose? Probably a quarter of a million. Hmm. Sometimes we've had comments that the food is inconsistent. I think that is a lot of the case when Stuart's not here. When Stuart's the head chef. head chef. The Japanese chef, where's he from? It's the same chef, Stuart. It's the same, same one. The same chef. We haven't got yes. a Japanese chef. But you've got a Japanese restaurant? Yeah. Yes. Oh, hello, how are you? Very well, thanks. And Sure. Stuart, 38, from Northumberland. He's been here for six months. It's his first head chef's job, but since he's got here, he started hearing voices. What's that? Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Is it like that all night? Yeah. How do you concentrate with that? Trying to ignore it as much as possible. Look it now. It's not driving around the bend. Yeah. Is that all of a table night? Oh, hello. Me, nine. Yeah. <laughs> hello. Can you fuck off and do some work? Four restaurants, 168 dishes, and one kitchen. Time to taste the food. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And there are the, the, the specials. The specials. Yes. And that's the a la carte. And the a la carte. Yeah. Can I have a look at the Japanese menu as well, please? Of course you can. Thank no you. Four in tonight, Saturday night for dinner. <laughs> Uh, so, just to let you know, we don't actually serve Japanese in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. just, just to let you know. Right, OK. Um, so, I'll go downstairs to my starter and come back here for the main course. Um, I need to see the, the, the food for the beverage manager, see what I can do for you. Food but, beverage manager? Yes. I mean, what a way of pissing customers off. Are you the food and beverage yep. manager? 
And sorry, first name? Kevin. Kevin. So you really want me to go downstairs and have my sushi there? That's what I've been told by the general manager. And who's that? That's Kirsty. Kirsty. Let me have a word with Kirsty. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's extraordinary. <laughs> I've spoken to the uh, restaurant manager. Yes. I've spoken to the food and beverage manager. Yes. I'm now talking to, to the me. general manager. Um, have you ever watched Salty Towns? Yes. Yeah. I saw the Japanese start, though. We've got three managers, two waitresses, but only four customers. The numbers just don't add up. <laughs> the rice is hard. What a cock up. But it's not the only one. Next, Chicken from the a la carte menu. Thank you. God, it looks like something out of a poor movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's enough to make your eyes water. Excuse me, waitress, I'm missing my bollocks. Um, oh. <laughs> it doesn't taste the chicken. It tastes of tomato. It's like sun dried tomatoes running through it. But they're so, so strong. Not for me. The Mackey Rolls. Who made them? I did. And how old are you? 18. 18. So you don't taste anything that this 18 year old cook? I can't physically taste everything within the kitchen or I'll end up like a, a big air balloon, I would have thought. I like the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, I like to, to obviously taste as much as I can. A head chef who doesn't taste his food is asking for trouble. I've never seen anyone cut it before. It's the only way to maintain control and keep up standards. Plenty of time. I think that the rice is underdone. Thank you. That's all. It's really important yeah. for you and I to obviously stay yeah. on the level. Like I say, you can, you can see I'm not Japanese. Clearly. I'm not trying to uh, dig a hole uh, and try and escape for, for your sushi. That was... Uh, I've still got in my teeth. Stuart doesn't want to cook Japanese food. The people of Sangay don't want to eat Japanese food. So why in the hell have they got a Japanese restaurant? This place doesn't know what it's doing, and that's clearly down to one thing, bad management. Lois has got more managers than the Ritz. But I can't work out who's running this place. And I've got a sneaky feeling no one else can either. The business is in danger of closing. I don't think you actually know how dire the situation is. The amount of management and the amount of staff in such a small place I've never seen in my entire life. You know that. I've never been so confused with supervisors and managers and head receptionists. You're running this hotel like a 350 bedroom, five star deluxe. And the most important worry is no one seems to be controlling it. I've come up with an exercise to try and find out who is in charge. Drop this stone in the bucket of the person you think is in control of the Sandgate Hotel. The whole organization. The whole organization. Oh dear, he's gone past all the managers and ignored oh. Lois. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Next, Luca, the restaurant manager. Surely he must know. He's just picked the head receptionist. Next up is Kevin, the food and beverage manager. Can have more stuff. Can you have more stones? Yeah, everybody yeah. should be running it. That's the point. Everybody should be running it? Yeah, it should be run as a group. That's, That's what I'm business. trying to get through now. That's the problem. Everybody is running it, and there's no one controlling it. Okay. The voice from the top. Yeah. Thank you. And you hit the nail on the head. That's what's exactly fucking happening. Everybody's trying to run it, and they're not doing their own jobs. So, interesting. We're all here now, and there's five of you that have got stones in your buckets. So, already, there's a conflicting message. If this business is to survive, Lois needs to take command of it. She's got a few stones, but she's got no bollocks. If she doesn't grow a pair, the hotel is going to be washed up. The Sangay Hotel in Kent has lost £33,000 in the first four months of this year. 
But while Rome burns, Lois and Peter, the owners, seem determined to eat, drink, and be merry. Meal after meal after meal. My brief when I started was it's run like Lois and Peter's living room. And that's how they wanted it. That's basically what I was told. What? Run it as if it's their lounge? Basically. Running a hotel and restaurant is not the same as eating and drinking in one. Lois and Peter bought a dream. Now they need to wake up to the fact that it's a business, not a second home. Day three at Sandgate Towers, and a chance to see the terrace barbie. Fucking hell. Hard the day for a fucking barbecue. I feel like I'm a fucking car boot sale. Stuart's worked in some good kitchens in his career, but they get him to set up a portable barbie. It's heartbreaking. You don't get any customers today. For I will. Sake. Size of that fucking thing. Surely they can't make their head chef suffer anymore. A kitchen? <laughs> kitchen, are you there? Are we all set? Uh, give us uh, oh four minutes on a bison garnish, please. <laughs> Where's that to, Calais? This place is like a jigsaw, but none of the pieces fit. Strange setup. So he's out there on the barbecue, and you're left to run the kitchen. Yeah. Fucking hell! You're 20 years of age. You're 18 years of age. I mean, how come you got all that responsibility? And what happens when it's busy? Oh, yeah, shit. Who would put someone who's clearly a good chef in charge of a barbecue? Time to find out from the manager. But which one? Kirsty, right, the general manager, is Lois's daughter-in-law. Right. Before coming to Britain, she worked in restaurants in her native New Zealand. The barbecue, how would you describe that? Um, my aim was for a kiwi barbecue. And I thought that. <laughs> that sort of Salads. territorial kiwi beach life. Something like that, um, yeah. But, sweetheart, we're not in fucking Auckland. I we're know. in Sandgate. The lack of focus in this place is astounding. Lois hasn't even got her flagship fine dining restaurant under control. The majority of the complaints that come through are normally on your day off. Have you ever eaten in the restaurant? No. Because if the complaints are going on when you're not here, you've got to see what they're serving in the dining room so you yeah. can really do something about it properly. Yeah. Yeah. and identify. Are we too complicated? Is the menu too big? Are they inexperienced? Do we need to simplify it? What do, what do I need to do as a head chef? You're the food and beverage manager. Have you ever eaten up here? No. How can you relate to your customer's experience if you're not experienced at the same time? Go upstairs, yep. order. Yep. I think you'll find something very interesting going on there. Yep. <laughs> Kirsty hasn't worked at the sharp end of the business for about eight months. So today, she's going to waitress. I don't know what's on and what's off, but I'm sure you do. Stuart's number two in the kitchen is 21-year-old Johnny. Hello? So what's going first, Johnny? Uh, I'm going to send this barbecue first, and then the starters. The bread's just gone up for the two, but I can't find anyone to take it out for the lift yet. Oh. Is it always like this? Yeah. Johnny runs the kitchen two days a week when Stuart's off. Yeah. This yeah. is my chance to see how he copes. Come on, guys, that's ten minutes, so it's place to be there, yeah? We're fucking around with the garnish. They're a young yeah. team to be cooking such elaborate food. Yeah. And just to add to it, Johnny, they ordered it over one hour ago. Yeah? Yeah. Let's get it out, guys. Come on. I'm not going to allow you to send them. This is really important for you, you know that, from a personal point of view. Because you've got to go all the way up to the top in this fucking industry, not serving shit like that, big boy. No. And all you're doing by serving that shit is... No, nearly. Hey, destroying the place. And that's just on a fucking burger. And I know you can do better than that, you know that? I know I can do better. There you go, so fucking do it. Yeah. There are only nine customers in for lunch, but it's well over an hour before Stuart and Kevin get their mains. Is that cool? That bell's right, isn't it? Can't work it up here. Did you get that I cancelled my starter? Yes, I'm Yeah. Unfortunately, Kevin and Stuart aren't the only unhappy customers. Johnny, table nine have popped off. They've gone. That's the table that had no starters, went straight to the main courses. Where's the ticket gone? In the bin. Why have you put it in the bin? I didn't, but that's where it's ended up. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! This is one of the worst lunch services I've ever seen. Johnny's tried his best, but the real culprit is clear. 
It's Stuart's food. It's just far too complicated. Certainly been educational, to say the least. Stuart's had a shock upstairs too. I never thought I would be so, so on par. I actually walked out. You walked out? Yeah. Fucking hell, why did you walk out? Because I've seen someone else eating my desserts that I've been waiting for 35 minutes. A head chef walking out of his own restaurant. This place has sunk about as low as it can go. Morning. How are you? Stuart's seen firsthand what's wrong upstairs. I think the best people to tell him what's wrong downstairs are his own brigade. But I think the young chefs like this soft-hearted Geordie so much, they've been too afraid to pipe up in case they hurt his feelings. It's time they told their boss a few home truths. So whoever catches the bass today, as you catch that bass, you turn around openly and tell Stuart something. You've got a lot to say, haven't you? What happens if I catch you one? Well, <laughs> who, who, who can I cry to? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking me, big boy. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. Here comes, here Come to daddy. The bass. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, oh. Round of applause. Whee. More important, what you got to say? All right, Stu. Quickly, Luke. because Luke's in. You've got lovely mini butt. There's too much of it. Thank you. Oh, well, done, Luke. Time to Wait. Here, well done, Luke. What have you got to tell Chef? I just think that the menu's nice and that there's just, I think there's too many garnishes, really, for the dishes. No problem, man. Thanks for telling us. That's, that's all it is, really. At 38, Stuart's old to have just got his first head chef's job. Well and done, I think he's desperate to impress. If we simplify it, I think we can get the taste a lot better and we can get the stuff looking so much better instead of having to try and rush it out all the time. I just don't like the service being manic because I know that I can do better myself and I know the rest of us can. Yeah. <laughs> Great. They're starting to enjoy themselves. Team spirit's vital to a good kitchen. Nice one, huh? Yes. Yes. Well done, Johnny. Two of the biggest fish so far. <laughs> the only one pissed off is me. Four hours on the English Channel and I didn't catch a thing. Sangate is twinned with Songat, a French town 24 miles across the Channel. But instead of seeking inspiration from France, Lois and Kersey have got the chefs cooking food from New Zealand and Japan, 6,000 miles away. <laughs> My plan right. is to bring them home. See, Bass, you're not going to get any better, any fresher quality ingredients than that. It's on your doorstep. And that's what I want you to take advantage of. Stuart, sea bass dish on the a la carte menu has 15 ingredients, which is why the boys struggle so much with it. I'm going to show them a simpler version with just five ingredients. And then just let the knife do the work. I'm sure. In. Back on the stove. I think what I'm trying to do is just show you how easy it can, but one person can do this, narrow down the complexity of it, and it can be done within three or four minutes. You know that? Yeah? See, Bass? And the dishes can be just as exciting with less on there because we're concentrating on the sea bass being hot, the dish being less complex, and flavour. Lois has been guilty of putting unrealistic demands on Stuart. No chef with a small team can cook 168 uh, dishes right. really well. Uh, We've got to convince her and Peter that less is more. The sea bass has won them over, but there's bad news. We sadly had a letter this morning to say that we've lost our AA rosette. Uh, have you got the letter with you? I have. Sorry. It was for the food guide. Right. One AA rosette is awarded for food cooked with care and skill. But forced to cook for four restaurants, Stuart has slipped below that standard. It's a kick in the bollocks mm. for any chef. There's no two ways about that. But in a way, it's a clean start. We turn the page, we make it less complex, and we go again. We 
haven't got long to turn this place around, and I'm worried. I don't know if the big friendly giant will be able to pick himself up from this one. Bad news, mate. Just lost the rosette. Where's that? It's gone. They've taken it away. I'm gutted. What can we do? It's a kick in the teeth. It's a, it's a bullet to the heart. If Lois isn't careful, it won't just be Stuart's professional pride down the pan. Less is more on the plate and in the hotel. We need to simplify everything so what's left comes sparkle. The weakest link is the Japanese restaurant. How's it going? Segoi. Up and down. It's costing more to staff than it's making. Last week, it took just £290. Um, I'm personally worried about it. Um, what about you? That's uh, too uh -huh. I think we're in love with the idea mm. more than we are with the success of the business. Mm -hmm. And my idea is to close it mm -hmm. and to stop hemorrhaging money. What would you suggest we did with it? Here, mm. I think you've got a perfect room for a private dining, right. um, an overspill from the restaurant. That's a good idea. It's a fantastic idea. And I think whether he's got the bollocks to tell you or not, I'm going to tell you, mm. he's not very comfortable cooking it. Right. He's not a fucking Japanese chef. He's a Geordie. I put the food back on the road to recovery and got rid of that stupid Japanese. But front of house is still a shambles. Hello, when, when did you book? Uh, when we arrived this evening. Oh, OK, no problems. Right, I do have some space for you. OK, but I don't have you on my list. I'm sorry. Sorting okay. out the chaotic customer service is too much even for me. Would you like to take a seat? Basil thought he wouldn't like it, but what this place needs is a Frenchman. Fuck me. Am I happy to see you? Uh -huh. Are you well? I'm very well. Yeah, I'd like to introduce you to Jean-Baptiste. He's um, my mate of from Claridge's. Jean-Baptiste is in charge of 70 waiters. If there's anyone who can help Lois organise the restaurant, it's him. Um, right, so let's have a look at the, um, the dumb waiters. Area. He'll take control upstairs yeah. while I help Stuart keep things ship shaped downstairs. Where the food comes up yep. from the kitchen and to the restaurant. So the customer's going to hear the waitresses talking, the restaurant manager talking. And the buzzer also sort of, there you go, goes right through the dining room. There you go. That, when the first, or any of the call... Within minutes of arriving, Jean-Baptiste bans the intercom system. From now on, the waiters will have to go downstairs and talk to the chefs face to face. Hello, how are you? Even the basics aren't looked after here. Luca, the restaurant manager, hasn't got enough cold water for lunch. Yeah, because you, you're going to run out of water very quickly, my friend. Huh? Oh, no. With, uh, this one, uh, you got two bottles of water. Yeah, but what I would do, I would give them tumblers with ice and lemon. And what about if you didn't want any ice and lemon? They're too warm. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately. It's a fucking disgrace, you know? Unfortunately. How are you going to do that? Hey, Luca, Luca, those glasses, they're, they're fucking dirty. Look at that. Uh, this is what we need to change, Luca. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, we have to be customer oriented, OK? Front of house, I've had absolutely no leadership or quality control from Lois. Well, of course, fair that I take the menu. You are the owner, OK? Mm? You got a restaurant manager, got some waiter I to bring the menu, OK? okay. While you're here, you're here to be here, facing the customers. Mm. Welcome, OK? Mm. Welcome, home, you know? welcome home, you know? This is exactly what no, I wanted to but do. Welcome home. <laughs> the first check is in. You're on. Yeah. Not too long. Clear face to face communication like this should cut out all the wrong orders and misunderstandings. Okay, that wasn't difficult, was it? Excellent. What's it like having the tickets in the kitchen now, in your hands? On control. You feel it? Yeah. I can spend a little yeah. bit more time googling which is what I'm best at. That's fucking banned, guys. Look, hello. Yeah? No one touches that fucking thing. Okay? You need to pick up the bread and the butter now. So who's going to do it if not? Give it. Who's going to do it? Uh, Him. So the customer, the customer, the customer. They're working here. So what do you mean they're working here? The staff is coming in like that? A member of staff ignoring Lois and heading for the bar, and she hasn't batted an eyelid. What's going on? You're the fucking owner. Exactly. He did not even say hello to you. Can you no. believe that? No. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. 
It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a bad organization. It's a lack of communication, a lack of uh, team, team spirit, team leader. Uh -huh. it's, nobody knows what they're doing. Um, the, uh, the, the, the waiter is managing the, the owner. The owner is, doesn't know what she's doing. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's a fucking mess. It's a mess. Yes. Jean Baptiste has helped reorganize the restaurant. But he's also uncovered the ultimate symptom of everything that's wrong with Lois's business. Staff are allowed to drink on the premises. I need to get to the bottom of this. They spend a lot of money in. They spend at the over bar. £2,000 a month in the bar. £2,000 a month? Mm. Fuck me. Mm. 500 quid a week on staff drinks. That's what they spend. Have you become dependent on that? Possibly. I guess to a degree, we sat down and looked at, you know, how much we were earning off of them at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, it reduces the salary bill. It's even worse than I thought. Because how on earth are you going to get the message across when you're treading on eggshells to not upset them because they're going to be spending £2,000 a month in the bar? Fucking hell. I've never heard anything so pathetic in all my life. Everyone's taking the piss. And maybe there is an advantage of having too many staff because they're spending £2,000 a month in the fucking bar drinking. And clearly, that's keeping the business afloat. The Sangay Hotel in Kent is in serious trouble. It's got a great location and a great chef. But an owner who hasn't got a clue how to run a business I'm in the midst of trying to rescue it. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! In just two days' time, we're relaunching the restaurant with a French flavour. We're holding an oyster-eating competition against a French team from Songhouse. But I've discovered that owner Lois and her manager, Kirsty, are getting the basics wrong. They allow their staff to use the bar as a common room which is a surefire way to drive your customers away. It is our fault we have done it wrong. I do, I can absolutely see it that we have done it wrong. Because it's building up, it's getting more and more familiar. There are more and more drinking going, and sometimes people, there are so many staff, the customers can't get to the bar. The staff are spending over 24 grand a year on booze and fags, but I'm putting a stop to it now. Once you've finished your shift, I'm afraid you cannot come and sit in the bar and drink. Now, that has huge implications in this company. I think you all know that. That is massive. This business is not run for staff, and the owners are no longer going to depend on you guys putting money in behind the bar. And secondly, you've got no idea of the conflicting messages it's sending to the customers. And you can't serve a member of the public and then go and sit in the same bar and drink with them. It's not good, never seen it in my entire life, and it's got to stop. This is not a drinking hole. This is not a socialising gaff. Can I just ask whether, when you set staff out to drink, does that mean their day's off as well? Why does anyone want to come here on their day off? Let me tell you why. Because it's too fucking easy. Let's go down the sand gate, let's sit there and get bladdered, let's sit on the terrace, let's sit... It's too comfy. Haven't you got homes to go to? It's just become too convenient. I think we can all agree that. Then when there's arses to be kicked the next day and disciplinary to take place, no one wants to listen to the owners or Kirsty because we've sort of had a chat and had a drink over it and nothing's got done. If this place has got any hope of surviving and going from strength to strength to identify the customers are more important than the staff, that has to stop. Cheers. Let's get back to work. Yeah. We're going to have to be very careful as well because, mm. you know, there is a tendency to come mm. in here and, you know, Lars and Peter meet up in here at the end of the day and, you know, have a drink together. We, I guess to a degree we're going to have to lead by example. At last, someone's talking about leading. It's not Lois, but I think we're getting somewhere. I'm going to have to have a cigarette, Mark. Huh? But I'm still worried about Stuart. Since he lost the AA rosette, his morale has hit rock bottom. To have any chance of pulling off the relaunch, I need the Geordie giant back from the dark side. Regarding the accolade, you know, fucking get it back you know, and, and, and get it back properly without trying to cook 168 dishes. Yep. Get it back cooking a menu that you can control. Why do you shout so much? Get my point over, man. <laughs> Fuck it now. I'm going to help him devise a new menu that's right for a seaside hotel, focusing on fresh fish with a French twist. If I came to sit in the bar, or even sit in the restaurant here, I'd love 
a bowl of milk for it here. Yeah. I'd love a platter of freedom air. Yeah. I'd die for it. Do you know why? Because yeah. I can relate to the food because there's the fucking sea. Oh, it's ideal, like you say. I mean, all, you know, and, and, and price wise as well. Yeah. Uh, ideally located to, to buy fresh fish for basically next to nothing. Oh, just a moment. And wait and see this whole kitchen just waft with the smell of bully bays. Yeah. yeah. The frogs will be swimming across that channel to get in here. Yeah? What about um, a nice, big, sumptuous, rich pear yeah. tatan? Pears from Kent? Bring yeah. a little bit of fucking England meets France. France meets yeah. England. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the sugar? There. Oh, right. Oh, Johnny. Just smell that there. The cardamom seeds. That's lovely. Okay. Mmm. As well as a new menu, we also need new customers. So, Saga. The biggest yeah. employer in town, with nearly a thousand workers just around the corner okay. from the restaurant, is Saga. Look, sort of Armed with two dozen oysters, we've come to turn them on for fresh seafood. Okay, here we go. Hey. They're very nice. Yeah, delicious. Anything happening downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in your tummy, are you just, feeling yeah. sort of warm and yeah. <laughs> sexy? <laughs> All the produce is local fish that you can mm. see from the Sangia to Hotel. The same it's with gorgeous. the oysters, the same with there. the crab, That's beautiful. The chips. It's good to start talking about the other things on the menu. Yeah. The idea of just getting them to sort of up to speed with the oysters is for you then to sort of let them know about everything else going on. Yeah. yeah. It's essential the restaurant attracts locals who are still around when the tourists go home. These are the people who will keep the business afloat in the winter. Can I ask a question? Yeah. How's your sex life? Perfect. <laughs> let me get you some oysters. <laughs> Straight down. That's it. Nice. Lovely. And there's an added bonus for you. <laughs> We've got the most amazing bedrooms upstairs if things are going to plan. <laughs> Word of mouth is the best publicity you can get in the restaurant trade. And hopefully, we just set a thousand tongues wagging. Tuna, small or large? It's on the menu of two sizes. But Lois's front of house team are still flapping. She treats them like her extended family and seems afraid to discipline them. It's got to change. And I've been racking my brains out all fucking week on how Lois can get really strong with her staff. And I've got a good idea. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Gina, just one of them, one of them. Not all fucking ten. <laughs> no, that's gonna be terrible. You greasy fucker. Uh, <laughs> Lovely. Assertiveness training. Chef style. The photos. Really tell him exactly what you think of him. Luca, I think you're an extremely nice person and you're an asset to the place. Oh dear. She's more like mum than matron. Like I own it. You have got to have respect for me and I don't think you have. Yeah. I think with him you've got to get really to the point. Mm. So I'm not going to put that there. Mm. Luca, every time I want something, you do it. Do as you're told or look for a new fucking job. You don't have to say fuck him. It's a chef's thing. Mm. Fire away. Luca, it's time that you learnt. Mm -hmm. I cannot put up with you interrupting me all the time and not doing what I ask you. Mm -hmm. You work for me. I do not work for you. Good. Much better. Chef, every time I speak to you, you interrupt me. It's absolutely gobsmacking. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly bad manners. Kevin. You'll come steaming in and interrupt and start talking over the top of me. Do not do it. Now we're getting somewhere. I need respect from everybody. Listen to what I'm telling you. And for Christ's sake, get on with it. Good. Do you feel any better? Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now what are you doing for real? Yep. Yeah. The, um, real thing. the real thing. We have a quick word with Luca. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Tell him okay. what you need. And uh, tell him how important this is to you. Yes. And how he does his top. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to do it for you? No. Let's go. Absolutely. Whoever you wish. When I said to you last night that Cynthia was to do the ladies in the bar, immediately you said to me. Cynthia mustn't do the ladies in the bottles. If it's like me and Kevin coordinating the function, then you come in 
breaking in without instructions. It's going to be too many people in. giving instructions. That's what I'm here to do. I have to control it, Luca. Is Basically, that... in a nutshell, just do as she says. Sure. And if you've got an issue with it, talk to her after nice service. Yeah. We're in the middle of service. Do as she says. Yeah. Okay. I must, must be heard mm -hmm. and taken okay. notice of. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice one. Thank you. Lois has finally discovered her inner chef, and not a moment too soon. Do as I say. End the story. In a few hours' time, we relaunch the restaurant. And this menu, yeah, is clear, straightforward. It can be eaten in the restaurant, it can be eaten on the terrace, and it can be eaten in the bar. 60 of the area's most influential people are coming for lunch so the chefs will need to pull together like a team. I've got here, for you guys, the most amazing jackets. Spotless. Guess what we're going to do before we put those jackets on? Oh, no. Go on. Oh, we're going in the sea. We're going in the sea, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a quick dip before lunch. Who's up for it? <laughs> Come on, you can all do it in a fucking shower. <laughs> With great seafood on the menu, the first to arrive, oh, yeah. naturally enough, Bien are the French. Merci. Welcome to the Sandgate Hotel. Merci. This is the team that the chefs are taking on in the oyster shucking competition after lunch, and it looks like they've all been in training. So this is the patron, sorry, Louis, excuse me. Enchanté. One tuna, large portion. Yeah, yeah chef. Yeah. One cock of van. Yeah. With the first orders in, the kitchen swings into action. That looks beautiful, that. Very nice. It's, hat. it's all in the hat, yeah? What a transformation from a week ago. The food's simple, the chefs yeah. are calm, collected and working as a team. <laughs> but for Lois and her waiters upstairs, it's a different story. Excuse me. It's going pear-shaped. I've never seen them so far in the shit upstairs, you know that? All my guys have came in early. They're crack of dawn. We had time to go for a swim. <laughs> we had time to go for a swim before service. But I tell you what, I, tell, I know who's swimming now. <laughs> huh? I think they're about to sink, don't you? <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I need to find out what's happening and stop the rot. Another wrong order means more work for the chefs. Yeah, we've got to cook the salmon again, though, haven't we? Yeah, we had one. It's only a table, table two. If this is table six, we can understand. But what, one table two is ordered uh, wrong, no, big boy. Come on. I know, it was the noise. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Where is it? Glass everywhere. Let me just start the table again. And to top it all, the general manager is having a drink on the terrace. And Lois hasn't stopped her. What is going on? It's 1.30 coming up. Um, just out of interest, why can't Kirsty jump in and give us a hand on such a big day? No disrespect, but having drinks with her mates. You know, a day like today, what kind of message is that serving? Kirsty, can you help out? No one's taking care of the terrace. One table's already left because they wouldn't have their order taken. We just need general help. Yeah? I'll just find out from Lars where she wants me. It's an absolute and nightmare. And these poor men out here still waiting for their main course. Yeah. I'd go and chase that one. Oh. Everyone should be hands on fucking deck now, you know that? Yeah. A week ago, it was pandemonium down here and fuck all happening upstairs. Now, it's pandemonium upstairs and everything's happening here, you know that? Two oysters natural, one oysters deep fried, two prawns. Lois is finally getting control front of house. She's cracking the whip with her staff and getting them working like a team. For the first time in a week, the customers are being put first. Formidable. It's absolutely formidable. What an improvement. <laughs> it's very nice to see more fish on the menu, particularly as we're near to the sea. I've enjoyed it very, very much. I love all my rivière on both sides of the channel. <laughs> that is only what is left because, come on, being French, we have tuck out of it. 
be like a millionaire. <laughs> Stuart and the chefs have pulled it off. Oh, thanks to these guys as well. Now they face the French team in the oyster eating competition. Special events that get the restaurant noticed and talked about are a great way to bring in more custom. Welcome to the first ever Sandgate versus Songat oyster shocking competition. Yeah. 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 Which, within five minutes, you're going to have to open and eat as many oysters as possible. Go! Ali! If Lois and Peter can make this an annual competition, it will help improve Anglo-French relations and do their restaurant a power of good into the bargain. One minute to go! Three, two, one, stop! 28 for the French! Excuse me, please, and Peter, uh, for the I'm Sungate really English, I'm how many, please? I'm afraid we only did 7, 7 to 6. 7 to 6! Well done! Sungate, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Stuart. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, she's trying to drag me back to France. Today's been a great launch pad for the restaurant. Now it's up to Lois to take the place forward and run it like a business, not like her living room. Stay on top of them, yeah? I saw it a week ago thinking, God, you know, you may own the place, but you're not running it. Yeah. You've got to run it and own it. Mm. It's a big difference. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and don't fall in love with it, because it's a job. Correct. Yeah, you've got to keep at them, and on them, and at them, and on them, and at them. But for my money, Stuart's the hero. When he lost his rosette earlier this week, I thought I'd lost him, but all credit to him, he's pulled it round. You deserve to make it yours. Yeah. Stick to what you know yeah. you can do properly yeah. and stand firm on that one. Definitely. Hey, you still look like Jimmy now. <laughs> um, Was it the nose or the accent? Or... The accent. The accent. Can you sing? Yeah, yeah. Give us a song. Wild beer and spirit <laughs> all the time. They've got six weeks until I come back. I hope they're still singing then. She's always on my mind. At the beginning of the summer, I spent a week at the Sangate Hotel. God, it looks like something out of a poor movie. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't work out if it was a comedy or a tragedy. Oh, four minutes on a bison garnish, please. I simplified the food, got the owner to run the place like a business. I must, must be heard and take a notice off. Okay. And made a splash at the relaunch. Six weeks later, I'm back. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Lois at the helm, Hi, that's a good sign. Hello, Gordon. Are you well? I'm well, thanks. Yes. yes. Here's one I caught earlier. <laughs> Present for Stuart. Uh, good to see you both. Very I'm nice. sure he'll be delighted. <laughs> um, is he downstairs? Yep, he is. Yeah. What do you mean, fucking hell? That's not oh, a nice good. reception. How are you Very doing? well, thank you. How are you? Very well, huh? How are you? Yeah, good. We put that in the fridge and we'll have a uh, we'll have a chat about that later. The last time I was here, the staff was spending two grand a month in the bar, and before I banned it, Stuart was one of the worst offenders. What have you been spending your money on per month that you're not spending upstairs in the bar? Decided to go out there and have a little baby, man. No. Yeah. That's fantastic news. Yeah. So being spared in <laughs> too much time at home. <laughs> See what happens? Huh? That's what's, great what's... news. In the kitchen, he's got a new system to tell right. the waiters upstairs oh, yeah. when the food is ready. It's explain, a, it's, explain it to me. It's a vibrating system. A vibrating system. So if it's uh, waiter number one, yeah. we'll then press the number one button. Gives them a little tickle. All the waiters are working with vibrators. Fucking it? hell. So, that's fantastic. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and any good. waitresses need more sort of jigs than any of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, they don't, if it doesn't come out, I just give them all the tickle. Like. <laughs> <laughs> One thing very interesting yeah. is that um, the customers that 
come now yes. are not the people that we had before. They're totally different. It's been an amazingly Which is great good news. week. Yeah. Uh, really fantastic. It's great to see Lois and Peter moving the business forward with new customers and new ideas. Um, We've had the till move from downstairs when we closed. When, when you were here, when we closed down, we had someone do all the rewiring and put this good. till in here. But crucially, how's the new menu doing? I don't know if the boys told you, but on Friday, we sold out of seafood. 40 covers on Tuesday and huh? 50 covers on Wednesday, so... Mm -hmm. um, you know, selling out of seafood, you know, we never used to do that. Can the business survive? If it continues going on like this now, yes. Since I was last here, turnovers nearly doubled to 14 and a half grand a week. So they must be getting something right. Good. Ooh. Time to find out for myself. I have a look at the um, bar menu, but I'm not going in there to be. Oh no, you can eat in here. It's fine. Oh, wow, well, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Good. A big breakthrough. Christ, I'm in the same place I was a month ago, and Lois is outside um, as a host, checking customers coming through, um, arranging the table plan, and um, almost slightly, slightly looking concerned, which mm, I like to see her worried. That means she's moving around. So. I think it's going much better. It's much calmer. The whole system is working. The first time we came to ETA, he was, he was chewing on raw sushi rice. I want to see if the big bad Geordie has regained his passion for food. So I've challenged him to cook me something special with my sea bass. It's all right. <laughs> I well, it's more successful than the last day. Huh? No, just the face. Let me ask you a question first. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the sea bass? Well, I thought it was following along the themes. Uh, straightforward, not complicating the flavours. I yeah. think if I was to have that dish on the menu, uh, I think it would probably fly out the door. I thought the dish was um, absolutely fantastic. Yeah? I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Um, and that's the best dish I've eaten at the Sangate Hotel since I've been here. <laughs> Next time I see you, yeah. you can have a baby girl or a baby boy. Uh, you, know, you know what it is? Go on. You know that day where I had that, that oyster eating contest? Yes. I think, yeah. <laughs> that was the night, was it? I think it might have been like. That sea bass was memorable. What more could you ask? Right. And don't tell him. I didn't really catch it. I bought it from the fucking fishmonger. <laughs> I really think this can work, you know that. They've got all the ingredients, and I think they can really put this place back on the map and be a great seaside restaurant. It needs a lot of hard work and understanding that your customers are fucking important. Nothing more than that. When the gondola opened in 1968, its Italian owners brought the glamour of Venice to Dowdy Derby. And it instantly became the place to be seen. You couldn't get into this place unless you booked two or three weeks in advance. The place was packed, had wonderful atmosphere, and it had a reputation then of being the best restaurant in Derby. Daniela celebrated her 21st birthday at La Gondola. She even got married in the restaurant. She loves it so much, six months ago, she bought the company. But just what had she bought? Oh, fucking hell. Marbella in Derby, fucking hell. The size of it. A 125-seater restaurant with a 21-bedroom hotel attached. A big undertaking, especially if the state of the outside is anything to go by. Fuck me, even the gondola looks fucked. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Ramsey. Gordon. Gordon. And? Daniela. Daniela, how are you? Fine. <laughs> all Good. the better for seeing you. Uh, Thank you for coming to uh, our Not at all. God, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's like going back in time. It is, it's a bit of a time warp. Um, how old is it? Um, nearly 40 years old. Really? Even the floorboards are... I know, creaky. Creaking as well. Fantastic. Anyone under there? Uh, no, there's the wine cellar around. Oh, okay. My lovely old wine, so yes, Fantastic. we don't fall through 
It's Friday night, and at 8 o'clock, and I can hear a few clinking plates in there, but um, the place sounds empty. How many's booked for dinner? Four. Four? Yes, a table of four, and that's all. And that is our problem. We have this beautiful restaurant, and it's empty most of the time. One question I've got to ask. Why the hell did you buy it if you've never run a restaurant or a hotel before? Well, when my mother died and I went through a divorce, it was the one thing one night that kept me going. And I also thought, that's what I'll do. I'll buy La Gondra. And yeah. all night long, I just dreamt of this place. Oh, some customers coming now. Sorry. OK. Yep. Good night. Good night. Did you enjoy dinner? Yes, thanks. Excellent. Yep. Damn, I think they left their teeth on the table. From its 70 chandeliers to its plastic flowers, the restaurant is well and truly past it. <laughs> it's like stepping back in time in It here. is. And I wondered whether should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns and come back to it. I mean But it'll be too late if the business goes down the pan first. Everywhere you look, um, it's like a flashback to the 70s. Even the food sounds, you know, that dated smoked salmon, honeydew melon with port, warm brie with a tomato tart. The menu is massive, nearly 100 dishes, and very few of them actually Italian. Um, I'd like to start with the um, spaghetti bolognese, please. Spaghetti bolognese. Because yeah, the food's <gasps> Italian. Yes. So it's fresh spaghetti. Thank you. I've ordered the simplest starter on the menu, but it seems to be taking a very long time. Get him on some fucking proper spaghetti now. He's going to give the fucking ancient shit that was in there. Gareth, 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 you you do it. Don't worry. The problem in the kitchen. That's that's been pretty good to order. So. All level. Nice. Thank you. He apologised about the weight because he said the pasta was cooked to order, which, if you only got four <laughs> customers in the evening, fucking right, it's going to be cooked to order. <laughs> Big portions. For a starter, £6.50 is huge. I'm mounting a spag bowl and a salmon main course to come. All for £6.50. No wonder they're losing money. Right, Gareth, see if you can get a tender lobster soup open without me seeing you. I've just seen something very dodgy, the silver serving vegetables. And even in 1999, silver service of vegetables like that was 25 years too late. Thank you. The salmon is also massive, and like the restaurant, a bewildering trip through time. As the years have progressed, I've just added more onto it. <laughs> oh, fuck it. It's 1975, let's stick a muscle on there. Ah, oh, fuck. It's 1980, let's stick some Monge 2 on there. Do you know what? It's 1985, Ratatouille's in, stick some Ratatouille on there. And it's 1990, welcome back, the roast spud. Quantity, not quality. A classic 1970s mistake. And surprise, surprise, How are you? head chef Steve right, Strawn well, nice started here in 1975. Good, good, good. I've never seen mm. such massive portions in my entire life. Right. Doesn't need the prawns, doesn't need the um, mussels. It's described on the menu as that, so yep. I've, I've got to follow through with what's on the menu. But I mean, you've been here for that length of time. You could change that and just do a simple poached salmon dish without all I that. I could do. I could do. Yeah. You know, there's two ways in this industry. You move with the times, mm -hmm. or the times moves you. And unfortunately, you've been caught in a time warp. In my experience, when a restaurant's been stuck in a rut for so long, rot starts setting in. Staff get really lazy. They start cutting corners, and I really need to discover exactly what's going on here. Today there's a 70th birthday party in the restaurant. Functions are the lifeblood of La Gondra, but there's not even enough of those to stop it dying on its ass. At the moment, for this year, I've got nine weddings booked. But really, we should be aiming for about 30 weddings a year, and then that would be very nice. With 25 covers, it's a chance for me to see how the kitchen copes when they have more than four people through the door. I've done four or four. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes in, the kitchen's already in trouble. They've run out of fresh tuna steaks. You know what you're going to have to do? Plan B. I don't know what they're going to do. It's called Plan B. Do you know about Plan B? 
Plan B. Plan B. Plan B. No. no, I don't. Uh, what's plan B when he's at home? Tins. Oh, tins. That's what it means. Lies. Tin tuna, banged out on limp lettuce. My gran would have been ashamed to have served that. It doesn't feel like a kitchen. No energy, no excitement, no... Passion, really, and sort of care. And love for food. Just get in the bowl and fuck off out of here. Excuse me, sweet up. Now, there's a problem with the mains. Oh, sorry, it's no sauce? I'm oh, sorry. no sauce. All, all plain. All plain, yeah. Where does it say plain on there? It doesn't. Well, I don't know what I can do about that. Steve straight on the phone to Stella, the business manager. Yeah, but it doesn't say plain on the menu, does it? We, we never serve it plain. Chef's wrong again. Never the office. Not really. Just sort it out on Monday. It would have said lobster sauce if you wanted lobster sauce. Stella cocked up the order for the lobster sauce. But instead of rolling his sleeves up and getting on with it, Steve picks a fight. Are you going upstairs, Stella? I just asked Danielle to come wash some pots, that's all. I've been saying it for three days, we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing well, about it. You're in charge of the kitchen, Steve. It's your department. Yeah, you should see Dan. You wash your hands with it, Dan. While they're all bickering, the waiters are still serving the main course. It's a shambles. La Gondola wants to be a high-class restaurant, and yet they're slopping out reheated catering rubbish. Belgium apple pie. What's Belgium about it? Did you buy them in? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But from a chef so, to chef's point of view, you yeah, know damn well yeah. an apple pie. Oh yeah. We we we, we exactly. can do it with our eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you're telling me now that you're happier to buy them in rather than make them? At this moment, no. I'm I'm happier to make myself, but right. I don't have the staff or the skills or the time to do okay. it. Okay. How long does it take to make I mean, an apple pie? Half an hour. Forty minutes. Microwave. Yeah. 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 What this guy needs is a rocket up his ass. This is a fucking doddle for you, isn't it? Yep. It's not exactly ball breaking here, is it? It has been in the past, and it can no, be. No, stop yes, going it, back. It, Talk it, today. I mean, it's almost like we're no, paying for your memories no, again. today is quiet. Right. Bring it back. I'll still handle it. Fucking hell. OK. Daniela sunk half a million quid of her divorce settlement into La Gondola. But last year alone, it lost 75 grand. If she doesn't open her eyes to what's happening in her kitchen, she'll be left with nothing but memories and debts. Let's be brutally honest, you fell in love with the place and you grew up in it and you had your 21st birthday party, you had your wedding here, and you have bought a fucking time bomb. I've never seen a kitchen like that that just has so little atmosphere, no um, banter, no communication, no vibrant, let's get ready for a, a great lunch. It was um, turkey going in, cooked the day before, reheated. Um, I'm horrified that we had that. If you're telling me a discerning customer cannot tell the yeah. difference. But I think what you've really got to pick up on and wake up on is the fact that your chef can lose his self-esteem by serving that shit. They've carved a very comfortable niche out for themselves, and they've made a really comfortable bed to lie in. And unfortunately, you're paying the price for that. I'm pretty pissed off, you know that. I'm not happy. Because what I saw yesterday, across the board, I thought was a fucking disgrace. La Gondola in Derby. At first, I thought this restaurant's problem was that it was stuck in a time warp. But it goes far deeper than that. It's 10 o'clock, and head chef Steve and his number two, Gareth, are only just rolling up for work. You wouldn't get away with that in my kitchen, especially as last year, the restaurant lost 75 grand. And these guys just don't seem to be interested in turning the place around. How much has the restaurant taken this week? Barely yeah. 500 quid. Yeah? The salaries alone in the kitchen are a thousand pounds. If the restaurant didn't have these functions that are drip feeding into this establishment, yeah. you wouldn't have a job. I personally want to put a fucking rocket up everyone's ass in here today to really make them understand what you should be doing and not bickering and festering on fucking memories from 20 years ago. That means fuck all. It's Sunday lunchtime and there are three diners at the gondola. When there isn't a function on, well, 
nothing much happens in this kitchen. Right, we are away. We're away. Please. Chef's away as well. He's been away for 30 fucking years. Mains away, chef, please. Not quite ready, Art. Not quite ready. This kitchen is like a retirement home. So how many evenings do you work a week? Three? Three to four. Depends on the business, really. Yeah, just to play by yeah. It varies. Yeah, what a bizarre setup. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you. They've been coming for 36 years. 36 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So you are the asset. Yes. So um, if the food was to change, you wouldn't come back. No. no. What you've got? You've got minestrone soup. Minestrone yes. soup, which is. But La Gondola are going to have to risk losing their three regular diners because this is a terrible environment for an aspiring young chef. Number two, Gareth, is only 19, but he's already given up. He was good, wasn't he? It must be soul destroying when the business is so quiet, no? Um, Motivation-wise, no? It's boring. Yeah, very boring. When it's quiet, you just start clock watching until it's 10 o'clock and yeah. so you can go. Because we can't go early in case someone does come. No. So it's just, you just clock watching all the time. And yeah. I've only seen one person in this kitchen with any real drive or ambition, and that's 17-year-old apprentice Danny Holden. You right, Danny boy? You're doing a fucking yeah. good job. Yeah, my pleasure. That's where it all started, you know that? I've been in there. Lonely place in amongst all those bubbles. Huh? But trust me, if you get your shit together in there, it goes from bubbles on top of the sink to bubbles in glass and champagne. Would you like a glass of champagne? I'm not old enough. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll sneak it in the fridge. OK, then. Yeah? Yeah. Young chefs need encouragement. But discipline is high on Steve's list of priorities. I don't stand any nonsense. You don't stand no. any nonsense? No, no. And if these don't make it, they go. I've told them all. Out. I don't, I'm not standing for nothing. This one might not last a week. Oh, really? Mm. Poor Look, yesterday, yesterday was very close. I don't hang around with one warning and two warnings. No? Out the fucking back door, mate. So what you're saying, so you're worse than what, me? What? What? No, what I'm saying is I don't like shit. Yeah. Out they go. And that right, Gareth? You're no good, you walk. Steve thinks he can talk the talk, but can he really walk the walk? This time I checked out his store cupboard. Oh, fucking hell. Fucking evidence. So, I mean, it looks like fish food, doesn't it? Huh? And it smells fucking disgusting. There you go. Half a container of plastic minestrone soup. Right. Now, we've seen it all smash. Um, what in the fuck a chef does with that, I don't know. The new owner, Daniela, wants La Gondola to be an authentic Italian restaurant, and yet she's completely unaware what's happening in her own kitchen. Um, the minestrone soup is quite a hallmark. It's it is. Yeah. It's very good. It's excellent. Almost as good as my mother's. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it's great. Why'd you buy it in, Steve? I don't buy it in. I make it myself. So the containers are bought in minestrone soup and the invoice is here? What we do, we'd, we'd mix that 50-50. Uh-huh. We'll sort of give half and half, really. Oh. It, it, it seems to be... Yeah, I'm not clear. What do you mean? Two yeah. bowls? One of no, plastic no, 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 and no, one? No, no, no. We'd make half up with perhaps packet and then put fresh in to it as well. Steve's penny pinching by bulking up the fresh soup with powdered. But the prices are so out of date on the menu, they're hemorrhaging money on a daily basis. The cost of the lamb, nothing more, just mm. the lamb cutlets. Yeah. That whole dish, OK, should be on the menu at £16.50. Right. You're selling it at £10.90. Mm-hmm. But the scary thing is, Steve, that you yeah. don't know that every time we sell that lamb, yeah. we're losing five quid. Yeah. Yeah. And if we had a table of four in today, yeah. and they walked in that door, yeah. I swear to God, it'd be a lot easier to fucking stop them at the door and say, there's your five pound, mm. fuck off. Well, oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. You know, I'm guided by people who've been here for years, and they're telling me they can make money out of that menu. But you were here in place, in position, as the manager when oh, this was put yeah. together. Well, you sorry. can blame me I'm all sorry. you like, but it's my let's, money, Steve, not yes, yours. I know, I know it's your money. Let's, let's, let's carry on. Let's put a structure in place. Your, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Let's put a structure... Ten pound per room, ten pound per meal. Where Listen, where, it's where my money? restaurant, where, and where, I, where, all where I needed to do was cover costs, all right? And I did more than cover costs on that. 
This is Stella who does all this, not us. I think you're shouting um, person. Look, Stella does look, this. Look. Don't go off saying this, that and the other. You could be out of a job in a month's time. No one is taking responsibility for La Gondola's problems. Everyone just blames each other. I look at you and I get really nervous. Because I think you're the kind of cook that's just going to fuck off out here, you know that? I think you're going to get upset one day after listening to the way you spoke to the owner. If that was me, I would have sacked you. And my worry is, you're so determined to fucking work in this industry, you need to get excited. You need to start cooking properly. I've got to get these guys out of this god-awful kitchen and try and lift their morale. So I'm taking them to see one of Derby's most successful businesses. Now. Yeah, Gareth, you drive. Yeah, we're going to look at some history. Right, let's go and look at something beautiful, something that's moved with time. Rolls Royce, 1933. Look at it, beautiful. Now the next one. It's something quite interesting, because this was made in 1979. Look at it, a bit of history. That Rolls-Royce didn't sit still, yeah, and get moved by the times. They decided to move ahead of the times, the Phantom. What's it like <laughs> in there, Danny? It's nice and comfy. It nice looks and like comfy. I'm in business. And Steve, yeah. do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They've moved on. Yeah. They haven't just stood there and sort of expected Rolls-Royce to sell. And unfortunately, big boy, when I first saw your food, yeah. I felt like I was stepping in a time capsule. Yeah, I get your point. It's, 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 it's marvellous. It's marvellous, absolutely. I know a chef who's got one of these, you know that. And you're thinking, Gareth, what should I do? Rob a bank or work hard? Rob a bank. Rob a bank. <laughs> <laughs> now, bollocks. Uh, should we nip round and see your mum, Danny? The engine that powers any successful restaurant is its kitchen. And like Rolls Royce, La Gondola is going to have to create its own modern classics. I'm starting with that lunch menu. What's the secret behind any good Italian restaurant? Pasta. Pasta, exactly. When was the last time you made fresh pasta? Never have. There we go. You're making it. I'm just going to tell you how to make it. So make it well in the centre. That's it. I'm keeping it simple so the chefs have got time to get up to speed. That's it. Out goes the old two-course lunch menu for £6.50. In comes a fresh pasta main with a salad and a glass of wine for £8.95. Season again. See the colour, it's starting to change now because the saffron's working on there. Fresh pasta is the hallmark of an authentic house. Italian restaurant. Its simplicity also makes it a money spinner, far cheaper than those expensive lamb specials. See the colour of it? All of it. Ricotta in. And I want you to taste it as you're doing it. There you go. Now, OK, watch. Yeah, like a parcel, exactly, look. Fold it over. Nip all the air out. Little finger. Over. Left to right, right to left. Use your thumb and push. Totally. Who'd like a go? Yeah, of course you can have a go. Here we go. We've only Danny, been making pasta for 10 minutes. Yeah, and already the young chefs look like they're enjoying themselves. I finally yeah. injected some passion into this kitchen. Good. That you've just done. That was 10 minutes ago. That was your first one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's your first. You've never made pasta. And now you've made your first ever tortellini. That's very good. Well, I've asked Danny the Apprentice to come up with a couple of salads for the new menu. Right, oh, what I've done is I've put like tomato and that in the mixing bowl. Good. And, and with the shots and you put like this, that, and like that sort of vinegar stuff over it. And Good. All in it. So, yeah. Okay, have a little taste. Eat with me. And this one is a... Is rocket and parmesan. Good man. Cheese. That's lovely. But the gondola's problems aren't just in the kitchen. To help me relaunch the sinking ship, I've called in the boss of the company that does all my restaurants PR, Joe Barnes. What do you reckon? Well, it certainly makes a first impression. Up the creaky stairs. Wow. Hi, Dan. Hello. Amazing chandelier. And you look at the dance floor, just how many heels I've been dancing on this. You can kind of see El Deco doing a special yep. on, you know, interiors yep. frozen in time. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a sellable asset here? Do you think you could sell this restaurant? My first feelings when I come in, and I don't mean to be negative, are start all over again. This place badly needs a refurbishment. Um, you can refurb it, you can yeah. call it a new name yeah. and start over and really relaunch it. Yeah. However, being with the money. fine, no. what it no. does have is a tremendous amount of authenticity and kind of kitschy appeal. Yeah. And I love the sort of, you know, the Doric columns and the dance floor. And I suppose you've got to work with what you've got. Daniela and her business manager, Stella, need Joe's help. Because so far, their marketing efforts have hardly set Derby alight. I can't even find it on here. 
supposed to be under restaurants, under Continental. Oh, there we go. Jesus Christ. So we go past all these um, relaxing massage and all these whorehouses, um, and you come down here, <laughs> and then you get La Gondola. Try our new menus. Booking's now been taken. I mean, you know, you've missed it. I think what you've got to do is identify what your real strengths are here, and that's the family-run business, that's the, the great space you've got with the dance floor, and make them into selling points. You've got to have a punchy message with which you can appeal to your potential customers. Now the restaurant reputation has disappeared. Yet reputation you've got, you... hasn't disappeared. The problem is that people have forgotten about La Gondola. When it hasn't got a bad reputation, definitely not. So it's, it's a good reputation? See, again, you're living in the Medium. past. I, I feel you're not being honest with yourself. It has a shit reputation. It hasn't. I'm telling you it has. So you've been to Derby and you've had a word yeah. with all of the customers. Oh, no, hold on a minute. Of all of the pay. customers. There are no customers. The place is empty. So and you're it... telling me that the people who put adverts in the mm -hmm. paper thanking us yep. for a superb wedding, etc. You're missing my point. If you just listen to what I'm trying to tell you, mm. it may make sense in a minute. The add-ons from having a successful restaurant is phenomenal. We haven't got that reputation any longer. No. The business is on its ass, And the functions over the last 10 years have depleted, accepted. There is no reputation at the gondola. And if you're going to stand there and tell me it's a good place, when a chef buys in minestrone soup, no chance. We need to spread the word around Derby that the gondola is changing. So I've told Stella to get on the phone and round up members of the city business community for a special lunch. A great way to get the message out and a chance to see if Steve can lead his team. My father used to come here for business lunches about 25 years ago. Uh, but in recent times, I have to say, it's not a place that I would have come to. The idea of this lunch today is to get them in and out in 45 minutes. We've banished silver service to speed up the waiters. But can Steve run his kitchen fast enough to keep up? Well, they were busy, quiet, makes no difference to me. I only know one way, and that's the way I do it. Okay, come on. Yeah, you're ready to roll with us, yeah? Yeah. Good man. This is the exciting right, part of the day. Steve. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see, I want you to clean around the plates. Yep. Yeah, good boy, let's go. One frittata, one bruschetta, one tagliatelle. Nice. The new pasta dishes I've devised are hitting the spot. Three sends their compliments. That's a, that's a first. Good. Quality, yeah, not bad. Very, very good price as well. But uh, a little bit slow coming out, just a little bit slow. People having a business lunch. Once again, the lack of organisation has dropped the kitchen in it. Jesus Christ. Come on, guys, there's got to be a system in here somewhere. Steve. If you're, uh, if you're confused, yeah, let me know and I'll help you out, yeah? Okay. It's gone all quiet, you see, yeah, you're not leading right. it like a head chef. Do you understand? Okay. Where all these three guys, including Danny, is coming together at the same time. Yeah, thank but you. But they've got to take your direction, you know that? Yeah, fine. Okay, yeah. yeah. When you ask for it, we'll do, we'll do it fresh, yeah? Outside in the restaurant, there are lots of customers waiting, but all the orders have become mixed up. After that, sorry, yeah. you sent table four, yeah? Three yeah. tagatelli, one knocking, one bruschetta. Yeah. Yeah. They sent them, they've just come back, and so said yeah. they're on coffee, you've already sent their main course. Yeah. I'm and now, a whole table has got the wrong dishes. Okay. Start again anyway, it's, 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 gone, it's gone stone cold. What about the starters on table eight? They have it already. Yeah, they've had them. Yeah. Why is it not crossed off, Steve? I wonder the kitchen's confused. If you send the starters, why aren't you crossing it off? A table two starters, yeah, this is. That was just 35 covers. I'm planning to completely relaunch the restaurant in only a couple of days' time, with double the number of customers. I'm starting to wonder if Steve is really up to it. So what, what has come out of today's lunch, you know that, yeah. is how Everyone just works on their own, you know that? Yeah. I've seen think, no fucking team spirit here whatsoever. No, no, no understanding, no coordination, and bringing these guys together has been a fucking nightmare. I know. Fucking hell, I tell you, I'm finding it hard. I'm finding it really fucking hard. Because it's not about teaching an old boy new tricks, it's about getting the old boy to wake up and stop being a lazy bastard. A simple risotto, bruschetta, frittata, tagliatelle of chicken, and they're still in the ship. La Gondola is up the creek without a paddle. The kitchen's getting by with boughting apple pies and the staff don't pull together. I don't know which way you have it, you pull. In less than 48 hours, 
a new owner, Daniela, is relaunching the restaurant. I woke up at five o'clock this morning. I uh, don't have to often swear, but I was shit scared. The trouble is, Daniela's head chef has been treading water, opening a tin of tuna or a packet of powdered soup. I want to redesign the menu for the relaunch, but what can Steve actually cook? Season. I've asked him to prepare me a dish using fresh ingredients only. So what's in there? Butter. We've got butter. Red onions. Red onions. A little bit of olive oil. Yeah. Fennel. Fresh fennel. And just a little bit of orange zest. Mm-hmm. Flour. And where did this idea come from? When I was a commie, we used to do it. Um, when I worked down in Oxford. Down so here. 35 years ago? Quite a long time, yeah. yeah. Steve is cooking me a dish of rustic Italian trout. That smells gorgeous. And then we can dress it up. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit miffed when you're frying the um, the trout, the fact you hadn't taken the scales off. Right. So already I've got to eat this with a pile of shit in my mouth. Why don't you scale the fish? Sorry. Just time, I suppose. Time? Yeah. yeah. It looks like you forgot. I think that's pretty dismal. Yeah. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that part of shit, I'm fucking yeah. gobsmacked. Yeah. The scales are on there, it's all in the roof of my mouth, the fucking alcohol's not burnt off, it's... Fucking hell, Steve. After Steve's dismal effort, I want to find out if the other chefs can do any better. Tuna's very tasty. You don't need that sauce. For me, you've just fucked that dish by putting that glue on there. Yeah. That sort of gloppy, stodgy yeah. wallpaper paste that, in fact, I'd offer that to Daniela to fucking plaster the front of the gondola, you know that? Because that looks like a pile of shit there as well. What, what's, that, what's that in there? Inside. Yeah. Oh, the, the chicken's inside? Yeah. Is this a Polish dish? No, no. Yeah. The chicken's raw. Raw. Now, um, unfortunately, I, uh, I can't afford to fuck off and die right now, and I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby, so um, put that straight in the bin. Yeah. yeah. I've been poisoned once before and it's not going to fucking happen again. It's so scary. We really are in trouble here. I've never sent this message out before in the restaurant. I tell them, fucking move your ass, get on with it, otherwise you're out. But I'm going to tell you guys to stop and give up. Don't fight it if you don't want to change. And when that change comes in, be prepared to work fucking hard. We've got to get rid of all this crap. We can't carry 80, 89 dishes. What's it like when this man's off in the night and you've got 25 books? It must be mad, no? When you cook like that, do you actually think that you're fit enough to call yourself a chef if you're defrosting things and deep frying mushrooms? And is it important for you to cook or are you really seriously interested in staying the way you are? Cool. You are, you, you definitely want to cook. Yeah? Oh wait, there's nothing complicated in this, huh? The only option is to go right back to basics. I've devised a new dinner menu that's so simple, hopefully it's foolproof. A light gnocchi with salmon and tarragon, and a simple tomato and mozzarella risotto. That's the tomato juice, yeah. it's just a little bit too thick. Too thick, yeah. Even this kitchen surely can't cock these dishes Where's up. The, uh... Come on. Fucking telephone. Fresh, fragrant mix. Stand up, please, Steve. Thank you. Gareth. Yeah. It's really hard for you to understand at 19 how modern we're trying to put the approach. Yeah. yeah, nothing's coming out of a fucking packet, nothing's coming out underneath, cooked fucking three days ago. It's just clean, fresh, and just think back to that phantom, that roller. Is it worth getting out of bed in the morning? Yeah, yeah fucking right it is. Good. Really easy. OK. Yeah, so it doesn't all stick. And he's never been given his own section. So I'm going to see how he does with the vegetables. You've got to look after them, you know that. Almost as if you're sort of in love with them. Yes, so, Beautiful. It's warm, isn't it? It's very warm, isn't it? Huh? Welcome to the real world of the kitchen, big boy. You're sweating. Yeah. Huh? That looks cool. First time. Is it the first time you're sweating? In the kitchen, yeah. Good man. <laughs> yep. So now we've done the uh, peppers. Yep. The aubergine. The butternut squash. Yes. And now. All of a sudden, big boy, over the last couple of hours, yes? You've been running the vegetable section. Move your ass. We now have a new contemporary menu 
for the relaunch. Time to chuck out the chintz. Stella, let me ask you something. You're sat. Just come and touch us a minute. And close your eyes and just touch it. Close my eyes and touch it. Yeah. Horrible. Fucking disgusting. Dirty, Dirty no. grubby, smelly, Dirty. plastic Dirty. flowers. Yeah? The clutter on the tables. Martin, it's look like it's all yeah. come out of the fucking pound shop. Okay. You know, you're like an old fucking woman that just won't throw anything away. Yep. Get rid of it. It's yeah? going tonight. Good. It's like going to a, um, an airport lounge and looking at one of the chapels of rest. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you'd see in there when you sort of sit down and grieve. I mean, I'm sorry, but they're fucking awful. Catch, get hold of them all and love them in the skip. Yeah? Pleasure. Yeah, good man. <laughs> Already, whew, I feel like, fucking hell, I got rid of my granny's pants. They're off. They no longer appear. I'm starting to think about wearing a nice, sexy pair of knickers because I've just seen the white tablecloth go down. That's how I feel in here. It looks clean and yeah. fresh. Would you wear knickers up to there, Stella? Oh, don't start, Gordon. <laughs> Stick I'm to the restaurant. I'm just asking. <laughs> Would you wear a pair of no, granny knickers no, up to I here? Wouldn't. No, so get rid of the flowers. <laughs> but I have discovered one thing from the past worth hanging on to. So this is from the whole classic menu we used to wear. Uh -huh. Yeah. All done on the table? All done on the table. And so now you've stopped it because it's on the yeah, old menu? I mean, at one time, Saturday night, it used to be just one person just do the cooking all night. So you're taking that to, what, Lightly Brown? Just go nice and golden brown. I've asked Martin for a demo because I think the flambés are due for a comeback. Jesus Christ. Did you miss this? Oh, yeah. You're so fucking good at it. Yes, I hope so. I've tried to do my best anyway. But this should be the um, hallmark of the restaurant, this. This is, um, this is art. Thank you. Pleasure. Christ almighty. If they taste as good as they look, Fucking they're hell. going back on the menu. No, it's fine. Mm. They're to die for. They are fucking delicious. Who needs a wine list when you get pissed on the dessert? It's the day of the relaunch. As well as bringing back the flambés, I've decided to resurrect the gondola's dance floor. A house band is booked, and the waiting staff finally look the part. There will be 70 covers in tonight, double the numbers of diners that we had in for the business lunch. It's a real okay, test for the kitchen. They're really going to have to pull together if they want to carry it off. I've put Danny in charge of a staff dinner. We don't normally have them here, but they're a great way yeah, to build team idea. spirit. What else have we got? Yeah. Most important thing about staff dinner, big boys, clear out the fridge, yes? Okay. So we've got to move now, big boy. We've got 10 minutes to get this ready, yes? Steve, I think he could really take his, uh, his own little sort of world there, doing these staff lunches and that. You know that? We'll give him that little yeah. vote of confidence. Yeah, why not? Huh? Unfortunately, Steve yeah. doesn't seem very confident. With only an hour until the no. first guests arrive, I'm worried. No. You're running around getting all your plates and bits and bobs, but mm. I saw that a week ago. You're all boxed off. No, I'm, I was intending to go around in the mall and just make sure everybody knows what's, what's yep. going on tonight and what I need, and when I show up for it, what I want, yeah, when but I it's, want it. It's, it's all very well, it's in yeah. your mind, but yeah. the, the well, problem is... I've got to yeah. talk to them now. Yeah, it's sort of, you know, yeah. offloading it and getting yeah. them to understand. Sure, yeah? sure. There's a feeling there, but I'm not sure if it's nervousness or not. I get stressed as much as anybody else. I'm only, I'm only human, so... Maybe I get stressed more than anybody else. I don't know. Mm. Oh, the result is gorgeous. Congratulations, Daniel. That's really good. Steve, you're not eating? Well, I've had two meals since last Friday. You've had two meals since last Friday? Yeah, I'm just off it at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really worried about Steve. He seems very, very nervous. The menus we've got? Yeah. Everything is in place and ready to roll. But at the last minute, Steve bottles it. Right, listen, um, I'm running the hot plate tonight. Shouldn't really be running the hot plate, but Steve's asked if I'd run the hot plate to make sure that we get up to speed. Yeah, communication. Chemistry, understanding, yeah, working for each other, yeah. Gareth, yeah, what are we going to do tonight if you get flustered and frustrated? What are you going to do? Ask for help. Yeah, and take it out on your what? Pasta. That's right, <laughs> take it out on your pasta. <laughs> Not Daniela. <laughs> Enjoy it. Smile. I'll be behind you every ounce of the way. Smile. There's another. Order on. One tortellini. One parma ham with figs, one antipasto, one linguine. Main course, one gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Not one fucking answer. Yes, chef. Yes. Thank you. Good boy. I Don't shouldn't be done. doing this, 
Steve needs to be able to run his kitchen properly himself. So I'm only going to get him started. So three minutes on the hot plate. One gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Yeah. Steve, tomorrow you're on your own. And I just wish that you implemented a system like this 10 years ago, big boy. You know that? I do. So it wouldn't be so fucking hard now at the age of 51. Yeah. Well, we've got some melon sauce on Thank you. 14, go. Right, Gareth, watch the cooking on the pasta, please, yeah? Next time, I'm going to be down on your bollock. Two lamb, one ribeye, one tuna. Yes, chef. Yeah? Nicely. Put it on that plate nicely. As if you're in love with it, yeah? Fresh tarragon on the top. Come on. How does it feel to be cooking normally? No, no. Different. Yeah, Different. no, no, no. No, no, but, no, 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 no but... it's exciting. Once we get the, the, in the system, it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 It's the only way, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. I can stay here and run this. Yeah. But you're fucking benefiting jack shit, mate. True. Yeah. Enough. You're going to have to do it yourself now, you know that. Yeah. Run your kitchen and run your team. Yes, sure. Okay, and if I hear you silent and not talking to them, yeah. yeah. Hey, yes, I'm sure. going to ram that fork up your ass. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah, fucking yeah. right. <laughs> For the first time in 15 years, Martin's back, cooking up a storm with the flambe. <laughs> Good music, efficient and stylish table service. At last, La Gondola is swinging again. Three lamb, two ribeyes, one tuna. Right. Anna, can you send Joanna in, please? Don't understand what all these arrows mean. So, two medium. One no gone. That's a medium, is it? So? Your first main course is three lamb. They haven't even started so, clearing the starters mm -hmm. yet, OK? Thank you. As the atmosphere in the restaurant hots up, the kitchen is going into slow motion. No. Cross it off. What about that other table of four here? Two ribeye, one tuna, one salmon. OK. You've gone all quiet. Where's that salad? Ready? Right, tuna. When the kitchen does get the food out, it's going down a treat. I've never seen a lady clean a plate so quick in my life. It's like taking a portable dishwasher out for dinner. <laughs> it's been beautiful. Really, really nice to enjoy authentic Italian cooking. Very nice. If they, if they stand up to the reputation that they set tonight, we'll come back. The new menu has been a success, but since I handed him the hot plate, Steve struggled, and he's only got through it by the skin of his teeth. Come on, Steve. Right. Last table. Yeah. Fucking hell. Right, Gareth. Come in here. Danny, turn off the stoves. Right, how was that for you? Truthfully. Could have been better. Huh? Could have been better. Could have been more smoother, more communication. Yeah. Yeah. Who can that communication come from, Steve? Me. Hallelujah. It's been a bloody hard week, but I think we've shown the staff that the old gondola has life in her yet. Fucking hell. £2,000 in one night. The restaurant alone, last week, took 500 quid. Now, there's the insight to what this place is capable of doing. And it's only down to one thing. What is it, Steve? Hard work. That's all. Hard work. <laughs> This kitchen was so far behind the times, even I considered throwing the towel in. We struggled through a birthday function and then a business lunch. But the dinner dance showed how La Gondola can get the good times back. I've implemented a new menu and a new ethos in the kitchen. But can they really build on the momentum when I'm not there to hold their hands? Morning, water. Danny, the apprentice, does have the makings of a good chef. You've seen over the week that you can cook and the star food. It's a really nice thing for you to do yes. today. Huh? I said to him the other day, I said, I want to cook. I don't want to be like stuck on pots and that. No, you're too good for that. Gareth also has a chance of making it if he knuckles down. You've learnt me more stuff than he has in three years, really. There's someone deep down inside there that's tucked away that's well, dying to learn. Wants to come out. Well, wants to come out. So fucking get it out. Last week but so. Steve still worries me. Mm. I think you've fucking forgotten the word cooking, passion, exciting. Yeah, yeah. And You're so, uh, right. It's been switched off for a long time. It's all been 
rusted up. It's, it's, yeah. Unless we loosen the nut, it's, it's, it's just going to keep on loosening up now, I think. I'm not going to quit on it. I'm going to give it the fucking best. You see if I don't. Come back. Oh, fuck me, I'll be back. Yeah, you come back. Whether or not you'll be here when I get back will be a different matter. Last summer, I spent a week at La Gondola in Derby, my most testing kitchen nightmare. A restaurant 30 years out of date. It's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is, and I wondered whether, should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns? No customers. It has a shit reputation. And one of the worst head chefs I've ever met. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that part of shit, I'm fucking gobsmacked. But somehow, I managed to get the place swinging again. Four months later, I'm back. Oh. And someone's in the gondola. Who on earth is that in there? God. OK. Ooh. How are you? Fine. Good. Uh, Quick kiss. Uh, What's the matter? Well, I'd have done my hair. I'd have got changed. You don't need to do that for me. Steve. He's obviously getting ready for dinner. Steve left. He walked out. He walked out. Gave me a week's notice as soon as you left. The minute I left, he walked out? He didn't have the energy, thought about it, and he was out of here. I didn't have the him, energy? I begged him to stay, but he said, no, his mind is made up. I think he's got a job in a pub now. Job in a pub? Yes. So what kind of food? Well, what the general manager calls ding-ding food, you put it in a microwave and out it comes. Yeah, in a way, I'm not that upset because if he wasn't prepared to pull on the rope and actually help get the place mm. back, who's in there now? Who's the chef? Oh, you have to see. This man saved my life. Hello, Wayne. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. Yeah, Gordon. Really? Nice to see you. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So the style of the menu. What is the style of the menu? Um, style of menu, but not. I've only arrived yesterday. Okay. Um, so. Um, so we've had no. Sorry. Excuse me. We've had no chefs since. No, no, no. I did experiment with at least four other chefs. I went through one who was Feng Shui, who would only cook in a certain direction. Feng Shui. Feng Shui, yeah. Well, well, Even Wayne's Daniela. pissing himself. I did research round because, it know, turns out Daniela road tested yes, several head chefs yeah, after Steve right. jumped ship. At least she's trying not to make the same mistake yeah, twice. Friday, we had about 20. Yeah, where's <laughs> Gareth? He's still here. Uh, no, uh, well, he finished up uh, yesterday. She's been poached by Steve to go and work in a pub when he can work here. But the money was too much of a temptation, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's shocking. I'm pissed off that Gareth didn't stick it out, but I think a clean slate is the only way forward for Daniela. Yeah, and someone was trying to constantly pull, constantly pulling the wool over this woman's Absolutely. eyes. Absolutely. And unfortunately, because she was so nice and so gentle, yeah. Yeah. everybody was taking the piss out of her. I, I, and it's becoming a laughing stock. Absolutely. Now yeah. she's got the bull by the horns, yeah. she shook yeah. it, and she's got rid of the fucking cobwebs. Please tell me Danny's here. He's working, working tonight. He's working tonight. Okay. Uh, Danny, have you missed me? Yes, I have. I miss you too as well, you know that big man. Yeah. Huh? Yes, big man. <laughs> Little fucker. <laughs> Danny's responded to my encouragement and taken up new responsibilities. Daniel, can you get the cream, please? Daniel! Perhaps he and Wayne are the dynamic duo that will give La Gondola the stability that it desperately needs. At the bottom shelf, basil, uh, in a package, yeah? Quick as you can, please. But the proof's in the tasting. I'm having Wayne's butternut squash soup. I hope it's better than Steve's packet minestrone. A really nice colour. That smells amazing. And, um... Mm. It's nice. It's not difficult to make a very simple homemade rustic soup, but it, you know, it speaks volumes about a restaurant. They've built on the live music theme, Martin's still got his old magic, and he's now flambéing main courses as well as desserts. It looks fantastic. Yep. You sound brilliant, yep. and it smells amazing. Yep. You actually taste it. My very own steak, Diane. And... Steak's nice and rare. The taste is exactly how it should be. Very good. Daniela's retained my simpler, more contemporary menu, and they're cooking with fresh ingredients, rather than opening a tin or a packet. And the takings have quadrupled since I was last here. That was lovely. Thank and I'm you. really pleased it was lovely. And you've got the simplest things right. 
Well, you've made me feel very brave about it. Mm -hmm. And I just needed someone to open my eyes up to yes. what's dreams and what's yeah. reality. Thank God she's woken up. She thought she'd bought success. She'd bought a restaurant full of baggage and a chef that didn't give a fuck. Now she's got the basics right, she moves forward, and this place does have a chance of surviving for the next 30 years, providing they continue. Good food, good service, bit of atmosphere, and enjoy what you're doing. It's not difficult.